Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman! Today, Superman, as Clark Kent, is on the receiving end of a bombshell hurled at him by girl reporter Lois Lane. It's pretty shocking to find out that one of your best friends, one whom you've worked with side by side for years, has been leading a double life. What's that? Who's been leading a double life, Lois? Clark has, Chief. I have? What are you talking about? Just this, Chief, and you'd better hang on to your chair. I know now that Clark Kent is Superman. Going, going, this gyrocket offer. All good things have to end sometime. And today is the end of your terrific gyrocket offer on the air. But it's not too late yet. You can still get your gyrocket from Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, if you act right away. Correct. You have the rest of today to send for your gyrocket, the sensational rocket motto. Yes, a zipping, zooming, flashing gyrocket, almost half a foot long, that streaks from your hand high into the sky. This gyrocket is every inch businesslike. The long, sleek body is shaped like a slender bomb, a brilliant blue or yellow or red, streamlined to cut down air resistance. And the metal propeller at the stern of the rocket packs it with power. Right. And launching's a cinch, because you get a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. With a flick of your wrist, you can zoom the gyrocket into the air up over the treetop. Now remember, this is the very last day we're offering this terrific gyrocket over the air. So don't say we didn't warn you. To get your gyrocket, send 15 cents and a Kellogg's Pep box top to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Do it now. Or you'll miss out on the fun and excitement. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, plus a dime and a nickel, and your name and address clearly printed to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. <laughs> The Adventures of Superman. After recovering the model of the lost rocket from the deceased red-bearded traitor Richard Haller, Superman finds that now his troubles are only beginning. For when he returned to the Metropolis Daily Planet in his guise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered and bespectacled reporter, Lois Lane struck him and headed to Perry White speechless by saying, Clark Kent is Superman. Now, steadying himself against his desk, Kent forces a sickly smile to his lips, and Editor White stands by open-mouthed as Lois, pointing her finger dramatically at Kent, hammers home her charge. You are Superman. Yes, you, Clark Kent. You're Superman. I... Uh, I... I am? You bet you are. Why, I should have guessed it long ago. I don't see how I didn't. It was right under my nose all the time. What kind of rubbish is this, Lois? It's true, Chief, and he knows it. Just look at his face. Did you ever see a guiltier expression? Guilty? Well, why should he look guilty? Well, kind of took the wind out of you, didn't I, Clark? Oh, now, look. I, I... dare you to deny oh, it. Oh, stop this nonsense, Lois. We've got a paper to get out. Yes, you're right, Chief. I have to polish up my story oh, in the last rocket, so I'm going to get right over... Oh, no, you don't, Clark. You stay well, I... right where you are. Lois, the chief will you said... stop this kidding around? Or I'm must not I... kidding. I tell you, Chief, I can prove what I said. Ridiculous. Now, oh, I can't wait a minute. No, 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 wait, Chief. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Lois really seems to be serious. I think I'd like to hear what she has to say. I thought you Great would. Great Caesar's ghost. Do you two realize we go to press in an hour? What I have to tell you about Clark, Chief, is worth holding the presses for. Really? Well, it's not every day I receive an honor like this. Go ahead, Lois. All right. Now, a few nights ago, Haller and his gang trapped you and me in the rocket pit under his barn. Right? You admit that, don't you? Well, of course. And you admit that when they were coming down into the pit after us, a huge fire broke out, uh-huh. and we were caught right in the middle of it. Why, well, yes, yes. Fire. Oh, oh, yes, uh, when the original Superman rocket burned up. But you didn't say in your story that you and Lois were caught in it, Kent. Well, as long as we got away, I didn't think it was particularly important. You didn't think it was important? No. What kind of a newspaper reporter are you? Well, and how in carnation did you get out of that alive? I'll tell you how, Chief. Clark became Superman and saved us. Kent became Superman? That's right. You, uh, you, You saw me become Superman, Lois? 
Well, uh, no, not, not exactly. Well, then why do you say that well, because I... because you made me put your coat over my head, you remember, to protect me from the smoke. Well, yes, but that was... I guess just... I passed out for a few minutes, but when I came to, I was in a doctor's house several miles away, and the doctor told me that Superman had brought me there. So what? Yeah, that's what I want to know. How does that prove that Kent is Superman? Well, don't you see, Chief? One moment I was trapped in the middle of a roaring fire. Only Clark was there with me. And one moment later, I was several miles away in a doctor's house. So, Clark must be Superman. Yeah, and I'm the king of England. Oh, Chief. Now, look, you said you passed out for a few minutes, didn't you? Yes, of course. Well, then Superman showed up, grabbed you and Ken out of the fire, and took you to the doctor's. Is that right, Kent? Mm Mm-hmm, that's about it. But... But he wasn't there a second before. He's and he... never there a second before. But I don't know. He pops up like, like that. Uh, <laughs> and disappears the same way. <laughs> you know that. Sure. <laughs> Kent Superman. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised at you, Lois. Now, wait a minute, Chief. I know that this time... Oh, wait, wait till I tell Inspector Henderson about this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was unmasked at last. Well, tell me this, then. Why should Superman suddenly turn up there, of all the places in the whole world, just in time to save my life? Why? Oh, well, now, wait a minute, Lois. Look, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> Haller had the Superman rocket, the most destructive weapon in the world, Right. He was planning to sell it to foreign agents. Why doesn't it seem reasonable that Superman would be on Haller's trail? Well, uh, well, well, yes, but I... No, but nothing. You had a brainstorm, Lois. <laughs> and what a brainstorm. Uh, come on, uh, come on, now, recess is over. Come into my office. I've got a big job for you two. Okay. Uh, shall we walk, Miss Lane, or would you like me to fly you across the city room? Oh. <laughs> I'll give her a break, Ken. Don't rub it in. Okay. I'm still not so sure that I was wrong. Just between us, Lois, you weren't. <laughs> oh, that's rich. <laughs> All right, laugh. Go on. <laughs> but maybe one of these oh, days stop I'll it, be... stop it. I'm weak from laughing. <laughs> well, here we are. Okay, go ahead and be a wise guy, but don't say I didn't warn you. What's that, Beanie? Warn whom about what? Uh, oh, uh, oh, I, I just... Uh-oh. What's going on here, Beanie? Oh, nothing, Mr. White, nothing. Nothing? Well, what's the idea of closing the door in my face? Uh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. White. I, I gotta do something right away. What goes on here? Well, we'll soon find out. You come into my office. This is gonna be something. Yes, yeah, that Beanie's done something that he... What's that? Jimmy! Get... Olsen! Get your feet off my desk! Easy, Chief, easy. What's the meaning of this, this, this impertinence? Come in, Perry, old boy. Come oh, in. Oh, Perry! You're just the lad I want to see. Uh, you too, Clark. Yeah, uh, Clark? Well, uh, I'll be... And Lois? Oh, well, the, the unmitigated, inconceivable, bold, uh, brassy... Uh, chairs and rally round. There's big business on tap. Yes, sir, big business. Now, look here, Olsen. I'll give you just one second to take your feet off my desk and get out of my chair. Now, now, Perry. Jimmy, what's the matter with you? Come on, Jim. This is no longer funny. Funny? Oh, yes, it's very funny. You see, now I'm the... Olsen, if you don't move out of there right now, I'll... Chief, I'll... Chief, be careful. Now, take it easy, Perry. Calm down. You don't seem to realize who you're talking to. Why, you... You, you insolent little... Wait, 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 Hold it. Hold it. Take it easy. Now, look, Jim, the gag's gone far enough. Now, wise up before you get into serious trouble. Oh, you'd better wise up, Clark. I don't like your tone. You, what? Clark, there must be something wrong with the boy. Let me go, Kent. Chief, I'm going to throw that... Now, look, that tip squeak no, out of my Chief. office. No, wait. Kent, if you don't take your hands off Chief, me... Please, please, relax, please, will you? I'll admit Jim has let his sense of humor run away with him, but that's no reason... Sense of humor? I'll teach him about humor. Now, I'll... Stop it, both of you. Stop it at once, do you hear? What kind of a disgraceful exhibition is this to put on? And in the office of your new publisher. Publisher? Why, I ought to fire the three of you. Huh? New publisher? Why, he... He's crazy. There must be something wrong with him. Listen, Jim, No, I... you listen to me, all of you. I'm in the saddle now. Me, James Olson. And from now on, when I crack the whip, you jump. Their eyes wide, Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and Editor Perry White stare incredulously at Jimmy Olson thin, freckle-faced cub reporter who has risen somewhat unsteadily to his feet and glares back at them, his eyes strangely burning. What does this mean? We'll be back in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Now, listen carefully. Here's the final important word about your gyrocket, because this is the very last day we're making this sensational offer on the air. Remember, this gyrocket is a terrific flying rocket model from Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Yes, sir. A gyrocket you can launch right from your hand. A gyrocket almost half a foot long that you zoom into the sky up over the treetops. 
Listen to this. The gyrocket has a sleek, streamlined wooden body, brilliant red or yellow or blue. At the stern of the rocket, a steel propeller develops maximum thrust. A flick of your wrist and off it soars, streaking into the sky. Up, up, and away! Remember, the gyrocket is not a flimsy cardboard cutout, but a solid steel and wood model sturdy enough for hundreds of launchings. And it comes complete with a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. Get in on the excitement right now. Send for several gyrockets. Right, then have thrilling contests with your friends. Test for distance and speed and spot landing. Now listen, for each gyrocket you want, send 15 cents and a Kellogg's pep box top to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Remember, today this offer is going off the air for good. So it's now or never, because you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, plus a dime and a nickel, together with your name and address clearly printed to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Do it now. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In Editor Perry White's office in the Daily Planet, young Jimmy Olsen, cub reporter, has just astounded White, Clark Kent, and Lois Lane by announcing that he was their new publisher. What? What are you are a little surprised, aren't you? You never thought I'd be your boss, did you, Perry? My boss? Well, uh, I must be dreaming. I know I am. Now, look here, Jim. This has gone far enough, so suppose now, you... Now, uh, thought... I always liked you, Clark, so I'm going to give you a break. Break? Mm-hmm. I'm making you managing editor and putting Perry back on the police beat. What? Well, for the... Uh, as for you, Lois... For heaven's sake, stop it. Stop this before I go mad. I don't know why I'm even listening to you, but... but... Just tell me what you mean by all this. Well, I'd be glad to. Now, suppose you all sit down and... and I... What the... Jimmy, uh, what's the matter? Aren't you well, Jim? Uh, He's falling. Catch him, somebody. I've got him. He's, He's fainted, Jim. Quick, get some water. Get some water, Jim. somebody. What is it, Clark? Uh-oh. Look at this lump on the back of his head. Good heavens. Is he? Is he? He's hardly breathing. I'm afraid he's... This is serious. Very serious. Jimmy Olsen, close as a brother to Clark Kent and Lois Lane, loved by gruff editor White, is in a very serious condition. Forgotten is the angry reaction to the boy's strange talk. Now his friends feel grave concern for Jimmy's life. Why? What has happened to the young cub reporter? And what will happen to him? We'll know more Monday, gang, when we begin a brand new Superman adventure. One you won't want to miss. So be sure to tune in again Monday, same time, same station, for Chapter 2 of The Ruler of Darkness in The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. This program came from New York. Stay tuned for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman, in the guise of Clark Kent, leaps forward to catch cub reporter Jimmy Olsen, who collapsed suddenly while talking to editor Perry White and Lois Lane. Good heavens, Jimmy! You know what happened? He fainted. Get some water, somebody. Hurry, I, I'll get it. Oh, great Scotty. He's hardly breathing. What's the matter with him, Clark? I don't know, Lois. But I'm afraid it's very serious. (laughs) 
Say, even before we've mentioned them, bet you're already collecting those swell photos of screen and sports stars from packages of Kellogg's Pep. Sure, now you get a wonderful photo as a prize inside every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Imagine a whole collection of 24 candid camera-sized photos. Super photos of famous stars like Dana Andrews of Sam Goldwyn Pictures. And Peggy Ann Garner, that swell little actress in 20th Century Fox movies. And Adolph Kiefer, the backstroke swimming champ. All in this terrific series. And get this. Each photo is brilliantly clear, printed on real, glossy photographer's paper. A photo you might have snapped yourself if you knew these stars personally. Now, in a day or two, we'll show you a super swap game to help you complete your collection of 24 different photos. A game that's excitement plus. Remember, you can't buy these photos. You don't send in a single penny or box top. Just collect your photo prize from every package of those crisp, toasty flakes of good whole wheat. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. When Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and editor Perry White found young Jimmy Olsen, freckle-faced cub reporter, sitting in White's office with his feet on the desk, they thought he was clowning. But to their amazement, Jimmy, usually so polite and respectful, greeted them jauntily by their first names, and then began talking very strangely. As they listened with mouths agape, Jimmy rambled on about having just bought the Daily Planet and announced that he was making Kent managing editor and reducing White to a humble police beat. Then suddenly he broke off staggered, and fell into Kent's arms, unconscious. Beanie! Beanie, Miss Blackrack! Somebody! Get some water! Hurry! Now as White rushes from the office, Hurry. calling for water, Kent snaps a command to Lois. Phone Jim's mother, Lois. Tell her to come to the Metropolis Hospital. Fast! All right, Clark. Oh, wait a minute. Hadn't we better call a doctor first? Uh, I'll take care of that. Run outside and tell Miss Blackrack to get Mrs. Olsen on the phone for you. Hurry! Okay, well, all right. Good, good. And shut the door after you, Lois. We don't want a crowd in here. Right, Clark. Out of these clothes fast. This is a job for Superman. Oh, poor Jim. If only I'm not too late. There we are, all set. Up with him now. Raise this window. Up and away! Leaping out through a window of Perry White's office with the limp form of Jimmy Olsen cradled in his arms, Superman streaks away through the skies to the Metropolis Hospital, his brilliant red cape streaming in the wind. A short time later, once more in his guise of Clark Kent, he is pacing a corridor on the third floor of the hospital when Perry White and Lois Lane arrive breathlessly in response to his telephone call. There he is. There he is. Uh, what happened, Kent? What happened? Shh, not so uh, loud, how'd you get Chief, Not so loud. You're in a hospital. I know, I know, but uh, but tell me. How did you get here, Clark? We were only out of the office a minute. Uh, I'll you explain were... later, Lois. Right now, I, I'm worried about Jim. Well, where is he? In the operating room. Huh? Operating room? Yes, he... Uh, well, you, you might as well know it. He's in pretty bad shape. Well, what, 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 what is it? What's the matter with him? He has a fractured skull. Oh, a fractured oh, skull? Oh, that's that's it. why he was talking so strangely before he collapsed. Yes, yes, of course. He didn't know what he was saying. But, but, but how did it happen? I don't know, Lois. He was still unconscious when I got him here, so I couldn't ask him. Poor kid. He must have been in an accident. I don't think so, Chief. Why, he must have been, Clark. It's impossible, Lois. You see, there's a huge lump directly on top of his head. Well, what does that prove? Well, when you're hit by a car, you don't usually land on the very top of your head. Yes, that's true. Besides, there would undoubtedly be other cuts or bruises on him, and, and his clothes would be torn or soiled anyway. Well, you, you're right about that. Yes, but then what do you think did happen to him? Well, I'm only guessing, Lois. But I think he was slugged. So, what? Well, now, as I say, I'm only guessing. You'll have to wait until Jim can tell us. If he'll be able to tell us. If? Oh, Chief. You don't think... Jimmy might... No, Lois, Lois, it, it sounds bad. <laughs> Doctors say he has a 50-50 chance. Not much better. What? I can't believe it. Oh, his mother ought to be here. Why didn't somebody call her? I tried to, Chief, but nobody answered the phone. I told Miss Backrack to keep calling until she got it good, out. Good, good. Uh, now, look, Kent, who's operating on Jim? Dr. Springer. Ah, uh, good man. How long has Jim been in there? About an hour. Mm, that's a long time. Oh, dear. Oh, if anything happens to Jimmy... Steady, Lois, steady. Oh. Here comes Dr. Springer. Doctor, how is Jim Olson? Uh, did he pull through? Is he all right, Doctor? Uh, frankly, the boy's in a very serious condition. Oh, good. Oh, we'll do something for him. 
Uh, call specialist, specialist, uh, whatever you need. Easy, but, uh, Chief, easy. We're doing right. everything we can. He's anemic now, and he needs a blood transfusion at once. However, we're having difficulty finding a donor. Well, what's so difficult about that? He can have my blood. And mine. It isn't quite that simple, my friends. Uh, tell me, do you happen to know what type blood you have? Well, yes, I do. I gave blood to the Red Cross during the war. I'm type O. Uh, I'm type A. Uh, neither of you will do. Miss Olson has ABRH negative. Extremely rare type. I've already tried donors from Group O and AB. They're incompatible. We need the exact type. Unless we find it, and very soon... What about the Red Cross? Have you tried them? Yes, Mr. Kent. They're checking their lists. We must face the fact that ABRH negative is very rare. Very few people have. Yes, I know. Wait a minute. How about putting an ad in the paper? That's a good idea, Lois. The Daily Planet goes to press it. Well, let's see. Yeah, in 50 minutes. I'll put a box on page one. I'll offer $10,000 to anyone who has that type... No, no, we can't wait that long, Mr. White. Unless we do a transfusion in the next 20 minutes. 30 at the outside... What? Well, Olson. Oh, we'll... gee, we just got to do something. Oh, 20 minutes. That that doesn't even give us time to enough to, to make a radio appeal. Hardly. No, I'm afraid... Now, look, it... Dr. Springer, phone the Red Cross again and ask them not to limit their search to Metropolis. Tell them if there's anyone on their lists with Jim's type of blood, no matter where that person is, I'll see that he's brought here in time. Oh, God. What are you talking about, now, Ken? Please, Doctor, do as I say. Hurry. Oh, stop that nonsense, Ken. Now, stop it, stop it. This is no time It for... isn't nonsense, Chief. I mean it. Dr. Springer. Yes, what is it, nurse? The Red Cross just phoned, sir. Yes, yes, what are they saying? They know of a man with ABRH negative, but... Oh, no. Did you call him? Yes, sir, I did. I called the number the Red Cross gave and? me. It was a stand-up apartment. But the clerk there said the party moved to California about six months ago. Oh, 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 oh. Just a minute. Did you get the person's name and address in California, nurse? Well, yes, but it's oh, not enough time to... Kent? What's Chief. the difference? There's no possible way to get the man across the continent in 20 minutes. No, of course look, not. Look, you leave that to me? Nurse, what's the name and address? Oh, forget it, Kent. We haven't enough time. Hey, here it is. Uh, Mr. George Jacoby, right. 212 Lemon Grove Avenue, Pasadena, California. George Jacoby, 212 Lemon Grove, Pasadena. Oh, Thanks. Uh, where are you going, Kent? To get Mr. Jacoby. Good heaven. Now he's gone. But... I'll see you later. Now, where can I change? Oh, there's nobody in that room. There we are. Out of these clothes. This is definitely a job for Superman. Now, if all goes well, I'll have Mr. Jacoby back here in time to save Jim's life. There we are, all set. Let's raise this window. Up and away! Rocketing out of the hospital, Superman streaks westward through the skies like a red and blue thunderbolt. Bound for California and a shocking surprise. We'll be back in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Suppose you took a candid camera to the baseball park. Suppose you could march right up to the great Chicago White Sox catcher, Mike Tresh, and snap his picture. There he stands with his arm drawn back just like he was throwing out a runner at second base. Click, and you've got it. A photo thrill you'll have for keeps. Well, listen. Mike Tresh is only one of 24 different photos you can get as a prize. Super photos of famous movie or sports stars. There's one inside each package of Kellogg's Pet, the Super Serial. Correct. And every single star is a favorite of yours, including beautiful Virginia Mayo. You've seen her in all those Sam Goldwyn movies. And George Sanders, who stars in so many United Artists pictures. Remember, that's just a sample. You can get 24 different photos. And each photo is brilliantly clear, printed on actual glossy photographer's paper. A super photo, so real, so lifelike, each star practically says, Hiya, pal. Think of it. You can get anyone in every package of pep you open. And be sure you save all your photos, duplicates and all. Because in a day or two, we'll tell you how to play an exciting new game called Photo Swap. A swap game to help you complete your collection of all 24 different photos. Remember, you can't buy these photos. You don't send in a single penny or box top. They're yours as a prize. One in every package of pep. So I'll keep on the lookout for them at breakfast. Whenever you open a new package of those fresh, crisp, toasted flakes of whole wheat, Kellogg's Pep. And if you like what's delicious, you'll want to keep those pep packages coming right in at your house. Ask for Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super, as in Superman. <laughs> the adventures of Superman. Zooming across the continent from Metropolis, Superman has dropped to Earth before a pretty bungalow in Pasadena, California. A tall, broad-shouldered figure in blue costume and red cape, he strides to the front door and presses the button. Yes? How do you do? Good heavens, who are you? I don't be alarmed, madam. 
I'm Superman. Superman? That's right. This, uh, this is Mr. Jacoby's residence, isn't it? Why, yes. I'm Mrs. Jacoby. You used to live in Metropolis at the Stanhope Apartments? Yes, that's right. But uh, I must whatever... see your husband at once, Mrs. Jacoby. Where can I find him? Why, I, I don't know why I should Please tell, tell you. Please tell me, Mrs. Jacoby. A boy's life depends on my locating your husband. A boy's life? Yes. I, I'm sorry I haven't time to explain now, but take my word for it. A boy's life is in danger, and only your husband can save him. Now, where can I find him? You, you must have made a mistake. Uh, my husband isn't a doctor. Oh, I know, Mr. Jacoby, I know. But would, would you please tell me where he is? Every second counts. Well, I, I don't know where he is. You don't know? No, I don't. George called up at lunchtime and said an important customer was in town. And he was going out with him for the entire afternoon. Yes. And might even be late for dinner. Well, didn't he say where he was going? No, he didn't. Great Scott, I... I... Well, what'll I do now? Yes, Superman, what can even you do now? 3,000 miles away in Metropolis, Jimmy Olsen lies in a hospital bed, his life ebbing away. With only 15 minutes left, can you find the one man who can save him and transport him across the continent in time? What will Superman do? What can he do? We know Superman will not stand by idly while there is even one chance in a million to save his young friend. So for a thrill a minute, be sure to follow the man in tomorrow's exciting episode. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 3 of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. They're new. They're exciting. Terrific. terrific. Color transfers of funny paper folks. Harold Teen, Lilum, Shadow, and the Gumps. Tattoo them on your t-shirts, jackets, handkerchiefs. Just press on with a hot iron and they're on the stay through lots of washing. Six different color transfers, almost four inches high. And you get them as prizes only with Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. One in every package. No box tops, no money to send. And no waiting. Start your collection today. Get that sweet as a nut cereal, Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, in a desperate attempt to save young Jimmy Olsen's life, Superman streaks to California in search of a man named George Jacoby, who has the same rare type blood as Jimmy. A boy's life depends on my finding your husband in the next 15 minutes, Mrs. Jacoby. Please tell me where he is. I, I don't know where my husband is, Superman. You don't? No. You see, George called up at lunchtime and said an important customer was in town. Yes? He was going out with him for the afternoon and said he might be late for dinner. But didn't he say where he was going? No, no, he didn't. Great Scott, I... I... What'll I do now? Say, suppose you're walking along and suddenly right in front of you, you spot Dana Andrews, the Sam Goldwyn movie star. What a thrill did you snap his picture. Talk about luck. Sure, but you can still be lucky. You can get a photo of Dana Andrews as a prize. He's in that terrific pep photo series of 24 screen and sports stars. You get one in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Just think, a photo of your favorite star, like beautiful Hedy Lamar of United Artists. Or George McAfee, great halfback of the Chicago Bears. And every photo's brilliantly clear. Candid camera size for convenience. Not only swell to collect, but carrying Pep Super Photos with you, you're always ready to play the exciting new swap game that's spreading like wildfire. The game called Photo Swap. Right. Listen tomorrow. We'll show you how Photo Swap's played. All with photos from packages of Pep. Those crunchy flakes of good whole wheat. Correct. 
for an all-round prize dish at breakfast every morning, eat Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super, as in Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. Following an operation for a fractured skull, which he suffered in some mysterious manner, cub reporter Jimmy Olsen required an immediate blood transfusion. However, his blood was of an extremely rare type, and the only other person with the same type known to the Metropolis Red Cross was a man named George Jacoby, who had recently moved to California. With less than 20 minutes remaining in which to save Jimmy's life, Clark Kent secretly resumed his true identity of Superman and streaked across the continent to Pasadena, California, the home of George Jacoby. But to Superman's dismay, Mrs. Jacoby said that she had no idea where her husband could be found at that moment. Think, Mrs. Jacoby. Didn't your husband mention something that might give us a clue to where he is? No, no, he didn't. A restaurant. Or a club. Or some firm he does business with. No, he didn't, Superman. He just said he was going out for the afternoon with his customer and he might be late coming home for dinner. Oh, I've got to find him, Mr. Jacoby. I must. Now, look, perhaps someone in his office will know where he went. Where does he work? George is sales manager for the Thompson Shoe Company on 4th and Spring Street in Los Angeles. Thompson Shoe Company, 4th and Spring. Fine. His secretary's name is Miss Timmy. Thanks, Mr. Jacoby. Oh, uh, by the way, is that your husband's picture on the piano? Yes. Why? Well, I just want to know him if I should see him. Goodbye, Mr. Jacoby. Uh, goodbye. Now to see Jacoby's secretary. Up and away! <laughs> Try to remember, Miss Timmy. Are you sure Mr. Jacoby didn't say where he was going with his customer? No, sir. He just said he wouldn't be back today. I see. You say they left here about lunchtime? That's right, Superman. They went out to play golf. Oh? Where does Mr. Jacoby usually play? You should know that. Well, yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, usually he goes to his club. Which club? Well, he belongs to the Pine Hill Club in Westwood. Fine. I'll have a look there. Uh, wait. He sometimes plays Mr. Thompson's club. He's the president of our company. Oh, where's that? Uh, the St. Andrews in Bel Air. Okay. Thanks again. I'll try them both. Uh, just a minute. Yes? He also plays at Long Beach sometimes. He likes the course there. Oh, Any place else? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Oh, thank goodness. So long. Well, Jacoby isn't on the Pine Hill course or in the clubhouse either. That leaves Bel Air and Long Beach, and only ten minutes in which to find him and get him back to Metropolis. Away! <laughs> As Superman continues his desperate search for George Jacoby, Dr. Springer emerges from Jimmy Olsen's hospital room in Metropolis, 3,000 miles away. Editor Perry White walked forward anxiously to meet him. Oh, Doctor. Doctor, how is the boy? He's sinking, Mr. White. Sinking fast. Oh, no, no. Oh, Doctor, Doctor, do something. For heaven's sake, do something. As we find a blood donor in the next few minutes, there's nothing we can do. Oh, great Caesar, there ought to be at least one person in the city of Metropolis with the same blood type as Jim's, no matter how rare it is. There are millions of people in this town. Well, the Red Cross found only one. Yes, and he's in California. And what good does that do? None at all. Incidentally, what did Clark Kent mean when he said he had some sort of an idea for getting that fellow here from the coast? No, Kent didn't know what he was talking about. He's all broken up. He... Well, well, you see, Doctor, all of us are very fond of Jim. Of course. Say, what about Miss Lane's idea to make an appeal from your radio station for someone with Olsen's type blood? Well, she's at the studio broadcasting an appeal with Jim's mother right mm -hmm. now, but by the time she hears from anybody, if she does, and that person gets to the hospital... I'm afraid it'll be too late, Mr. White. We've only got five or ten minutes at most. Oh, ten minutes? Oh, Doctor. Doctor, isn't there anything else you can do to save that boy? Anything? Not a thing. Unless I can give Olsen an immediate blood transfusion, there is nothing mortal man can do for him. Absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, on a golf course in Long Beach, California, two men in sweaters and slacks are approaching the tee-off for the 12th hole. Oh! Now, that far in the last hole puts you two up, Wilson. Looks like you're too good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Want to concede the match, Jacoby? No, sir, not a chance. I'll go down five. Ah, that's the spirit. Okay, go on, shoot. All right. Hey, listen to that wind. It came up awful sudden, ain't you? Think we're in the storm? Holy smoke, look at this. 
Super... Excuse me, gentlemen. What? The... Sorry to break up your game. Well, who are you? Superman. 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 Right. Uh, your name is George Jacoby, isn't it? Uh, that's right. Now, listen. A boy in Metropolis will die unless he receives a blood transfusion at once. Only you can save him, Mr. Jacoby. I can? Yes. According to Red Cross records, you have the same rare type blood he has. Are you willing to go back to Metropolis with me? Oh, why, yes, of course. Wonderful. I knew you wouldn't refuse. But you said he needs a transfusion at once. A plane will take hours. I travel much faster than a plane, as you'll see. Come along. Up with you. There. Now, if only we're not too late. Up and away! Leaving Mr. Wilson standing open-mouthed on the golf course, Superman leaps high into the air with George Jacoby in his arms and streaks away to the east to Metropolis and Jimmy Olsen. Will the Man of Steel arrive in time to save Jimmy's life? We'll know in a moment when we return for the tense climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Say, the next time you're at a football game, try this. Don't watch the star player who's carrying the ball. Watch the rest of the team. Notice how every player is doing his share. Right. Otherwise, the star wouldn't gain an inch all by himself. But if everybody pitches in, then you've got a winning team. Yes, sir. And that's how the community chest in your city gets things done. By good old American teamwork. Everybody pitches in to help the community chest. And they all benefit in return. Now listen. Here's how you can do your share for the community chest. Just form a team in your neighborhood. Some of you can round up every bit of old newspapers. Others can collect scrap iron. Somebody else can gather up old bottles. Now, your grocer will give you a refund on a lot of bottles. Others of you can sell the rest of your haul to a junk man. Then turn the money you get over to the community chest in your city. Every single cent helps. And believe me, you'll get it all back again in many ways. Because the community chest benefits you right in your neighborhood. For instance, do you swim at the YMCA or the YW? Are you a member of a scout troop? Do you have fun at your local playground? Then you're getting some of the many benefits from your community chest. So do your share, because everybody benefits when everybody gives to your community chest. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Arriving at the Metropolis Hospital with George Jacoby, Superman disappeared only to join Perry White a few minutes later in his guise of the mild-mannered, bespectacled Clark Kent. Together, they paced the floor tensely while Jimmy was given a blood transfusion. Then, with Lois Lane and Jimmy's mother, they waited through the long, anxious hours of the night. Now, as the gray dawn breaks over Metropolis, Lois has taken the fatigued Mrs. Olson into a lounge. Editor White and Kent are alone outside of Jimmy's room when the door opens and Dr. Springer, his face drawn from lack of sleep, joins them. Well, Doctor? Is he? Is he? Olson's approaching the crisis now. I can't be sure, of course, but I think he'll pass it safely. Oh, that's oh, fine. Wonderful, wonderful. I'll tell his mother and Lois. They're in the lounge. Oh, wait. If they're resting, I wouldn't disturb them till the crisis is over, Mr. White. As I say, I can't be sure Olson will come through. Under the circumstances, Chief, maybe it's best not to. All right. All right, I'll wait. Olson's been calling for you, Kent. He has? You mean he's conscious? It's just partly. He seems to have something on his mind. He keeps calling for you. Might help him come out of the coma if he hears your voice. Well, I'll go in and talk to him. Oh, may I come along, Doctor? Yes, but be very quiet, please. I will, yes. Why, right, this way. Just let him talk, Ken. Don't say much. Okay. Mr. Ken. Mr. Ken. Yes, Jim. I'm right here. Got to... Got... Got to stop him, Mr. Ken. What's that? Quiet, Chief. Got to... Stop him. Before it's too late. Stop whom, Jim? Stop him, Mr. Kent. Help me. Yes, Jim. Please help me. What's the poor kid talking about? I don't know, Chief, but I think he's trying to tell us about what happened to him. Mr. Kent. Yes, Jim. Please help me. Before it's too late. Of course I'll help you, Jim. Just tell me. Jim. He's lost consciousness again. Is he... Will he be all right? I can't tell. There's no change yet. Oh, I wonder what the poor kid was trying to tell me. Probably nothing. He was delirious. No. No, Chief, I think he wanted to tell me something important. He wanted me to help him. Help him to stop somebody. But who? Why? That'll have to wait. You must leave now, both of you. What? This is the crisis. Oh. Well, come on, Kent. When will we know about him, Doctor? Very soon. I'll call you as soon as the crisis is over. Thanks. Good luck, Jim. Quietly, Clark, Kent, and Perry 
Sergeant White leave Jimmy Olsen's room? Will the boy reporter pass safely through his crisis? And what was he trying to tell Kent? Tomorrow's episode is tense and exciting, fellows and girls, so be sure to listen. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 4 of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep. The Super Serial. Say, here's some hot off the wire news. Hear all about those exciting color transfers of Harold Teen, Lilum, Shadow, and the Gump. Six in this new series, and you get them as prizes only with Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. One in every package. No box tops, no money to send. Hot iron transfers just four inches high. A cinch to press on. Sport them on your t-shirts, jackets, blouses, bandanas. Sure, wear them, swap them. Start your collection today. Look for your prize in every package of that sweet as a nut cereal, Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. And now, a special announcement. If you're a breakfast skipper, better watch out. The Campfire Girls are on the march against mid-morning mopers. For this is Better Breakfast Week. The Campfire Girls have been studying the importance of a good breakfast for good health. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman, in his guise of reporter Clark Kent, bursts into a hospital waiting room with good news for editor Perry White, who is nearly frantic with worry over the condition of Jimmy Olsen. Listen. He's all right, Chief. Jim's all right. He passed the crisis. Oh, wonderful, Kent. Wonderful. Can we see the boy now? No, Chief. Not yet. Maybe, maybe later today. Oh, fine, fine. I want to hear him tell exactly what happened to him. And if he was slugged, as you think... I'm sure he was. Then I promise you, Kent, that whoever did that to Jim will pay for it. If I have to move heaven and earth to find him. Hey, suppose you're at a swimming meet. You see the great Adolf Kiefer bust another backstroke record. Then right in front of you, he comes out of the pool grinning, and you snap his picture. Well, but you can get that very same photo of Adolf Kiefer as a prize. He's among 24 famous screen and sports stars whose photos you get, one in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Right. Great stars like lovely Virginia Mayo, starred in Sam Goldwyn movies, or Charlie Trippy, All-American Half-Track. Each photo's candid camera size, brilliantly clear, printed on real glossy photographer's paper. And a swell game of photo swap helps you complete your collection of all 24 different photos in this great series. You see, you use your duplicate photos to play photo swap. And in the swap, you may get the very photos you need for your collection. Correct. Later in the program, we'll show you how to play photo swap with duplicate photos from packages of PEP. Those swell-tasting flakes of good whole wheat. Tops in the taste department. That's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. Following an operation for a fractured skull, which he suffered in an unexplained manner... Jimmy Olsen, cub reporter for the Metropolis Daily Planet, required an immediate blood transfusion. But his blood was of an extremely rare type. And with only minutes remaining, Clark Kent and his true identity of Superman streaked to California, where lived a man known to have a similar type of blood. Superman brought him back to Metropolis. And following a transfusion, Jimmy began to recover. Late the following day, Clark Kent and editor Perry White were permitted to visit their young friend. We join them now at Jimmy's bedside in the hospital. Listen. The doctor said we can stay for only a few minutes, Jim. So, well, suppose you start at the beginning and tell us quickly what happened. How you were hurt, everything. Okay, Mr. Kent. I'll do my best. All right, now, Jim. Now, just take it slow and easy. Right. Well, it all began because I got so interested in the coming elections. The elections? Well, what's that got Let to... him go on, Chief. Yeah. You see, Beanie told me his brother Joe was getting into politics. 
And he's making speeches against the Hickey machine's control of the city. Joe Martin? Uh-huh. Joe's a real swell guy and a decorated veteran and all that. So I wanted to see if there was something I could do to help him. Good boy. Well, that's fine. But how did you get that get you a cracked skull? Well, I'm coming to that, Chief. I found out that Joe was making a speech at Lincoln Square. It was to be at noon. So on my lunch hour, I went over there to, well, to sort of give him a hand. There's always lots of people in the square at noon, you know. So Joe had a pretty big crowd. And what he was saying... Whatever happened to that post-war world we were led to expect? Yeah. What happened to the things we were told we'd find waiting for us when we came back? Yeah, where are you? The war's over. We've been back home for two years, and most of us don't even have homes to live in. And why? I'll tell you why. Because those things were all campaign promises made by Mike Hickey and his machine to ensure their re-election. Oh, and now that they think they're in solid in City Hall, there's only one thing we can do about it. Vote them out in their next election. Oh, it really started something there with that speech. He had most of the crowd with him, but then some hecklers got to work on him. They called him un-American. They did? Uh-huh. Said he was trying to start a revolution and stuff like that. Well, how do you like that? Oh, relax, Chief. That's typical of crooked politicians. They always try to cover their own sins by smearing the opposition and calling them all kinds of names. But, but Martin's a veteran, a war hero. Oh, but that cuts no ice with people like Hickey and his crowd. Joe's in their way. Can't find anything else to smear him with, so they call him un-American. That usually manages to get a rise out of an unthinking mob. No, but it's so unfair. Oh, of course it is. Go on, Jim. What happened then? I suppose you uh, leaped to Joe's defense, eh? Sure. I know, Joe. I know he's a darn good American. Sure. I couldn't just stand there and listen while guys heckled him, could I? Certainly not. Mm, You ought to know better than to get into a fight with with grown men. Probably paid goons at that. I guess so, but I was mad. Climbed up on a bench and yelled that Joe was right about Hickey. And that Joe was an honest citizen. And then... Somebody came up and slugged you? Uh Uh-huh. I saw him coming. A big six-footer with a blackjack. Before I could duck, he let me have it. That's all I can remember. Uh, He was probably one of Mike Hickey's goon squad. Well, the elections are coming up. Hickey's probably ordered his goons to take their gloves off. He must feel he's powerful enough to get away with anything, even breaking heads. No, he does, does he? Why, why, that's Hitler stuff. That's what all demagogues do, Jim, when the people are too lazy and too careless to make sure that only trustworthy men are elected to public office. Most of us make the mistake of leaving things to the professional politicians. Then we usually wake up to discover we've been taken over, lock, stock, and barrel by crooked party bosses like Mike Hickey. And we also find it's a long, hard job to get rid of them. Well, it's going to be done this time, Kent. Once and for all. I'd like to see that, Chief. Mike Hickey has built the strongest political machine Metropolis ever saw. I know, but I can break it. And I'm going to. How? Well, I'll tell you at the office. Well, so long, Tim. I'm sorry you had to have your skull fractured to wake us up. Well, if something good comes of it, it'll be worth it, Chief. Atta boy, Jim. Come on, Kent, come on. We're going to start digging Hickey's political grave right now. <laughs> Barry White seems to mean business, but Clark Kent warns the strong-minded editor that he is courting trouble and danger. And he's right, as we'll find out in just a moment when we return with the dramatic climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Attention, everybody. Here's where we give a demonstration of how to play Photo Swap, the most exciting swap game in years. All you need to play Photo Swap is some of those swell, candid camera-sized photos you get. One in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Right. You can get 24 different photos of screen and sports stars, like Charlie Drippy, All-American halfback, and Joan Bennett, glamorous star of United Artists, and the Chicago White Sox pitcher, Orville Grove. Of course, you want to collect all 24 different photos in this series. So naturally, you want to swap your duplicates with friends. And that's where Photo Swap comes in. Correct. Now, rule number one is, always carry with you the duplicates you want to swap. And rule two is, you must carry two or more of these photos in order to play. Okay. Suppose I'm walking along, I meet a friend. I pull out my duplicate photos and keep them covered in my hand. Now, listen, here's how it goes. Photo swap? That's to make sure he knows the rules. Hey, uh, photo swap? Yeah. Uh, That means I'm pulling out my photos, too. Then swap two off the top. Now, each of us hands the other two photos off the top of his pile. And that double photo swap may bring each of us two steps closer to a complete collection of 24 different photos. Remember, you play photo swap with your duplicates. Sure. Keep your originals in a safe place so there's never any risk of losing your collection of these swell photos from packages of Kellogg's Pet. And all the while you're collecting them, you'll be doing some prize eating because those crisp whole wheat flakes of Pep 
are so good, you want more and more and more. That's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Our scene is a large room, equipped as a combination office and living room above a tavern in the teeming tenement district of Metropolis. In the very center of the room is a barber's chair, and seated in it now is a heavy-set man a little below average height. This is Mike Hickey, powerful political boss of Metropolis. A barber stands behind him, trimming his thick, graying hair. A boot black is busy shining his shoes. A girl manicurist sits beside Hickey at work on the nails of one of his soft, square hands, the middle finger of which wears a jeweled ring. In his other hand, he holds an extension telephone into which he speaks, oblivious to the people about him, to the men who come and go constantly through a door at the far end of the room, to another phone which rings almost incessantly. Cigar smoke like a dense gray fog hangs over the whole room. Who's going to make a speech against me? The president of Metropolis University? Tonight, eh? We'll let him talk. Public don't listen to eyebrows. They use too many long words. <laughs> no, don't bother with him, man. So long. Hey, take a punch. Phone away, will you, Punchy? Okay, boss. Oh, Lou's waiting on the other extension. You want to talk to him? Yeah, I'll give it to him. Coming up, boss. Hello, Lou. What's in your mind? Oh, Joe Martin's popping off in another meeting, huh? Well, if he gets a big crowd, bust it up like he did the other day. If there ain't much of a crowd, let the dope talk. Huh? So what if he is a war hero? He hasn't got any organization behind him to get out the voters on primary day. And like I always say, as long as the suckers are too lazy to vote in the primaries when they got a say about who gets nominated, we've got nothing to worry about. So long, Lou. Take it away, Punchy. Okay, boys. <laughs> you know all the answers, boys. Well, it's simple, Punchy. If sucker public stays away from the polls on primary day, and we nominate our boys without any trouble. So, on election day, the voters can only vote for who we or the other party puts up, right? Right, right. boys. And because we got the strongest machine, our guys always get selected. Right? <laughs> hey, hey, don't be careful how you're cutting over my ears. Don't, uh, don't take off too much hair. Huh? Okay, hey, Mr. Hickey. Harry McIntyre of Extension Wild! Oh, Harry McIntyre, boss. You want to talk to him? Okay. Yeah, what gives, Harry? Daily Planet? No, I didn't. What about it? Oh, a page one blast, huh? What? Uh, back at Joe Martin for mayor? <laughs> That's a joke. Without an organization? Hey, wait a minute. They can't beat us, but they might make trouble. Get the people stirred up and open the way for a reform movement next year. Maybe we better nip this in the bud right now. Yeah. Maybe we better nip Mr. Joe Martin and the Daily Planet both in the bud. But good. Uh-huh. Tell you what, Harry. Get Nick and his boys and come up here right away. We're going to do a little job. A couple of little jobs. Tonight. <laughs> Handing the telephone to his henchman, Mike Hickey sits back thoughtfully in the barber's chair, his half-shut black eyes sharp and calculating and as empty of warmth as those of a jungle cat. What action is he planning against the Daily Planet and against Joe Martin? Fellows and girls, Clark Kent was right when he warned Perry White of danger, because there is great danger ahead for the gray-haired editor and for Joe Martin. So don't miss tomorrow's thrill-packed episode in our new story. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station, for Chapter 5 of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Say, look at him. Look at his jersey. Looks slick with all those swell comic characters on it. There's Lillums. Here's Harold Teen, even Shadow. Six new exciting color transfers. One in every package of Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. 
Be first in your crowd to tattoo funny paper folks on all your sports clothes. Just press them on with a hot iron, a cinch, and they'll stay on through lots of washings. Look for your prize. Get your new comic transfer in every package of that good, sweet as a nut cereal, Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. Yes, Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep. The Super Cereal. Super, as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the Super Cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman's suspicions are proven right as Mike Hickey, political boss of Metropolis, plans trouble for the Daily Planet and for Joe Martin. War hero brother of Beanie Martin, the planet copy boy. Listen. Did you see the roasting the Daily Planet gave me today, Pete? Yeah, Mr. Hickey, I did. And I see that back in that G.I. hero, Joe Martin, for mayor. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> it's not so funny. The Planet's the most important newspaper in this state, and they're out from my hide. So we've got to nip this reform movement in the bud. Before it can grow up and nip us. You got any ideas, Mr. Hickey? Plenty of them. The first thing is to crack down on the planet, but good. I'll throw those wise guys who's boss in this town. Look, suppose you're good friends with the movie star George Sanders. You breeze right into the United Artists studio and ask him to pose for a picture. He says, for you, sure. So you snap a photo anybody would envy. But here's an easier way you can get that photo. George Sanders is one of 24 famous screen and sports stars whose photos you can get as a prize. One in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. And there's Peggy Ann Garner of 20th Century Fox and Charlie Trippy, all-American halfback. Just wait till you see these photos, sharp and clear. A handy, candid camera size. And to help complete your collection of all 24 photos, play the exciting new game of Photo Swap. We'll show you later how it's played. Correct. And keep on collecting your photos from every package of those crisp, catchy tasting flakes of whole wheat, Kellogg's Pep. Talk of a delicious breakfast dish. Well, you won't talk. You'll be spooning up Pep faster and faster and faster. It's that good. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super, as in Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. When strong arm men hired by Mike Hickey, political boss of Metropolis, seriously injured cub reporter Jimmy Olsen at an opposition rally, Editor Perry White swore he would break Hickey's hold on the city in the approaching election. Disregarding Clark Kent's warning that it would be dangerous for the Daily Planet to take on the job alone, White announced he would back Joe Martin, war hero brother of copy boy Beanie Martin, for mayor. Now, the following morning, White and Joe Martin are in conference in the gray-haired editor's office when Kent enters. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Mr. Kent. I just come from the hospital, Chief. Jim's getting along fine. Oh, good, good. And we're going to get along fine here, too. What do you mean? Well, what do you suppose I mean? We're getting our campaign to rid Metropolis of Mike Hickey and his rotten political machine underway. Well, that's fine, Chief. Do you know, I... Kent? I've had at least 50 telephone calls congratulating me on my editorial in yesterday's planet. And you should see the mail. Hey, okay, that's well, but, Chief, I... I'm Joe here. What? Oh, you tell him, Joe. Tell them about the phone calls and wires from XGIs who offer to help put over your campaign from air. Well, a lot of the boys are for me, of course, but I don't think we should build our hopes too high. At least I'm not. You're not? Well, what kind of talk is that? Are you ready to give up even before the fight's begun? Oh, no, Mr. White. I'll never give up my fight against Mike Hickey and others like him. I'm just being realistic, that's all. You see... What do you mean, realistic? Oh, wait, easy. Hey, give him a chance. Go on, Joe. Well, I think it'll take more time than we've got to beat Hickey. Because in order to smash a political machine, you've got to put together a strong citizen's organization. Line up good speakers, run rallies, have a staff of workers in each ward, every block, who'll explain the issues to the voters. But it'll take until the next election to do that. Nothing doing, nothing doing. I'm not waiting until the next election. I'll be hanged if I'm going to sit idly by while the Hickey strong arm mob runs this city for another tenure or moment. I want action now. Sit here. I'll hammer at them day after day, all over the front page. All right. And if you fellows aren't with me, I'll do it alone. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just relax for a moment and listen. 
Neither Joe nor I deny that everything you say about Mike Hickey is true. All right. Then why don't you... We help want Hickey's scalp as much as you do. Matter of fact, you may recall that I've been after you for some time to open up in that bunch in City Hall. Okay, so now we're going to get after them. Yes, but with the elections only a month off, I'm afraid that maybe your way, as Joe says, is wrong. Now, I've got an alternate plan to suggest. One that'll give us better than a 50-50 fighting chance for success. Are you willing to listen? Well, of course I am. Go on, spill it. Okay, here it is. Now, my plan depends on... Uh, just a minute, Ken. Someone wants me on the intercom. Okay. Yes? Murphy, composing room. Well, what is it, Murphy? Trouble, Chief. No paper. What do you mean, no paper? I know that a boat loaded with paper for us docked in the harbor last night. That's right. And our trucks were at the dock first thing this morning to pick it up. But they couldn't get the paper. Why not? The boat's quarantined. Quarantined? That's... Yeah, the health department says one of the crew is sick. But something that might start an epidemic. So they ordered the boat anchored out in the harbor. Oh, no. Not bad. Uh, how will we fix the paper stock, Murphy? And that's so good. You know, we loaned about 500 tons to the bulletin last week after the warehouse burned down. And that leaves us with only enough left for two days. Oh, you're kidding. No, sir. If we don't get an okay to unload that boat by day after tomorrow, we are out of business. Great, Scott. I'll call you back, Murphy. Right. Well, how do you like that? Just when we need paper like never before to blast that picky mob out of existence, this has got to happen. I'm afraid this didn't just happen. Huh? What do you mean? My hunch is we've been framed. Framed? But who would do a thing like that? Mike Hickey? Holy smoke. He's got enough official control to pull a thing like this. Why, sure. That's right, by heaven. Mike Hickey did this to stop the planet's presses, to keep us from telling the people the truth about him. Well, I'm not going to let him get away with this. How can you stop him, Mr. Wilson? I'll go to the health department, to the police, to the mayor. I'll take him to the highest court in the land. I'll show them they can't now, pull a thing like this wait on me and get away with it. Calm down. I won't. Wait a minute. Now, first, it's just my hunch that Hickey is behind this. Second, even if you have a bare chance of licking that quarantine, it'll be days, maybe weeks, before they lift it. And in the meantime, where will we be? Uh, we can't be any worse off than we are now. Now, wait a minute. Don't we own a paper mill in Canada? Well, sure we do. That's where the boatload came from. But do you know how long it takes for a shipment to get down here? Yes, I know. But I also know how we can get at least a carload of it and right away. Now, look, Kent. This is no time for jokes. This is no I... joke. Wait and see. Kent! Hey, wait. Where, where are you going? Well, what are you going to do? No time for quiz games now, Chief. Just you sit tight and watch us knock the props out from under Mr. Hickey's frame-up. <laughs> Leaving Perry White and Joe Martin wondering if he can be serious, Clark Kent hurries into a deserted storeroom. A moment later, stripped down to the red and blue costume of Superman, he rockets out into the sunless sky and hurtles northward, his crimson cape screaming in the wind. Within a matter of minutes, workers at a large paper mill in Canada are amazed to see the tall, colorfully garbed figure plummet down from the sky and seek out the plant superintendent. Great she horse with that Superman. Right, Mr. Gavin. I'm here to pick up some more paper for the Daily Planet. Can you give me a carload now? Well, uh, my sure, Superman, as soon as we can load it. Don't bother. I'll take care of that. You just show me where I can find it. Out at the warehouse, this way. Following the bewildered superintendent to the stockpile, Superman swiftly loads a number of huge, heavy rolls of newsprint paper on a flat car. Then, as the mill hands look on in awestruck astonishment, the man of steel lifts the railroad car and, holding it as if it were a waiter's tray, leaps up into the sky. Up, up, and away! A short while later, Superman delivers his cargo to the Daily Planet building, and the presses are kept rolling in the campaign to defeat corrupt politicians. But it isn't long before Mike Hickey is advised of Perry White's mysterious shipment of paper. Curious at this unforeseen turn of events, he summons one of his men. Hey! Yeah, Mr. Hickey. Somehow White managed to get around our quarantine of his boat and load up with enough paper to keep the Daily Planet going. Spread the word that I want to know what happened and how. You got it, Pete? Yeah, Mr. Hickey, I got it. Now that they've taken the first trick from me, we're really going to get tough. Tell the way I want to see him. I want him and you to carry out my plan to fix it so uh, Joe Martin don't run for mayor. And when the Daily Planet bunch sees what happens... <laughs> I guarantee they won't want to back anybody else who runs against my machine. Worried now and very much angered, the powerful political machine boss prepares a new scheme designed to wreck the newborn reform movement that threatens his power. What will happen? We'll know in a moment, so stand by. Part 1. 
partner, what am I hiding in my hand? Well, by the look of face, I'd say you had some of those pep super photos and were set for a game of photo swap. Right. But first, let's explain that you play photo swap with the photos of screen and sports stars you get. One in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. They're actual candid camera-sized super photos of great stars like Joan Bennett and Dana Andrews of United Artists. Or Orville Grove, Chicago White Sox pitcher. Now listen, you want to collect all 24 different photos in the series. Sure. And that's where Photo Swap, the swell new swap game, comes in. You play it with your duplicate photos. So always carry with you at least two or more duplicates you want to swap. Right. Now we'll show you how the game goes. I meet my friend here. So I pull out my duplicate photos and keep them covered in my hand. Then I say, Photo Swap? So he pulls out his photos too. Keeps them covered. Hey, Photo Swap? Yep. Then... What? Two off the top. Okay. Then we trade the two top photos in our hands. Correct. And that double swap may give each of us two photos we needed for our collection of 24 different photos in the series. And remember, every pep package has a super photo inside as a prize. And every pep package is crammed with prize eating. You just can't beat those crisp, catchy tasting flakes of whole wheat. I mean, Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. <laughs> the adventures of Superman. As we rejoin them now, Clark Kent is seated in Perry White's office, talking over the day's events with his editor. Boy, oh boy, can't I give a lot to know what's going on through Mike Dickey's head. I mean, since he found out that he didn't stop us from publishing by slapping a quarantine on a boatload of paper. I'm afraid you'll know <laughs> soon enough. It won't be very nice either. Huh? Oh, Robbie, he's stymied now. There's nothing he can do to us. Well, oh, by the way, Kent, how did you manage to contact Superman to help us out of this spot? Oh, mental telepathy, you might say. Oh, come now. What's the difference, Chief? That's not important now. What we've got to do is plan to prevent the next move. Mr. White! Mr. Kent! What's the matter, Beanie? What happened? I, I came to tell you, my, my brother Joe... Well, what about Joe? He, he, he won't be running mayor now. You what? What do you mean? What happened, Beanie? Come falling and tell us. Oh, Joe! Joe! Oh, golly! I don't know how to tell you! His hands covering his face, his shoulders bent. Copyboy Beanie Martin breaks into heartbroken sobbing as Clark Kent and editor Perry White stand by, wondering and alarmed. What has happened to Beanie's brother Joe, the planet candidate for mayor of Metropolis? Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss, threatens that Joe Martin would not run for office. What has Hickey done to make good his threat? We'll find out in tomorrow's exciting episode, so be sure to listen. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 6 of... Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super serial. Say, wanna be original? Wanna? Be among the first to sport color transfers of Harold Teen, Lillum, Shadows, and the Gump. Tattoo them onto your shirts, blouses, and bandanas. Just press them on with a hot iron. They'll stay on through lots of watching. Get all six in this new series. You'll find one in every package of Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. They're new. They're terrific. Almost four inches hot. Remember, no box tops, no money to send. Get your color transfers right in your next package of the sweet as a nut cereal, Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. Tomorrow night, Halloween, which means fun. But have fun without breaking or damaging things. There's been too much damage already from hurricanes and forest fires. So don't add to the destruction. Don't light fire. Don't damage property. Play safe. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman, in his guise of Clark Kent, and his editor, Perry White, finds themselves in danger of losing their fight against a dishonest political machine 
even before the real battle has begun. Listen as they question war hero Joe Martin. Joe, what's this I hear about you dropping out of the campaign for mayor? Yes. Will you please tell us so it makes sense? Well, I... I can't run for mayor now. What? Yeah, easy. Why, Joe? Because... Can Won't you tell us why? I don't know if we'll do any good, Ted. Well, look here, Joe. Are you in some kind of trouble? Yes, plenty of trouble. The kind of trouble I... I can't fight. Uh-oh. I think I detect our friend Mr. Mike Hickey and his machine in this, and it doesn't smell good. You know, few of us can be personal friends with a great sports star like George McAfee, the Chicago Bear halfback. So think of getting an action photo of him as a prize. Right. He's in that terrific pep photo series of famous stars. You get a photo inside every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Correct. An actual photo of a great screen or sports star. For instance, along with George McAfee, there's Hedy Lamarr of United Artists and lovely Virginia Mayo, starred in so many Sam Goldwyn movies. Every photo's clear and sharp. A handy, candid camera size. Now, of course, you'll want to collect all 24 photos in this swell series and fast. So learn to play Photo Swap, the exciting swap game. Not only fun, helps you trade your duplicates for photos you don't already have. Remember, look for your photo in every package of Pep. Those catchy whole wheat flakes that turn breakfast into fun. From the first taste, you'll want a bigger spoon, because it carries more Pep at every delicious trip. I mean Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. When cub reporter Jimmy Olsen was seriously injured by henchman of Mike Hickey, political boss at Metropolis, editor Perry White swore he would drive Hickey and his corrupt political machine out of power. White opened an attack on Hickey in the Daily Planet and chose Joe Martin, war hero and brother of Beanie Martin, the planet's copy boy, to run for mayor against the machine candidate in the approaching election. Enraged, Hickey swore he would nip this reform movement in the bud. And the following evening, Beanie Martin came to White's office and tearfully announced that his brother Joe was in serious trouble and was now unable to run for mayor on the planet's reform ticket. Alarmed, White and Kent rushed out to talk with Joe and found him in a reception room at the district attorney's office, where we join them now. Listen. What's the matter, Joe? What happened? Yeah, what do you mean by saying you can't run from air? It's the truth. That dirty so-and-so fixed me. But good. Who did? What are you talking about? Hick. Mr. Mike Hick. All right, tell us the whole story, Joe. All the details from the beginning. Okay, here it is. You see, my father runs the news and cigar stand at the lobby of the Tremor building. Uh Uh-huh. He's had that ever since the building was put up about 25 years ago. Yes, we know that. Now, go on. Well, this afternoon, my father was arrested. Arrested? What on earth for? He was accused of being a book of using his stand as a front to take illegal bets on horse racing. Good grief. Frame up, eh? Well, of course. When he was arrested, a fellow was at his stand with a receipt for a bet. He said he'd, uh, he'd just given my father money to place on a horse for him. Huh. Then the police brought Dad down to the DA's office, and half a dozen seedy-looking guys swore they'd been placing bets with him for years. They were lying. Oh, of course they were. The filthy... Easy, Chief. Easy. Go on, Joe. Well, they took Dad down to headquarters where he was booked and locked up until I could go bail for him. It took me quite a while. I had to cash in my war bond. Well, why didn't you come to me? Oh, I... I didn't want to bother you until I had to, Mr. White, but, but now I, I need help. You see, it's clear that my father was framed, but I don't know what to do about it. He's all broken up. Tremor building said they were going to cancel his lease and his stand. Well, so far, Beanie and I have kept it for my mother. She's not very well. She's been sick for a long time. And if she finds out about this, well, it won't do her any good. Oh, uh, no, no, Mr. White. No. It's all over for me. I'm licked. You you mean you're you're really going to knuckle under the Higgy? Give up without a fight? Now, wait a minute. Well, believe me, Mr. White, it isn't because I want to. No. If I had just myself to consider, I'd never give up. I'd fight Hickey to a finish. And mainly because this is my town, because I've got a wife and a child. And I'd like to make this a decent place for them to live in. Of course, Joe, we understand. Well, maybe Hickey's machine is too powerful for us to buck against. Oh, come now, Chief. You're not giving up, are you? I don't know, Kent. The whole picture looks black. The picture isn't so black. Let's prove what we can do. Well, that's brave talk, but what can we do? We can talk to and get the active backing of all those business, civic, and religious leaders in town, those who called and wired to congratulate you on your editorials against Hickey. Organize a reform party. Hey, do you think maybe, just maybe, we can get an organization thrown together? Worth a chance. Call a meeting. Get them together this evening. Invite the other papers to be represented there. I guarantee that we can pick a man out of that group to run against the Hickey machine. Tonight, 
take it, gentlemen, that uh, you, as the outstanding business, civic and religious leaders of Metropolis, are ready to head a reform party that will run Mike Hickey and his gang out of City Hall. Fine, fine. There's a lot of organizational work to do. But first, we've got to decide on the man for mayor. Now, I've been giving a lot of thought to that, and I'd like to propose a man you all know and respect. One of the leading merchants and civic leaders of the city, George Hollister. Wait a minute, wait a minute, gentlemen. While I appreciate the honor, Perry and gentlemen, I couldn't possibly, sir. Why? My department store takes all my time. Oh. And besides, I sit on several directors' boards, so I must decline. Oh, now, listen, George. This is bigger than your store. No, oh, it's out of the question, Perry. But uh, what's the matter with Bert Gray here? Bert headed the Red Cross and community chest drives for years. He's very well known and universally respected. He'd make a fine man. Uh, it's impossible, gentlemen. My, my company has recently merged with two others, as you know. I've been elected chairman of the board. I couldn't possibly take time to hold public office. Either. Nah, you see? You see? That's why my kicky runs Metropolis. Because everyone's too busy with his private affairs to take part in his own government. So we leave it to professional politicians. And then we squawk at what they do. Now, does that make sense? Oh, oh, how can they expect yeah, yeah. to have a decent city or a decent country if we shirk our duties as citizens? Now, look here, Perry. We go to the polls and polls. You we... vote? Yes, yes. But who do you vote for? I'll tell you. For the suit is Mike Hickey and the other party bosses puts on the ticket. And you know that the only way you can have a decent government is to see that good, honest men are nominated and elected. But George is too busy with his department store. And Bert Gray is too busy with his business. And I suppose the rest of you... Oh, just a minute, just a minute, Chief. Chief, how about you running for mayor? Look, oh, me? Are you crazy, Ken? Not at all. You're even better known than Mr. Hollister or Mr. Gray. You're the editor of the largest and most influential paper in the city. Your reputation is impeccable. You'd make a swell mayor. You certainly would, Chief. That's a wonderful idea. No, 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 no Lois, you stay out of this. It's impossible. <laughs> Uh, it's ridiculous. I, I can't run for mayor. Why can't you, Chief? Yes, give us one. Well, I, I, it's impossible. You know that. Well, 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 I've got to get out the Daily Planet. And, uh, oh, I'm so busy. Well, you're doing just what you accuse these others of doing, The Chief. Planet is well organized. It can get along without you for a while, but the city can't. It needs you and men like you. Now, how about... Well, well, I don't know, oh, but... come on, Chief. If you really meant what you said, you'll say yes now. Well, it... It looks as if you've got me. And you'll run for mayor? Yes, Sam. Yes, I'll run. Ah, <laughs> boy, Chief. Hail to mayor, Hello. Mr. Hickey? Yeah, who's there? Pete, listen. What's the idea of waking me up at 10 o'clock in the morning? Well, I thought you better hear this right away. I just got a tip that Perry White... Editor of Daily Planet, you know. Organized a reform party. Lots of big shots are in it. You talking this. to me? White's running for mayor himself. Oh, he is, eh? I thought the job we did on Joe Martin would scare him off. I guess he don't scare reason. Here, get this, boy. George Hollister is running for city treasurer. And Bert Gray for public works commissioner. That's also, enough, Pete. I don't like this. Meet me at the office in 30 minutes. <laughs> What move will Mike Hickey make now against this new and strong challenge to his corrupt power? We'll be back in a moment with the startling climax of today's episode, so keep listening. Say, partner, what's the way to really rate with a crowd? Well, you could treat them all to sodas, or the first to complete a pep photo collection, all 24 pictures. Now you're talking. You mean those 12 photos of screen and sports stars you get as a prize, one in every package of Kellogg Pep, the super cereal. Correct. An actual candid camera-sized photo of a great star like Peggy Ann Garner of 20th Century Fox Pictures. And Adolph Kiefer, the swimming champion. And the great Chicago White Sox catcher, Mike Craig. Now the exciting way to swap your duplicate photos for ones you haven't got. Just play Photo Swap, the slick new swap game. But be sure to carry with you at least two or more duplicates. Then you're all set to play Photo Swap anytime. For instance, say I meet my partner here. I pull out my duplicate photos and keep them covered in my hand. Then I say, Photo Swap? So he pulls out his spares and keeps them covered. Hey, photo swap? Yeah. Then swap two off the top. Now we trade the two top photos in our hand. You see, that double swap may give each of us the two photos we need for our collection of 24 different stars in the series. Of course, if you get duplicates you already have, then use them for photo swap with other friends. And say, want to make a happy swap at breakfast? Then swap that gotta get out of bed frown for a big smile of eating happiness. The minute you dig into a bowl full of pep, 
those catchy flakes of crisp whole wheat. Yes, sir, Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of Superman. After a busy day organizing the Perry White for Mayor campaign, Clark Kent and Lois Lane have dined, called on Jimmy Olsen at the hospital, and then taxied to Lois's apartment house, where Kent is saying goodnight to her in the lobby. On a table, a small radio plays softly. Oh, what a day. I'm all in, Clark. Yeah, me too. I'll get a good night's sleep, Lois. I'll see you in the morning. Right. Night. Night. Your attention, please. Wait a minute, Your Nora. attention, please. What's this? Huh? We've just been informed that Perry White, editor of the Metropolis Daily Planet... Chief! ...and candidate for mayor on the new Reform Party ticket, has just been arrested... Arrested? ...and charged with criminal assault. Criminal assault? Stunned, Clark Kent and Lois Lane stare at each other, unable to speak. Perry White, who we know would not hurt a fly, arrested, charged with criminal assault. What can this mean? Can this be the work of Mike Hickey, whose evil power has been challenged by the gray-haired editor? There's a thrill a minute in Monday's action-packed episode, fellows and girls, so be sure to listen. Don't fail to tune in again Monday, same time, same station, for Chapter 7 of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. They're new. They're exciting. They're terrific. Color transfers of funny paper, folks. Harold Teen, Lilum, Shadow, and the Gump. Tattoo them on your t-shirt, jacket, handkerchief. Just press on with a hot iron and they're on to stay through lots of washing. Six different color transfers, almost four inches high. And you get them as prizes only with Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. One in every package. No box tops, no money to spend. And no waiting. Start your collection today. Get that sweet as a nut cereal, Kellogg's Shredded Wheat. Say, tonight's Halloween. Play safe. Don't light fires. Don't damage property. Play safe. This program came from New York. <laughs> Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the Super Serial. Super, as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman in his guise of Clark Kent is with drill reporter Lois Lane when a special announcement comes like a bolt from the blue. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen... Your attention, please. Wait, Clark, let's hear this. Harry White, editor of the Metropolis Daily Planet. The chief of And candidate for mayor on the new Reform Party ticket has just been arrested. Arrested? arrested? Charged with criminal assault. Say, hey, get out your pep photo of Charlie Trippy, the all-American halfback. Now look at his photo from any angle and notice how his eyes seem to follow you. Lifelike? You bet. Just like all 24 photos of famous screen and sports stars in this great test series. You get a candid camera-sized photo as a prize. One inside every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Correct. Besides Charlie Trippy, there's Joan Bennett of United Artists Movies and Dana Andrews, the Sam Goldwyn star. Now if you haven't started to collect all 24 photos in this 12 series, get going and learn to play photo swap. The thrilling swap game will show you later in the program. It's the exciting way to trade your duplicates for photos you don't already have. Remember, get your photo in every package of Pep, those swell whole wheat flakes that make breakfast fun to eat. Yes, every crunchy bite is a brand new reason to polish your bowl clean. That's a bowl full of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. <laughs> Adventures of Superman. Determined to free Metropolis from the gangster rule of Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss, 
Editor Perry White and Clark Kent, who, as we know, is Superman, called together the business, civic, and religious leaders of the city and organized a reform party. And at the first meeting, White was persuaded to run for mayor. When boss Mike Hickey learned of this, he told his henchmen, When we get through with Perry White and his reform party, they'll wish they'd never been born. Late the following evening, radio programs were interrupted to announce that Perry White had just been arrested, charged with criminal assault. Shocked and bewildered, Clark Kent and Lois Lane, star reporters for White's newspaper, The Daily Planet, raced to police headquarters and cornered their old friend, Inspector Henderson. What in the name of heaven is this all about, Inspector? I suppose you're referring to Perry White. Naturally. Just heard a radio flash saying he'd been arrested. Now, that can't be true. Well, it is. White was arrested, all right, Kent. He's in the city jail. Mr. White? In the city jail? That's right, Miss Lane. I never heard anything so ridiculous in my whole life. Neither did I. Something's very wrong, Inspector. Well, if you two will be quiet for just a moment, maybe I can get a word in. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now, in the first place, there's been no mistake. Secondly, your boss is in a very bad spot. We've got him booked on a hit-and-run charge. Now, wait a minute. He struck a man down with his car at Roosevelt Boulevard and 88th Street this evening. Seriously injured him and sped away. Oh, I can't believe that. Neither can I. Someone must have made a mistake, Inspector. Oh, no, 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 Miss Lane. Several reputable witnesses saw the accident and identified him. What? What's more, they got the license number of White's car. What? They, they did? That's right. And, and he... The chief was driving? You're sure? According to at least six witnesses, a man who answers White's description perfectly stopped his car after the accident and got out. Then, when he saw the man lying there, he must have lost his nerve. Because they say he jumped back into his car and sped away. We picked him up at his house. I can't believe it. Look, Inspector, you... You say there were at least six witnesses? Right. And reputable witnesses, Kent. Oh? Yes. Men like Professor Nielsen of Metropolis University, who was walking home from the university with one of his students. They both witnessed the accident. They described White and reported the license number of the car. A Buick convertible, license W88. Clark, we, we've got to do something. We can't now, just wait, just let this a minute, Lois. Just a minute. The uh, uh, victim, Inspector, is he is he seriously injured? Very seriously, I understand. The doctors at the hospital say he may not pull through. Oh, that's awful. And if he doesn't, it'll be my sad duty to charge my friend Perry White with manslaughter. Oh, no, Inspector, you couldn't. Easy, Lois. Inspector, can you fix it for us to see the chief? I mean, Mr. White, at once? Well, I don't know, Kent. Please, Inspector. All right, all right. Maybe go right over? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'll call the sergeant and tell him to let you in. Thank you, Inspector. Come on, Lois. Let's go. Sing out when you're ready to leave, Mr. Kent. Okay, Clancy, thanks. Oh, Chief. How did you ever get into a mess like this? Through the sheer, unadulterated stupidity of that adulpated, glorified beat pounder Henderson. That's all. Now, look, Chief. I'm Chief. sure there must be some mistake, Chief. Mistake? Ha! <laughs> this is the biggest farce ever perpetrated. Imagine accusing me, me, Perry White, of being a hit and run driver. Why, it's ridiculous. It's idiotic. Now, why now, wait I... a minute. Wait a minute. Calm down. Please, calm down. How can you expect a man to calm down after sitting here in this, this raffle of a cell with a ridiculous charge hanging over his head? It's not so ridiculous. It's very serious, Oh, it Keith. can't be. It can't be. It must be somebody's unfunny idea of a practical joke. Somebody... Chief, who... will you listen to me? It's no joke when you're in danger of being charged with manslaughter. What? Manslaughter? That's right. Inspector Henderson just told us that the victim of the hit-and-run accident that you're charged with is in a very critical condition. Yes, and if he should die, you'll be on trial for manslaughter. Oh, no. No, no, they... They can't do this to me. This can't be. I, I, I must be grieving. I wish you were. I wish all of us were. Yeah, so do I. Now, look, Chief. Don't fly off the handle at this question. Just answer truthfully. You didn't hit that man tonight, did you? Of course I did. How could you even ask a question like that, Clark? I Kent? knew the answer. I just wanted to hear it from the Chief himself. You do believe me, don't you? Certainly of course. we do, Chief. Now, we've got to see if we can get to the bottom of this mess. And the only way to do that is to get all the facts. Oh, what good will it do? I've already given the police the facts, and they won't accept them. Well, they can't because of all the circumstantial evidence piled up against them. Now, look. According to the police blotter, the accident happened at 7.39 this evening at Roosevelt Boulevard and 88th Street. Do you know where you were at that time? Uh, Henderson asked me the same question. And I told him I was on my way home at that time. Probably was right there. I mean, at 88th and Roosevelt Boulevard, about the time the accident occurred. You were? Yes. Yeah, that's it. Uh, figuring the time it takes me to drive that far on my way home from the office, well... Did you see an accident or any signs of an accident there at that time? No. Oh, at least I didn't notice anything. Well, then, 
But, Chief, how could all those witnesses describe you perfectly as the driver who ran down a man in a car like yours bearing your license plate? They couldn't, unless they were blind or just plain lying. Now, wait, Chief. One of the witnesses is Professor Nielsen, law school dean at the university. Certainly you don't think he would deliberately lie, do you? Oh, Kent, I don't know what to think. All I know is that I didn't hit anyone, nor did I run away from an accident tonight or any night. And here I am in jail in danger of standing trial for manslaughter. Oh, why? Why did this happen to me? Hey, wait a minute. Huh? I think I know the answer to that question. What? What is it, Clark? You know, in the excitement of all that's happened tonight, we quite forgot that you, Chief, were running for mayor. That's right. Oh, fine, fine, great. Can you just see the headlines in tomorrow's papers? Perry White, candidate for mayor, jailed as hit-and-run driver. That's not all. You're spearheading our reform ticket to drive Mike Hickey and his dirty machine out of City Hall. What's that got to do with it? Can't you see now what's behind this? <gasps> great Scott, yes. Kent, I've been framed. Framed? That's right. Framed by as clever and as fiendish a plot as has ever been dreamed up. Shot. Lois Lane and Perry White stare incredulously at Clark Kent. Finding it almost impossible to believe that even Mike Hickey would be capable of stooping this low to eliminate a threat to his power. Is Kent right in his accusation against the corrupt politician Hickey? We'll know in just a moment, so keep listening. Say, there's excitement all over the place. Ever since the Kellogg Company started putting a photo of a screen or sports star in every package of Pep, the Super Cereal. Correct. First, you've got the excitement of collecting a candid camera-sized photo from each package. Twenty-four different photos in the series, and you never know which star you'll get. Maybe Virginia Mayo, the beautiful star of Sam Golden movie. Or that smoothie, George Sanders of United Artists. And they're just two of the twenty-four. Right. Now, of course, you want to swap your duplicate photos with friends. And here's the exciting way. Just play the game of photo swap. Every single time you play, you have a chance to get two new photos for your collection. Now, to play photo swap, always carry with you at least two or more duplicate photos. Then, when you see a collector pal coming, pull out your spares and keep them face down in your hand. Okay, you're set for the game. Here's how it goes. Hey, photo swap? Yep. Then swap two off the top. Now we exchange, sight unseen, our two top photos. Say, I got a Dana Andrews I need. And I got two new photos for my collection. <laughs> Say, this game's terrific. You bet it is. And don't forget, it's played with the photos you get inside packages of pep. Those crisp flakes of whole wheat. Every morning at breakfast, they taste even better than you remember. Right. For happy eating, it's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of Superman. Locked up in the Metropolis City Jail and charged with being a hit-and-run driver, in danger of standing trial for manslaughter if the victim should die, Editor Perry White insisted to Lois Lane and Clark Kent that he was innocent of the crime. Suddenly, the realization of what was behind the whole thing occurred to Kent. It's perfectly clear, Chief. You've been framed. Framed by Mike Hickey to wreck your chances for being elected mayor on a Reform Party ticket. And to protect the crooked political machine of which he's boss. Of course. That must be the answer. Well, it won't work. I won't knuckle under the hickey. If necessary, I'll conduct my campaign from this cell. That's the spirit, Chief. We'll lick this somehow. Grimly, Perry White, Clark Kent, and Lois Lane set about planning their strategy. But their enthusiasm would undoubtedly be dampened somewhat if they were aware of political boss Mike Hickey's conversation with one of his lieutenants in another part of the city. Sure you've got all tracks covered on the hit-and-run accident, Lou? It's a perfect frame. The guy couldn't beat that rap with the attorney general from mouthpiece. Good. <laughs> that ought to show him I mean business. Yeah. Uh, look, Mr. Hickey, what if, uh, what if he's too stupid or too stubborn to give in even now? If he's stupid enough to still want to fight me and my machine, I've got an ace up my sleeve that'll put him out of my way for good. And make his reform party disappear like it was hit with an atom bomb. <laughs> with his black eyes gleaming evilly through narrowed eyelids, boss Mike Hickey leans back and draws slowly on a big cigar held between the fat fingers of his squarish hand. What can he possibly do to Perry White worse than what he has already done? A great deal happens tomorrow when Clark Kent learns the real truth behind the crime for which Perry White is accused. And, as Superman goes into action in a desperate effort to save his friend and red metropolis of corrupt machine politics. So don't fail to tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station, for Chapter 8 of Ruler of Darkness in... 
the adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Will you have some candies? Sure. Some Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares? Sure thing. Where are they? I wasn't offering. I was just asking whether somebody at your house will make you some of the most delicious, easy-to-fix candy you ever popped into your mouth. Light as a feather marshmallow squares, all golden with the toasted rice bubbles of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Can you picture a cereal that doubles in candy? And how? When do we eat? Today. Just get somebody to fix you Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. The simple recipes printed right on the package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman in his guise of Clark Kent and Lois Lane, girl reporter, see a chain of circumstantial evidence forged around editor Perry White. Listen. Yes, Lois, I'm positive the chief was framed on this hit-and-run charge. But is there no possible way to save him? I don't know. This is as clever and fiendish a plot as I've ever seen. There seem to be no weak spots. It's it. terrible, Clark. Yes, but unless we do find a weak spot and find the people behind it, Perry White will go to the penitentiary for a crime he did not commit. Say, how about the time you sprained your ankle or something and got laid up in bed a few days and missed all the fun with your crowd? Yes, sir, you just take things like being active and feeling swell for granted till they're suddenly yanked away from you. Right. And it's exactly the same way with freedom. We go along day by day and rarely stop to think how much freedom and liberty we enjoy. But if we lost our freedom, we'd sure realize then how precious it can be. You know, the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights aren't merely words on paper. They're the thoughts and beliefs of men, young men, who loved freedom so much they fought a war for it. And because these beliefs still live, nobody tells us Americans what we should think and how to worship and what we're allowed to say. What's more, nobody ever will if we always cherish our freedom and know how we can keep it. Now look, in school, pay special attention to your American history. Learn about the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution with its precious Bill of Rights, because they're the very base of our freedom. Right. And make it a point to see these priceless documents and others yourself when the freedom train comes to your city soon. Your teacher and your local newspaper will keep you posted. So don't miss the freedom train. And remember, the more you know about freedom, the tighter you'll hang on to it. And now, the adventures of Superman. Determined to free Metropolis from the corrupt hold of political boss Mike Hickey and his powerful machine, Clark Kent and Perry White, editor of the Daily Planet, organized a reform party which chose White to run for mayor in the coming election. Then the following evening, a man named Henry Niles was struck down by a hit-and-run driver and reported seriously injured. Reputable witnesses described the driver as a man resembling Perry White, and the license number of the hit-and-run car was White's own. Although strongly protesting his innocence, the gray-haired editor was arrested and jailed. The next morning, there was a feeling of gaiety in Mike Hickey's headquarters, located above a tavern on Morton Street. Men joked and laughed as they entered and left the long, smoke-filled room in the center of which, dominating it like a throne, is a large barber's chair in which sprawls the gross, heavy-jowled figure of the political boss. Behind him, working with comb and shears, is a barber. A girl manicurist sits beside him, humming. Before the chair is a desk on which are two extension telephones presided over by a blinking, foolishly grinning man called Punchy. Uh, did you see the day's gazette yet, Mr. Higgy? No, no, what's it say, Punchy? <laughs> well, listen to this. Two columns, the headlines. 
Perry White, candidate for mayor on new reform party ticket, jailed as hit and run driver. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> I like it fine. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. <laughs> hey, fellas, you hear what the boss said? It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. <laughs> You want to talk to the mayor, boss? Yeah, I'll talk to the chump. Give me the phone. Okay. Here you are, boss. Hello, Andy. What's in your mind? <laughs> sure, I saw the papers. Yeah, that finishes the reform party. It'll be just like old times again. People can vote for our boys or they don't have to vote at all. <laughs> huh? You? I'm going to give you two more years in the city hall, Andy. You're welcome. Just... Keep on being a good boy and don't try to make any decisions. Remember, you get along with me only when you don't try to think for yourself. You got that? Okay. Goodbye. Yeah, Punchy, take the phone. Sure, boss. Uh, Pete's on the other extension. You want to talk to him? Yeah, yeah, I was just going to tell you to call him. <laughs> it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. <laughs> Keep it up with Pete, boy. Oh, you're sure some character. Yeah, hey. <laughs> you really think so, huh? <laughs> Hello, Pete. <laughs> nice going, boy. It worked out swell. You tipped off the mayor just in case, didn't you? And the commissioner? Good. Okay. See you later, Pete. All right. So long. Take it away, Punchy. <laughs> uh, what's the joke, boy? <laughs> I was just thinking of that poor sucker, Perry White. <laughs> He's sure going to look swell in convict stripes. <laughs> As Mike Hickey and his henchmen make merry over what they are certain will be the fate of Perry White, Clark Kent and Lois Lane arrive at the city hospital. And when they attempt to visit the man White is alleged to have injured, they are turned away by two police officers who stand guard at the door of the room. I told you they wouldn't let us in, Clark. That poor Mr. Niles is in a critical condition. Is he, Lois? Well, of course he is. You heard Inspector Henderson say that hit and run driver almost finished the poor man last night. Now, I don't know why you insisted on coming wait here, minute, but wait, I. Wait, wait, Lois. What's the matter? Mr. Niles is not in a critical condition. As a matter of fact, he's perfectly all right. What? He's perfectly all right. They've got him bandaged like a mummy, but there isn't a thing wrong with it. Clark Kent, have you gone crazy? Not at all, Lois. I've just got the answer to this riddle at last. Come on. Where? Clark, wait a second. Listen. We're going oh. to see Inspector Henderson. Hurry up. I want an order from you, Inspector, authorizing an independent physician appointed by the Medical Association to examine Harry Niles. Are you out of your mind, Kent? No. You see, I we don't were... understand it, Inspector. He didn't even get into Niles' room. And yet he says there's nothing wrong with the poor man. There isn't. But Clark... Harry White was framed by this man, Niles, who's pretending to be seriously injured, and by another man made up to look like Mr. White, who drove the so-called hit-and-run car last night. Who says there's nothing wrong with Niles? I do. And I can prove it. How do you know? Because I... Uh, well, never mind how I know. I'm sure of it. Oh, you looked through the closed door of Mr. Niles' room and through the bandages and saw there was nothing wrong, huh? Yeah. Next thing you'll be telling us is that you're Superman. Oh, this is no time for joking. Listen, Inspector... No, I... you listen to me, Kent. Oh, I realize you're upset about Mr. White. But this kind of talk will only make things worse for him and for you. But look, in Niles the... is under the care of a private physician who happened to be at the scene of the accident and of the chief of staff of the city hospital. They say he's critically injured. The city hospital man is Mike Hickey's political appointee. And it's my hunch this whole thing is a political plot to discredit Mr. White and the Reform Party. Uh, and I think the private physician, who just happened to be at the scene of the accident, was planted there. Nonsense, sheer nonsense. I'll prove it. If you'll permit me to bring a physician of recognized standing to Niles' hospital room. Well, you'll have to get that permission from the mayor, Kent. But I can't recommend it. You haven't a bit of proof. All right, then I'll go to the mayor. Go ahead. But if you'll listen to me, Kent... So long, Inspector. Be seeing you. Look, Mr. Mayor. Perry White's very life may be at stake. What harm can be done by letting another reputable physician, or two if you like, examine Harry Niles? The superintendent of City Hospital is as fine a man as there is in the world, Mr. Kent. All right. And it just happens that I know the private physician on the case, too. An excellent chap. Excellent. I see no reason to go over their heads. But Mr. White's reputation, his life... I am very busy now, Mr. Kent, so I'll have to ask you to leave. All right, Mr. Mayor. Before I go, let me tell you this. I know Perry White has been framed. And I'm going to blow this dirty plot wide open. 
I'm heading up to the governor's office right now, and I intend to spare no one, absolutely no one, Mr. Mayor, yourself included. Good day, sir. You've known Mr. White a long time, Governor. Do you believe he could be a hit-and-run driver? Well, frankly, Kent, I was never so shocked in my life as what I heard of it. I couldn't believe it. And you've known me a long time. Do you trust me? <laughs> Thoroughly, Kent. Thanks. Then don't ask me how I know, just believe me. When I tell you that I do know that Mr. White is being framed, and you can break the plot against him if you order a well-known yes. physician, your own if you like, to examine Harry Niles, the so-called victim. <laughs> now, wait, Kent. It's only in a vital emergency that a governor takes it upon himself to override the mayor of a great city. This is an emergency. I tell you, Perry White was framed, Governor. Have Niles examined by your own physician, and he'll tell you. Well, uh, yes, you, you make it very hard for me to refuse you. Will you do it, sir? Yes. Yes, I'll do it, oh, Kent. thank you, sir. Thank I'll you. send Colonel Adams, my personal physician, back to Metropolis with you at once. What will happen when Clark Kent and the governor's physician return to Metropolis? We'll know more when we return for the startling climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Say, you pep fan, when you collect those 24 pep photos of great screen and sports stars, you're in mighty exclusive company. Just think, can anyone buy these photos? Nope. Can they send away for them? No, sir. But they're yours as a prize. One in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Correct. An actual glossy photo of a great movie or sports star like cute little Peggy Ann Garner of 20th Century Fox Pictures and beautiful Hedy Lamarr of United Artists. And George McAfee, great halfback of the Chicago Bears. And they're just a sample. Right. 24 different stars for you to collect in this great photo series. A whole gallery of celebrities. Each photo's clear and sharp. Lifelike as can be. Yes, sir. Because each photo's made on real professional photographer's paper. The kind of paper that takes loads of wear no matter how much you carry these photos around. Remember, keep collecting your photos from every package of Kellogg's Pep. Those catchy flakes of good whole wheat. That make your breakfast fun to eat. After every spoonful of pep, you'll want to see how quick you can fill that spoon with another happy loaf. So fill your breakfast bowl with Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Accompanied by Colonel Adams, personal physician to Governor Marshall, Clark Kent returned to Metropolis. As we join him and Colonel Adams now, they are walking along a corridor in City Hospital. Harry Niles' room is right here at the end of the hall, Colonel. He... Uh-oh, what happened to the police guard? What police guard, Kent? There were two officers stationed outside his room. Great, Scott! What's the matter? Plenty! Wait till I open this door. Look, Colonel. The room is empty. Harry Niles is gone. Now, don't get excited, Kent. They might have moved him to another room. Oh, wait. No, they didn't. He isn't anywhere in this hospital. He must have been taken away so that you and I couldn't prove the truth. Alarmed, Clark Kent probes every room in the hospital again with his X-ray vision. And the fact is that the mysterious Harry Niles has indeed been taken away beyond exposure. Where is Niles? And what will Kent do now to uncover what he knows to be a gigantic plot against Perry White and the people of Metropolis? There's a thriller minute in tomorrow's exciting episode, fellows and girls. So be sure to listen. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 9 of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Say, are you a candy maker? What do you mean? I'm an announcer. I hope. Well, then you'd better announce to your family that you'd like someone to make you Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. Crunchy, light as a feather, marshmallow squares. Golden all through with toasted bubbles of rice. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Sure, that very same breakfast cereal is doubling for candy in a terrific way. I'm for it. When do we eat? Today. Just get somebody to fix you Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. The quick, easy recipes right on the package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. 
Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today in the city hospital, Clark Kent and Colonel Adams, personal physician to the governor, question a young intern about the disappearance of a patient who is alleged to be the hit-and-run victim of editor Perry White. Listen. Do you have any idea what happened to the patient who was in this room, doctor? Why, yes, he left the hospital about an hour ago, Mr. Kent. But how could he? I understood he was in a very critical condition. Well, that's what I understood, too, Colonel, but his doctor and two men took him away on a stretcher. Well, do you know where they took him? No, I don't. I presume Mr. Jansen, the hospital superintendent, knows, though. He was here at the time. That's the man we want to see. Come on, Colonel. Look, if you have a friend who's an expert photographer, show him some of your pep photos of great screen and sports stars. Get his professional opinion of them. Then he says they're an outstanding job of picture taking because each photo is amazingly clear and sharp. And remember, these terrific photos are yours as a prize. One in every package of Kellogg Pep, the super cereal. Right. 24 candid camera-sized photos of great stars like George Sanders of United Artists Movies and lovely Virginia Mayo of Sam Goldwyn Pictures and Adolf Kiefer, the champion swimmer. Now, of course, you want to collect all 24 photos in this great series and fast. So a little later in the program, we'll show you how to play the game of photo swap. It's the exciting way to trade your duplicates for photos you need. Remember, look for your photo in every package of pets. Those catchy whole wheat flakes that taste so good, you'll want a spoon for each hand. That's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. Shortly after Perry White, editor of the Metropolis Daily Planet, agreed to run for mayor against the candidate of Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss, he was arrested and jailed as a hit-and-run driver. Certain that White was being framed, Clark Kent went to the city hospital, where Harry Niles, alleged victim of the hit-and-run attack, was supposedly in a very critical condition. Using his Superman X-ray vision, he felt that Niles, beneath his layers of bandages, was not injured at all. Balked by the mayor, a tool of political boss Mike Hickey, Kent persuaded the governor of the state to send Colonel Adams, his personal physician, back to Metropolis to examine Niles. But when Kent and Colonel Adams arrived at the hospital, they found that Niles had been taken away, and they hurried to Hospital Superintendent Jansen's office. I demand that you tell me where Harry Niles is, Mr. Jansen. Really? What gives you the right to demand anything of me, Mr. Kent? An executive order from the governor instructing Colonel Adams here to examine Niles. Here's the order, Mr. Jansen. Hmm. <laughs> Keep it. I was appointed by the mayor, gentlemen. I take orders only from him. Look, Jansen, why are you afraid to let Colonel Adams examine Niles? I'm not afraid. There's just no reason for it. Niles has his own doctor. Besides, he's in a critical condition. He can't be disturbed by outsiders. You say he's in a critical condition, huh? And yet you permitted him to be taken from the hospital? As a physician, I find that very strange and suspicious. I don't care how it seems to you. This is municipal business and does not concern the state government. See here. Now, look, I've wasted enough time. Get out. Not so fast, Mr. Jensen. One more question. Get out. Get out or I'll call the police and have you thrown out. Why, you insolent... We're going, Jensen. But we'll be back to see you thrown out. Come on, Colonel. Let's go. I told the driver to drop me at police headquarters, Colonel, and then take you to the railroad station. It's all right, Kent. You know, it makes my blood boil to see a man like Jansen at the head of the city's own hospital. How do the people stand for it? Well, I assure you, the people don't like it. But Mike Hickey holds the entire administration of this town in his dirty hands. Why, he even framed Perry White and smeared our reform party. <laughs> but we may still be able to beat him in this election if I can find Harry Niles fast enough. Any idea how to do that? Well, you see, Niles is the state's witness against White. As such, he can't be moved without the consent of the police. So, Inspector Henderson must know where he is. I see. Is, uh, is Henderson on your side or Hickey's? He's on the side of justice. He's straight as a string. That's what I'm counting on. Uh, oh, here we are, police headquarters now. Well, I'm sorry you had to make this trip to Metropolis for nothing, Colonel. <laughs> well, that's all right, Kent. <laughs> Good luck to you in this fight. Thanks. I'll keep you posted. So long. <laughs> Look, Kent, even if I wanted to, I couldn't tell you where Niles is. Because I don't know. 
You don't? That's right. The mayor took this whole thing out of my hands. Inspector, he can't do that. You're holding Perry White in jail, and Niles is your witness against him. Uh, Kent, in he- Kent, you ought to get your facts straight. White was released an hour ago on bail. Released? Really? That's right. Now, if Niles dies, White will be brought in and tried for manslaughter. If Niles lives, White will be tried on assault charges. Don't you see, Inspector? That's why you've got to help me find Niles now. now. Look, Kent, I like you. And speaking strictly off the record, I'd like nothing better than to see you run Mike Hickey and his gang out of Metropolis. Well, then, White... What? Well, if you had any real proof of your charge, maybe I could help you. But if it is... Look... Okay, okay, Inspector. I have to find Niles myself. Just tell me this, though, if you will. What do you know about Niles? Nothing. Nothing except that he holds a small job in the sanitation department. Works for the city, huh? Mm-hmm. And he lives alone in a rooming house at 1100 West 13th Street. 1100 West 13th, okay. Now, what do you know about the doctor who just happened to be at the scene of the accident the other night? The one who's now acting as Niles' physician. I think you said his name was Tobin? That's right, yes. His office is at 1900 West 88th Street. 1900 West 88th. Right. And he's also on the city payroll, health department. He works for the city, too, eh? Right. How about it now, Inspector? Still think there's nothing fishy about this case? Confound it. I know it's fishy, Ken, but there's nothing I can do. Nothing. Until you bring me something more than just a, well, just a private opinion to go on. All right, Inspector. I'll bring you something to go on. I'll bring you plenty. So long. Leaving police headquarters, Clark Kent makes two phone calls. And a short time later, we find him in the office of his friend, Candy Myers, the private detective. They just take Harry Niles to his home, Candy. I just checked. And Dr. Tobin's office is closed. His nurse said he told her he'd be gone for a day or two. She doesn't know where. Well, it's pretty clear that both Tobin and Niles ducked into a deep hole, Kent, and pulled the hole in after them. My guess is you won't see either one of them till after the election. That'll be too late, Candy. We've got to find them and find them in a hurry. Otherwise, Mike Hickey's crowd will sweep the elections and Mr. White may go to the penitentiary. I know, Ken, I know, but down at Halen, them won't be an easy job. The only thing we can do is to find out all we can about Niles and his doctor pal and then follow each trail separately, hoping one of them will pay off. Well, that's what I thought you but could But my two assistants are out of town on a case. I can't cover both angles. I only got two feet. And I've got two. You take one man, I'll take the other. Now, whom do you want, Niles or Dr. Tobin? Niles is my baby. You take the medical, Kent. Okay. We'll keep in touch with each other through the Daily Planet. And remember, Candy, every minute counts. Grimly determined to track down the two conspirators, Clark Kent and Candy Myers take up their separate trails, unaware that great danger will intervene before they see each other again. We'll be back in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode... So keep listening. Hey, partner, photo swap? Yeah, then swap two off the top. Yes, everybody, we're back again with a game of photo swap, the best swap game in years. And a swell help in collecting the 24 different photos of screen and sports stars you get. One in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Think of it. In every Pep package, you get a sparkling candid camera-sized photo of a great star. Like that he-man, Dana Andrews, of so many Sam Golden movies. And Charlie Trippy, the all-American halfback. Now you want to collect all 24 different photos in this swell series. So swap your duplicates. And the game of photo swap is the exciting way to trade photos with your friends. Every game of photo swap's a surprise because you swap blind each time. You don't know which photos you'll get. Now here's how. To play photo swap, always carry with you two or more duplicate photos. Then when you see a friend, get out your photos and hold them face down in your hand. Now we're all set. So I up and say, hey, photo swap? Yep. Then swap two off the top. Okay? Each of us gives the other the two top photos in our hand. Say, that gives me two Charlie Trippies. One for my collection and one to use for my photo swap. That's photo swap. Everybody's playing it. Everybody's saving photos from packages of pep. Those crunchy flakes of good whole wheat that make your breakfast every morning a happy event. Yes, that's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Our scene is several miles southwest of Metropolis in a deserted county forest preserve where a small private ambulance is parked in a grove of trees. In the back of the ambulance, a dapperly dressed pink-cheeked man with a small waxed mustache is busily unwinding the last of many layers of bandages from his wiry, ferret-faced companion. Uh These bandages off in a minute, Niles. There, that does it. 
Probably a little stiff. Uh, Want me to help you up? No, no, no. I can make it, Doc. Oh, boy, it sure feels good to have all them wrappings off. You had me taped up like a mummy. <laughs> well, I had to make it look good, you know. You were supposed to be critically injured. Yeah, yeah. I, I took a big chance. If we hadn't got away before that planet reporter showed up with a, another doc, my name would be Mud. I hope Mike Hickey appreciates it. Oh, he does. He gave me a thousand dollars for you. Yeah. What? Here it is. Only one grand for showing up the election for him. Relax. He said there'll be more. And a nice fat job on some city payroll. After the election. Now. Well, that's a little better. Hey, what's he going to do for you, Doc? He's making me commissioner of the health department. Hey, not bad, huh? Not at all. He might take care of his friend. Well, now, uh, are you all set? Yep. Mm. Everything's checked. Here I go to get lost. All right. Remember now, nobody sees you until after the election. Don't you worry. Where I'm going, nobody will find me. So long, Doc. Be seeing you. So long, Niles. See you right here after the election. Waiting until Harry Niles had disappeared among the trees, the dapper Dr. Tobin returns to the ambulance, slides in behind the wheel, then steps on the starter and pulls away. So Clark Kent was right. The hit-and-run charge for which Editor Perry White faces a penitentiary term was a frame-up by Mike Hickey, arranged to discredit White and the Reform Party with the voters of Metropolis and to ensure the re-election of Hickey's corrupt machine. Will Hickey get away with it? Or can Superman and Candy Myers somehow catch up with Harry Niles and Dr. Tobin? And in time, to foil the crooked political boss. Don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode, fellows and girls. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. For more thrills in The Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Will you have another candy? Another? I haven't seen any. <laughs> well, I mean, will somebody at your house fix you another different, wonderful kind of candy, Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares? Well, you're giving me ideas. Just mention to someone that here's a candy so quick and easy to make, it's a pleasure. Tell them to mix those delicious bubbles of toasted rice, Kellogg's Rice Krispies, with marshmallows and such. Out comes a treat that's terrific. Well, when do we eat? Today, after you show somebody the simple recipe for Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. It's right on the package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, while Superman continues his attempt to clear Perry White of a false charge at the Metropolis Daily Planet, Lois Lane, girl reporter, receives an exciting telephone call from private detective Candy Myers. Miss Lane, this is Candy Myers. Oh, hello, Candy. Is Kent there, Miss Lane? No, he isn't. Oh, you know where I can reach him? Why, no, I don't, Candy. He hasn't been in all morning. Is there anything I can do? No, I gotta see Kent and fast. I got a hot lead on Harry Niles. Good. Why not give it to me? No time to talk now, Miss Lane. Look, if Kent comes in, tell him to wait there for me. I'll be at your office in, uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> Say, to get an actual photo of Virginia Mayo, the star of so many Sam Goldwyn movies, you don't even need a camera. Here's a better way. Right. You can get her photo as an exclusive pep prize. Yes, she's in that terrific pep photo series of 24 famous stars. You get a photo of a star in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super serial. Correct. A brilliant, candid camera-sized photo of a great screen or sports star. Along with Virginia Mayo, there's Peggy Ann Garner, the cute little 20th Century Fox star. And Orville Grove, the Chicago White Sox pitcher. You'll want to collect photos of all 24 stars in this 12 series. So trade your duplicate photos with friends. The exciting way. Play Photo Swap. We'll show you how it's played a little later in the program. Right. And keep collecting your photo from each package of Pep, 
Those catchy-tasting whole wheat flakes. Use an extra deep bowl for pep, because you'll be digging deep for every last delicious flake. Correct. That's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. When Editor Perry White announced that he would run for mayor of Metropolis on a Reform Party ticket, Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss, determined to kill White's chances. Conspiring with his henchmen, Hickey arranged a fake hit-and-run accident and framed White as the hit-and-run driver. Clark Kent, who, as we know, is Superman, was on the verge of exposing the frame-up, but was prevented from doing so when Hickey had Harry Niles, the pretended hit-and-run victim, spirited away to a hideout. After posting a high bail bond, Harry White was released from the city jail. The next day, Lois Lane received a summons to report to the editor's office, where we find her now. Listen. Me, uh, yes, Lois. Uh, can't get in yet? No, not yet. Yeah, that's too bad. I wanted you both here when I... Uh... When I, uh... When you what, Chief? When I announced my withdrawal from the campaign for mayor. Your withdrawal? That's right. But, Chief, you can't do that. You can't quit now. Not when we've got our reform party organized. Our reform party is licked before it even got a chance to fight, Lois. Now, listen, Chief. I think he Chief. took care of that when he smeared me. People won't have any faith in a party whose chief candidate is in line for a jail term. But we can't just lie back and let Hickey and his crooked machine go on getting away with having his goons, blackjack youngsters like Jimmy Olsen, and frame fine men like Joe Martin and you... You've got to lead the people in a fight against the Hickey machine. Sure, sure, but will the people believe I was framed? Will they do something to throw the Hickey machine out of the city administration? Of course they will, Chief. They'll vote Hickey right out of power. It's your job and mine to make them wake up to what goes on in politics. Well spoken, Lois. I second that. Oh, hi, uh-huh, Clark. Okay. Hello, Chief. Oh, come on, come on. Don't look so low. We're far from licked yet. Look, has there been any word from Candy Myers? Oh, yes, Clark. He called up some time ago and oh. said to tell you he's got a hot lead on Harry Niles. He has? Well... Yes, he was going to be here in 20 minutes, but golly, that was an hour and a half ago. Something must have come along to hold him up. Well, my hunch is that his hot lead turned into a cold potato. Now, look, Chief... What about you, Clark? Any progress in your search for Niles' doctor? Or what's his name, Tobin? Yeah, that's right. No, no luck yet. But I got a lot of feelers out, and if only one of them... Hey, maybe that's Candy. I'll take it. Hello? Who? Yes, it's Clark Kent. Is it Candy? No. Who'd you say? Oh, Mr. Collins, yes. Say he phoned? When? What? What is it? Just a minute. Yes? Uh Uh-huh. Fine, I'll be right over. Thanks for calling me, Mr. Collins. You seem all excited, Clark. What was that? The manager of the garage where Dr. Tobin keeps his car. He said he just had a call from Tobin telling him to fill the tank with gas. Uh Uh-oh. Hey, maybe that's... Sorry to interrupt, Chief, but I've got to get going because Tobin's expected over at the garage right away. Now, look. If you hear from Candy, tell him where I am. Sure, Clark, but... Sorry, Lois, I can't wait a second. Wait a minute. This may be the break we've been waiting for. Stand by to hear from me. Oh, never mind, Lois. I'll take it. Yes? Chief, this is Kent. Is it Clark? Oh, yes, Kent. Yes, what's happening? Nothing so far. I'm still at Tobin's garage, but he I... He didn't show up, eh? Oh. Not yet. I'm going to stick right here until he does something. Listen, have you heard from Candy Myers? No, not a word. I can't understand that. I hope nothing happened to her. Uh, I doubt it, Kent. Uh, well, I'll call again later, Chief. Okay. So long. Wait a minute, Chief. I want to talk so to him. Oh, uh, what? Oh, wait, Kent. 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 I'm sorry, Lois. He hung up. He didn't have anything to report anyway. But I wanted to ask him where the... Hiya, Tim. Oh, hello, Ken. Uh, Ken Myers, now where have you been? <laughs> busy, kiddies. Plenty busy. Got a line on Harry Niles. I'm pretty sure I know where he is. You do? Where? Easy, easy. Where's Kent? He's at a garage where Dr. Tobin keeps his car. Uh, what garage? What's the phone number? I don't know. Never mind, Kent. You don't know. You mean we can't reach him? That's right. Clark didn't tell us where the garage is. I was going to ask him just now when he phoned, but he hung up too oh, soon. Oh, I need that guy, Ken. I need him bad. Well, what for? To go out with me to this place where I think Niles is. I need a witness. Now. I'll go with you, my No, wait a minute, Chief. Uh, as a defendant in this case, you won't do, Mr. White. I need an impartial witness. I fit that bill, Candy, and I'm going with you. It might be dangerous, Miss Lane. Oh, so what, Candy? I've worked okay. with you before. Okay, okay, you win. We'll be back in a few hours, Mr. White, at which time you'll be in the clear, I hope. <laughs> Taking Lois Lane by the arm, Candy Myers hurries her from the office. Where are they going, and what will happen? We'll be back in a moment for the tenth climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Look, of course you're collecting those 24 keen pep photos of screen and sports stars. You get one as a prize in every package of Kellogg Pep, the super cereal. And yet, maybe there's one special photo you want badly. Let's say it's Mike Fresh, the great Chicago White Sox catcher. 
Maybe you've seen him play, and he's a special favorite of yours. You look in each pet package for your photo. But maybe the one you get is Joan Bennett, the United Artists star. And you're still looking for Mike Tress. So here's what you do. Always carry with you the duplicate photos you want to trade. Carry at least two or more. Then when you meet a collector pal, you're all set for the game of photo swap. The exciting way to swap your spare photos. Now, you meet up with a friend. You both bring out your duplicates and keep them face down in your hand. Okay, here's how the game goes. Hey, photo swap? Yup, then swap two off the top. So you trade your two top photos. Hey, which ones did you get? You can hardly wait to turn them over. And then... Could be. There it is, the Mike Tresh you've been looking for. One more to your collection of all 24. Right. And that's just a sample of the thrills you'll get in every game of Photo Swap. Fun? You bet it is. Remember, you play Photo Swap with those terrific candid camera-sized photos you get as a prize in packages of Pep. Pep, those crisp flakes of whole wheat that make breakfast fun to eat. Just try them. You'll swap those morning glooms for a happy smile of good eating. That's right, when you start every day with Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. 22 miles southwest of Metropolis. On a deserted country road flanked by dark, rolling farmland and patches of woods, Sandy Myers has brought his car to a stop. Helping Lois Lane out, the private detective points to a narrow stream, silvery in the evening darkness, which winds downhill through a meadow to a clump of trees, only dimly seen in the near distance. There's a stream, Miss Lane. We follow it for about a half mile to where it bends to up right. From there we can see the Nelson farm. Okay, Candace. Well... Let's get started. Well, I got my flashlight working. There, okay, let's go. Watch your step through the underbrush. Yeah. It's a good thing I wore walking shoes today. Say, listen. How do you know this isn't just a wild goose case, Candy? Well, I got a hunch it isn't. That private ambulance Dr. Tobin took miles away from the hospital and was seen at a gas station on Highway 16. That's the highway we come out on. Yes, but what does that prove? They were in this neighborhood. What's more, Niles' wife told me that her no-good husband hit out on his uncle's farm a couple of times. And things got too hot for him in Metropolis. That was before Mike, uh, Hickey was bossing Metropolis. How did Mrs. Niles come to tell you all this, Candy? She's plenty burned up at Mr. Niles. Seems he ran out on her as soon as he tied up with Hickey. Never gave her a cent. It's a sweet character, isn't it? Yeah, he's a nice guy, all right. I'm willing to take a fair-sized bet that Kent was right when he said Niles wasn't hurt at all in that hit-and-run frame-up. Well, if he's here, we'll find that out mighty it's soon. Let it. If it's so, we'll bring Inspector Henderson out. You know, the mayor told the police to pay off this case, but Henderson's the right guy. If we bring him the soap on Niles, he'll go to bat for it. Oh, yes, I know it. Oh. What's the matter? Oh, I just tripped over that tree root. No harm done. Oh, good. Come on. We don't have much further to go. To that little piece of woods ahead. He's hoping we find Niles there, Candy. Got my fingers crossed, Miss Lane. Got my toes. I don't make any unnecessary noise from here on. Quiet, tight. Quiet, I say. Yeah. I hear something, too. Someone coming. Two people, sounds like. Ain't nobody else hunts these woods except in us. Mm, you reckon it might be someone coming after Harry, eh, hey, Ty? <laughs> if it is, we're gonna take care of him, Ty. <laughs> Near the stream in the small patch of woods which Lois Lane and Candy Myers are entering, a tall, hard-faced, gaunt man in overalls steps back behind a thick clump of bushes, dragging his huge mastiff dog with him. Quickly, he cocks his rifle and rests it in the crook of his elbow, his keen eyes searching the darkness ahead. Who is this man? And what menace does he hold for Lois and Candy, who are approaching, unaware of his presence? Lois and Candy are stepping in danger, great danger. And Clark Kent, who is Superman, is unaware of it. That means there's a thrill a minute in tomorrow's exciting episode, fellows and girls. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 11 of The Ruler of Darkness on 
The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. By the way, do you like candy? Say, are you kidding? Well, then, how about having Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares? Yes, how about that? Well, just get somebody at home to make them for you. So easy to fix that quick as a minute you get 24 crunchy, light marshmallow squares. Delicious all through with those toasted bubbles of rice. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Sure, the swell cereal double features in candy. Okay, when do we eat? Today. Just get someone to fix you Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. The recipe's right on the package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super, as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the Super Serial, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, with Superman unaware of their whereabouts, Lois Lane and Detective Candy Myers draw near to the hideout of a man who helped to frame Perry White, quite unconscious of the fact that their approach through night-darkened woods is being watched by an armed man and his ferocious dog. Listen. Quiet, tight, quiet. Unless you and me just keep our eyes peeled on them, too. Don't let's let them know they're being watched. Wonder what in turn is in there doing here. Say, you think maybe they're here after Harry? Well, we'll find out soon enough. And if they are, we'll take care of them, Tag. You and me, we'll take care of them. <laughs> Say, if you're excited at getting a pep photo of a great screen or sports star, remember this. That photo is only one in a whole series of 24 stars. And you get one in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Think of it, a complete gallery to collect. Photos of Dana Andrews of Sam Golden Pictures and Hedy Lamar of United Artists. And Adolf Kiefer, the swimming champ. And they're yours as an exclusive pep prize. Yes, sir. Every photo is sharp and clear. A handy, candid camera size. Right. The most thrilling collector's item since way back when. And look, here's the exciting way to swap your duplicates for photos you don't have. Yes, play Photo Swap, the terrific swap game. We'll show you how later in the program. Remember, a photo is yours in every package of Pep, those catchy-tasting flakes of good whole wheat. You wonder how each spoonful can taste better than the last, but it always does. That's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. <laughs> The Adventures of Superman. To destroy the chances of Editor Perry White being elected mayor on a Reform Party ticket, Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss of Metropolis, succeeded in having White arrested on a framed-up hit-and-run charge. Knowing it was a frame-up, Clark Kent, who is really Superman, and his friend Candy Myers, a private detective, joined forces. While Candy searched for Harry Niles, a Hickey henchman who had posed as the hit-and-run victim... Kent hunted for Dr. Tobin, a physician in Hickey's employ who had spirited Niles away from the city hospital to a hideout. During Kent's absence, Candy picked up Harry Niles' trail and with Lois Lane, girl reporter, drove into the countryside southwest of Metropolis. On foot, they followed a stream in the moonlight and came within sight of the old Nelson farmhouse where Candy believed Niles was hiding. But they were unaware that a tall, gaunt man in overalls, carrying a rifle and accompanied by a huge mastiff dog, was trailing them. As cautiously, they approached the farmhouse, which hid in the dark shadows cast by a grove of trees. Listen. Look, Miss Lane. There's a light downstairs. By the back room. See it? Uh-huh. We'll make for that. See what we can see. Now, remember, 
All we want to do is to find out if Niles is here. And if he's not hurt, like Kent said. Then we'll go back to Metropolis and get Inspector Henderson to send someone out to nab him. That's good enough for me, Candy. I'm not anxious to meet Niles out here alone. I just hope they haven't got a dog. Yes, that would be bad. But if they did, it would have hurt us by now and be barking its head off. Yeah, I guess so. Wait. Just wait. What's the matter? I thought I heard something. Somebody. Where? Kind of. I don't hear anything. Except the crickets. I don't either now. Maybe it was a rabbit or a squirrel. Yeah, it could be. Come on. Quietly now. This darkness gives me the willies. We're almost there. Whatever you do, don't slip or anything now. I'll try not to, Candy. Now, if only Niles is here. Find that out right now. Hold it. Looking for somebody? Uh, what the? Don't reach for your gun, mister. I'll see you. Watch him, Tig. Well, who are you? I'm the fellow whose land you're on. Oh, you must be Mr. Nelson. Who are you? Who oh, us, sir? Why, we're... we're well, uh... Come on, talk up. When folks come trespassing on my land, my trigger finger starts itching. Now, take it easy, Nelson. We're friends. You ain't no friends of mine. I never seen you before. Well, we're friends of your nephew, Harry Niles. You have friends of Harry? Sure, we came out here to, to bring him an important message, didn't we, Miss... Uh, Susie? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Sure, we did. My kicky sent us out to see Harry. But Harry's here, ain't he? I ain't saying. You... You say my kicky sent you? Yeah. That's right. I don't believe you. Now, listen to me, Mr. Nelson. We'll find out if you're telling the truth or not. Harry will be back soon. And if you're lying like I figure, this rifle will do the talking. Turn around. You better do what the man says, Miss Lane. Yes. Ah, uh, take that gun out of your shoulder holster real slow, mister, and drop it on the ground. Slow, I said. Don't make no other moves or it'll be the last you ever make. Okay, okay. Take it easy. Now, march around the house and into the kitchen. We'll wait for Harry there. Go on, get... Watch him, Tag. Candy, what do we do now? I don't know, Miss Lane. This don't look so good. <laughs> Mary White speaking. Chief, this is Kent. Oh, where are you, Kent? Well, I'm uh, sort of shuttling, you might say, between Dr. Tobin's house and garage. Still waiting for him to show up. I'm at the garage right now. Well, stop wasting time and get back here. I'm not wasting time, Chief. It's the only lead I have at the moment, and I'm sticking with it for a while longer. Listen, did you and Lois hear from Candy Myers? Yes, he came in a little while ago and said he was pretty sure he knew where Harry Miles is. Oh, well, let me talk to him, will you? He's not here. He went out with Lois. Went out? Where? To check up on Niles, of course. To see if he is where Candy thinks and if he was only pretending to be injured, as you say. Where did they go? Well, Candy didn't say. He was in too much of a hurry. Oh. Well, please call me as soon as you hear from them, will you, Chief? Uh, the number here is Metropolis 43100. Have you got it? Metropolis 43100. That's right. Okay, Kent. Meanwhile, I'll keep checking with you. I still think Dr. Tobin will show up here. So long. Bye. <laughs> Tell that dog of yours to stand on the other side of the kitchen. I... I, I don't trust him. I know she appeared, miss. But if it so be you're telling the truth about my kicking sending you out here to see Harry, you ain't got nothing to be afeard of. Well, Harry be back. Well, there's his car now, I reckon. Yes, Harry. Now we'll find out if he knew was lying or not. Come, Candy. Hiya, Miss Lane. <clears throat> Hiya, Harry. Huh? Who are they, Uncle? Come in and you shut the door, Harry. How you doing, Harry, old boy? Long time no see. Who are you? Why, uh, Don't you remember us? No, I've never seen you before in my life. I knew they was lying, I knew it. Now I'm going to take care of them. Stand back, Harry. His gaunt, cruel face twisted into a gloating smile. Nelson flips his rifle to his shoulder and sights along its gleaming barrel at Lois Lane and Candy Myers. What will happen? We'll be back in a moment for the dramatic climax of today's episode. So keep listening. You know, for sheer fun, you just can't beat collecting things. Especially when they're red hot items like those 24 photos of great stars you get as a prize. One in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Correct, because these Pep photos are brilliantly clear actual photos of famous screen and sports stars. Like George Sanders, the slick he-man in all those United Artists movies. And Charlie Trippy, the all-American halfback. 
What's more, every photo is perfect for collecting. A handy, candid camera size. Not only that, you've got more fun in store besides collecting. You can play Photo Swap, the exciting way to trade your duplicates. And the photos you get in exchange may help complete your collection of all 24 stars. Yes, sir. Every single game of Photo Swap's a thrill. You swap blind when you play, so you never know which photos you'll get. Now, here's the lowdown. Always carry with you the photos you want to swap. Then, when you see a friend coming, pull out your spares and turn them face down in your hand. Of course, he does the same. Okay? You march right up to him. And here's what the two of you say. Hey, photo swap? Yup. Then swap two off the top. Now you exchange, sight unseen, the two top photos in your hand. And there you are. You swap and get different photos. Of course, you might catch another duplicate. Well, if so, use it for other photo swap games. Each one's excitement plot. Yes, sir. Like the fun of eating pep. Those catchy flakes of whole wheat. Pile your bowl full every morning at breakfast because Pep's a mountain of good eating. That's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In the kitchen of a farmhouse, Harry Niles' uncle has leveled his rifle at Lois Lane and private detective Candy Myers. As the gaunt old man's finger tightens on the trigger, Candy calls out to Harry Niles. Don't let him shoot, Niles. Mike Hickey sent us out here. Hold it, Uncle. Well, I ain't no, we're not. Mike did send us out to talk to you. It's, it's, it's very important, Harry. Don't you believe him. Let me... Wait go. a minute. All right, talk. Why did Mike send you out here? Well, he, uh... He wants us to take you to another hideout. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a reporter on the Daily Planet found out where you were. And he may be out here soon with the state police. Now, we got to move fast, Harry. I say you don't believe me, Harry. Shut up, think... Uncle. How did this reporter guy find out where I am? Tell me that. He found out from your wife, that's how. My wife? Yeah, that's right. You know, she's sore at you. So she blabbed that this is where you always hide out. Harry, I warn you, these two... Quiet, Uncle. Well, I'll check this story right away. What do you mean, check it? How? I'm going to call up Mike Kiki personal and ask him. Uh-oh. Quiet. I want Metropolis 9-1202. That's right. Mike says he sent you out here. Okay. If he says he didn't... Well, Nelson will take care of you like he wanted to before. Dismayed, Lois Lane and Candy Myers can do no more than look at each other. And Harry Niles waits for Mike Hickey to answer, while the old man points his rifle at them. For they know what the political boss's answer will be, and what that answer will mean to them. With Clark Kent, who is Superman, miles away in Metropolis, unaware of his friend's grave peril, what, if anything, can save Lois and Candy now? And prevent Mike Hickey from sending Perry White to the penitentiary. Monday's exciting episode is packed with action, thrills, and a surprise. So be sure to listen. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 12 of The Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Will you have some candy? Sure. Some Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares? Sure thing. Where are they? Well, I wasn't offering. I was just asking whether somebody at your house will make you some of the most delicious, easy-to-fix candy you ever popped into your mouth. Light as a feather, Marshmallow Squares. All golden with the toasted rice bubbles of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Can you picture a cereal that doubles in candy? Sure. When do we eat? Today. Just get somebody to fix you Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. The simple recipe is printed right on the package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. (laughs) 
today with Superman unaware of their plight, girl reporter Lois Lane and private detective Candy Myers are in grave danger as Harry Niles, the man they've been trailing, checks their story by telephone with Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss of Metropolis. Listen. Hello, Mr. Hickey. This is Harry Niles. Listen, I had... I had to call you. Because there's a guy and a dame here who says you sent them out here to take me... Yeah, yeah, they're right here. Candy. Oh, you didn't, huh? Ah, don't you worry. My uncle's holding a gun on him. Yeah, sure, I know what to do. So long. They're spies, ain't they, Harry? Yeah, Unc. They're spies, all right. But they ain't gonna do no more spying. Not in this world, they ain't. Let's say you're watching a football game. Down on the field, Charlie Trippy, the All-American halfback, is playing a whale of a game. And you wish you could see him close up. Okay, here's your big chance. Now you can get a real close-up photo of Charlie Trippy as a prize. He's in that great pep photo series of 24 famous screen and sports stars. You get a candid camera-sized photo of every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Right. Besides Charlie Trippy, there's little Peggy Ann Garner of 20th Century Fox Pictures and lovely Joan Bennett of United Artists. Now, of course, you want to collect all 24 photos in this slick series, and the exciting way to trade your duplicate photos for ones you don't already have is Photo Swap. Later in the program, we'll show you how to play this thrilling swap game. Remember, collect your photo from every package of Pep, those catchy flakes of crisp whole wheat. At breakfast, every spoonful of Pep says, Man, this is eating. That's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. When Perry White, editor of the Metropolis Daily Planet, announced that he would run for mayor on a Reform Party ticket, Mike Hickey, powerful and corrupt political boss of the city, laid plans to nip this challenge in the bud. He arranged a fake automobile accident in which White was identified as a hit-and-run driver and arrested. Before Clark Kent, who, as we know as Superman, could expose the frame-up, Harry Niles, who pretended to be the hit-and-run victim, disappeared from the city hospital with a Dr. Tobin, another Hickey henchman. While Kent searched for Dr. Tobin, Candy Myers, a private detective, learned that Niles was hiding out in an isolated farmhouse. And accompanied by Lois Lane, girl reporter, he went out to confirm his tip. But they were surprised and captured by Niles' uncle, an ex-convict named Nelson. And now in the farmhouse kitchen, Lois and Candy faced two guns. All right, you two, talk up. What was your angle in tracking me out here? Was it to get me down to police headquarters and show them I wasn't even scratched in that phony hit-and-run deal? Well, no. We... No use, Miss Lane. They're wise to it. You bet we are. Well, what are you going to do about it, Niles? You're a bright boy. What do you think I'm going to do? If you're smart, you won't try anything rough. Because, like I told you, certain Daily Planet reporter and Inspector Henderson know about this place. Chances are they're on their way out here right now. So if anything happens to Miss Lane or to me, they'll know who did it. Hey, uh, get some rope. What for? We're going to take these two up to the old quarry and tie them up there. Then we'll get rid of them, and after that, you and me will hide out in Masterson's cave until the elections are over. Henderson or nobody else will find us there. <laughs> they sure won't. You got a head on you, Harry. Hurry it up! As the two ex-convicts tie Lois Lane and Candy Myers' hands and ankles before taking them to the old quarry, Clark Kent is in the office of a public garage in Metropolis where he is talking with Mr. Collins, the garage manager. It's been over three hours since Dr. Tobin phoned Mr. Collins. I'm beginning to think he changed his mind about coming over for his car. Uh, could be. Maybe he figured you'd be waiting for him here, Mr. Kent. Yeah, that's possible. Well, I might as well go back to the office. Maybe they'll have some good news for me there. Wait. But... Here comes Dr. Tobin now. Really? Where? Look. The fellow with the little mustache, just crossing the street. You see? Yeah, I see him. Look, Mr. Collins, you know what to do, don't you? Leave it to me, Mr. Kent. Mike Hickey condemned my garage once, bankrupt me because I wouldn't pay graft to his mops. I'll do anything I can to get back at him. Okay, this is your chance, so go to it. Leaving the office, Clark Kent runs up the ramp in the garage to the shadowy second floor, where a long row of cars stand, unattended. Then, behind the end car, under an open skylight, he swiftly strips off his business suit to stand revealed in the blue costume and brilliant red cape of Superman. 
A moment later, when Dr. Tobin, dressed in dapper fashion, his Humburg hat perched jauntily on the side of his head, approaches his car, Superman steps out to meet him. Good evening, Dr. Tobin. Uh, oh, oh, who are you? I'm Superman. Don't you recognize me? Super? Oh, go on, you're crazy. Uh, get out of my way, will you? I want my car. Suppose we have a little talk first, Doctor. I haven't time About to... Harry Nile. Uh, Harry Nile? Yes. Where is Mr. Nile, Doctor? Did you know? Now look here, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going out to get a police... Oh, no, Doctor. No, you're staying right here until I get the truth. Let go. Help! Help! Shouting won't help you. Nothing. Not even Mike Hickey can help you now, so stand still and talk. There's nothing to talk about. I did nothing wrong? Oh, is that so? Then why did you remove Niles from the city hospital before a legitimate physician appointed by the governor could examine him? Because, uh, well, because there, uh, there were threats made against Niles' life, and mine too, by white friends. That's a lie, and you know it. You spirited Niles away because you know if a legitimate physician examined him, he'd find nothing wrong with him. That would put Niles and you and Hickey too in danger of a penitentiary sentence for conspiracy. No, no, that's not true. I tell you, Niles was seriously hurt. Practically every bone in his body was broken. Don't tell me that because I saw Niles and I know he wasn't even scratched. Now, I want to know where you took Niles. It's none of your business. I'm making it my business, Doctor. Because the proper authorities have been handcuffed by Mike Hickey, who thinks he's the law. He must be shown he's wrong. Quickly now, where is Harry Niles? I won't tell you. I warn you, Tobin. You, you can't do anything to me. You'll find out. Up uh, with you. No, 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 let me go. Up through that open skyline. Uh, oh, and away! Oh, we're, we're flying. Don't drop me. Are you willing to tell the truth now? Please. Please take me down. You might drop me. I might indeed, unless you talk fast and truthfully. Where is Harry Niles? I don't know. You're a disgrace to an honorable profession, Doctor, and I'm sure the medical association would be well rid of you, so... No! No, don't, 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 don't drop me. All right, then tell me. Where is Niles? All right. All right. I, I left him in the county forest preserve. The county forest preserve? Yes. Yes, his uncle's farm is near there. I, I didn't want to be seen near the farm with the ambulance. You're going to be seen near it now. Away! <laughs> You're sure this is the farmhouse, Dr. Tobin? Yes. Yes, this is it. Why is it empty? Well, I'm sure I don't know. Niles was going to hide out here with his uncle until after the election. Wait a minute. Scented perfume in the room. Yes, the perfume Miss Lane wears. That means she was here with Candy Myers. Candy told Mr. White he thought he knew where Niles was. But where are they now? Well, maybe your friends took Niles back to Metropolis. We'll soon find out. Come along. Huh? Where, where are we going? They left Metropolis to come here only a couple of hours ago. So they must have left here very recently. If they start head back to Metropolis, we'll find them quickly. Up with you. <laughs> now, up and away! <laughs> Leaping up from the farmhouse steps with the cringing little doctor in his arms, Superman streaks away through the night skies toward Metropolis, vainly searching the road below for a car bearing his friends and Harry Niles. But as we know, Niles, with Candy and Lois as his prisoners, is not en route to Metropolis. We'll be back in a moment for the tenth climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, when your whole crowd's collecting the same thing, like those 24 pep photos of outstanding stars, then the excitement really piles up. Right. Which one of you will complete your collection first? Yes, there's fun galore, because these pep photos are the snappiest collector's items this way back when. Remember, a photo of a star is yours as a prize. One in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Yes, sir, an actual candid camera-sized photo of a famous screen or sports star, like Virginia Mayo of Sam Golden movie. And Orville Grove, the Chicago White Sox pitcher. Right. And they're just two of the 24 stars in the whole series. Collecting them's exciting. And swapping them's exciting. Especially the photo swap way. Correct. Photo swap's the thrilling game you play to trade your duplicate photos with friends. And the ones you get in exchange will help complete your collection of all 24 stars. Now here's the lowdown. Always carry with you the photos you want to swap. Carry at least two or more. Then when you meet a collector, pal, you both pull out your duplicates and turn them face down in your hands. Okay, here's what you say. Hey, photo swap? Yup, then swap two off the top. Now you exchange, sight unseen, the two top photos in your hands. And that's photo swap. It's excitement plus. Right. Like the fun of eating pep. Those crisp flakes of good whole wheat. At breakfast, you'll like to spoon in that pep so fast, your arm will go like a pump handle. That's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. 
Super, as in Superman. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Carrying Dr. Tobin, Superman has streaked through the sky to the city limits of Metropolis, darting and circling to scan every car on every road below him. But he has failed to find the car carrying Lois Lane, Candy Myers, and Harry Niles. Now, convinced that something must have happened to his friends, the Man of Steel hurtles back to the farmhouse like a thunderbolt and ranges over the dark countryside of farm and woodland and swamp, searching for his friends. Meanwhile, on the edge of a deep black quarry, Lois Lane and Candy Myers, their arms and ankles tied, stand facing the guns of Harry Niles and his gaunt uncle. Okay, I'm all set. Let them have it. Now! Their faces drained of color. Lois and Candy see the guns raised and aimed at them. And slowly realize that this appears to be the end for them. How will Superman, who is not yet at hand, be able to save the gallant girl reporter and the loyal, likable private detective? What will happen now to Mike Hickey's corrupt machine that flourishes in Metropolis like an evil weed? Be sure to hear tomorrow's exciting action-packed episode when strange and thrilling things happen. Don't fail to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station for Chapter 13 of... Ruler of Darkness, on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super serial. Say, are you a candy maker? What do you mean? I'm an announcer, I hope. Well, then you'd better announce to your family that you'd like someone to make you Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. Crunchy, light as a feather, Marshmallow Squares. Golden all through with toasted bubbles of rice. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Sure, that very same breakfast cereal is doubling for candy in a terrific way. I'm for it. When do we eat? Today. Just get somebody to fix you Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. The quick, easy recipes right on the package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, he tell on step the super serial. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, as Lois Lane and Candy Myers face the murderous guns of Harry Niles and his uncle at an old quarry, Superman, carrying the corrupt Dr. Tobin high in the air above the surrounding countryside, searches desperately for them. No sign of Miss Lane and Candy yet, Dr. Tobin. You'd better pray that I find them before anything happens to them. You're flying so fast, I can't breathe. That patch of woods. No, they're not there. They can't be far away, though. Faster! Help! Help! Put me down! When I put you down, it'll be in a jail cell. Oh, wait a minute. At that old quarry. Miss Lane and Candy and Harry Niles. Big Scott, I'm afraid I'm too late. Hurry! <laughs> Hey, want to join a club that brings you lots of exciting fun? This club is organized specially for you. Helps you learn stuff that's not only fun, but also mighty useful. Yes, here's your chance to sign up for the American Junior Red Cross. Correct. You can join the Junior Red Cross right in your classroom. It won't cost you a cent. The Junior Red Cross wants members, live wire members, not money. And the minute you join, you'll get right in on all sorts of exciting and fascinating doings. You can enroll for Red Cross courses that are fun and besides help you to help others. For instance, you can take courses in first aid and accident prevention. You can learn life-saving and water safety. Plus lots of other things that'll make you important in your community. Not only that, the Junior Red Cross will set things up so you can exchange letters and photos with young folks in foreign countries and get a better understanding of people in other lands. It's fun to make friends like that with faraway folks. And the Junior Red Cross has further excitement in store for you. Ask your teacher tomorrow how you can join up and be a member in good standing. And now, the adventures of Superman. Determined to 
Supreme Metropolis from the grip of a corrupt political party controlled by Mike Hickey, Clark Kent, who is Superman, and Perry White, editor of the Daily Planet, organized a reform party which nominated White to run for mayor in the coming elections. But Hickey, equally determined to crush all opposition to his despotic rule, arranged a fake automobile accident in which White was falsely identified as a hit-and-run driver and arrested. Before Superman could expose the frame-up, Hickey ordered Harry Niles, the man who posed as the hit-and-run victim, to be spirited away from City Hospital to a hideout by Dr. Tobin, another of his henchmen. Private Detective Candy Myers and Lois Lane, girl reporter, traced Niles to an old farmhouse where they were captured and taken to an old quarry to be shot. Meanwhile, Superman had captured Dr. Tobin and with him searched the countryside around the farmhouse from the sky. Tied hand and foot, Lois and Candy stood on the edge of the deep, dark quarry. And Niles, lifting his gun, ordered his uncle to fire. Okay, Unc, let him have it. Now! Superman, high in the sky, comes within view of the scene. Flashing downward like a meteor hurtling through space. He snatches the twin bullets of death from the air. A scant hair is from the hearts of Lois and Candy. Then, plummeting to the ground before the wide-eyed Lois and Candy Myers, Superman begins to thoroughly frighten Dr. Tobin and places his own steel body as a shield between his two friends and the angrily amazed Harry Niles and his uncle. Holy smoke! Superman! Superman! You mind that? It's Superman! Right. Drop your gun, Niles. You too, old timer. The... Where'd he come from? Never mind. Get him, huh? Drop your guns, I said. I got him, Harry! character you brought with you. He's listening to the birdies, too. That's Dr. Tobin. My last flight seems to have taken the wind out of him. Dr. Dr. Tobin? Yes, I managed to uh, persuade him to tell me where Niles was hiding out. Incidentally, I see that Clark Kent was right. Niles wasn't hurt in that hit-and-run accident, was he? Of course he wasn't. The whole thing was a frame-up by Mike Hickey to smear Perry White in the reform party. But how did you know about all this, Superman? Oh, I keep informed of what goes on in Metropolis, Miss Lane. There we are. You're both free now. Oh. Oh, all right. Let's deliver our three unconscious friends to Inspector Henderson. Tell him to sweep out another cell for Mike Hickey. Right. I think we've got Hickey on the run at last. Grasping the relaxed forms of Harry Niles, Nelson, and Dr. Tobin, Superman lifts them like a bundle of dirty wash. And taking Lois Lane and Candy Myers under his other arm, he leaps high into the air and streaks to Metropolis. A short time later, a furtive, shifty-eyed man pounds excitedly on the door of Mike Hickey's handsome residence and is shortly in the presence of the fat, many-chinned political boss who, in bathrobe and slippers, has been smoking a last cigar, preparatory to going to bed. Well, Blinky, what brings you here at this time of night? I I thought I'd never get here, Mr. Hickey. You're in trouble. Big trouble. What's wrong? Harry Niles and Doc Tobin. They're in the city jail. What? Are you serious? Yeah, on the level, Mr. Hickey. I just come from there. Inspector Henderson brought them in. And you should have heard it. He says you framed Perry White in that hit-and-run deal, and not the mayor... The district attorney, no, nobody else can keep him from sending you to the big house. Well, I'll stop him right now. Uh, uh, who are you calling? Shut up. Mr. Henderson. I'll get him for this like I got everybody else in town who wouldn't play ball with me. I'll... Huh. Hello. Jerry? Mike Hickey. Listen, Henderson's got Harry Niles and Doc Tobin in the cooler. Yeah. The fat's in the fire for sure unless we were classed. Now listen, here's what I want you to do. You gotta make it good. I want His fat fist gripped tightly around the telephone. Mike Hickey issues rapid fire orders to his unseen lieutenant. Desperate orders, designed to save himself and the corrupt empire he controls through a political machine. We'll be back in a moment to learn what those orders were in the startling climax of today's episode. So keep listening. <laughs> Say, look at any one of your 24 pep photos of great screen and sports stars. The photos you get as a prize, one in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Examine your photo carefully. Notice the picture's not just printed on with ink. No, sir. Each photo's made on actual glossy photographer's paper. Sure, these candid camera-sized photos are strictly professional. And just think, 24 different stars to collect in this great series. Correct. And every photo's of a standout star, like that smoothie George Sanders of United Artists. And Virginia Mayo, the lovely blonde star of so many Sam Goldwyn movies. And Mike Tresh, the famous catcher of the Chicago White Sox. 
Right, and they're only a few of the top-notch screen and sports stars in this great photo series. A whole gallery of celebrities for you to collect. Every photo's clear and sharp as candy. Not only that, these photos are a handy, candid camera size. Just right to carry in your pocket and show your friends. And because of their glossy finish, these photos wear and wear and still look like new. What's more, these photos are exclusively for you pet fans. Nobody else can get these red-hot collector's items because they're not for sale anywhere. Nobody can send off and get them. Right. But they're yours as a special prize. One in every package of Pep. Those crisp golden flakes of good whole wheat. At breakfast, they're so good, you want to shovel them down like mad. But eat them slowly and enjoy every bit of that catchy, delicious flavor. So start the day with Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. <laughs> Back to the adventures of Superman. It is close to midnight in Metropolis. At the Daily Planet, the city room is deserted, save for a lone night man and a telegrapher. But in Clark Kent's office, Kent and Lois Lane have remained to write page one stories for tomorrow's paper. And now, having completed their tasks, they join Candy Myers, who has been waiting for them. Boy, oh boy, what a night. Huh, Miss Lane? Oh, you said it, Candy. Too bad you weren't with us, Clark. Well, you two have described everything so clearly, I feel as if I had been there. <laughs> it's under candy. You did a swell job of tracking down Harry Niles. Oh, thanks. It wouldn't have paid off, except with funeral wreaths, if not for Superman. Brother, was I glad to see him show up at that quarry. No more than I was, Candy. But what I'd really like to see is Mike Hickey's face when he reads my page one story in the Daily Planet tomorrow. Me, I want to see his face when Inspector Henderson puts the handcuffs on him. <laughs> and when Barry White is elected mayor and Hickey's rotten political machine, the whole kitten caboodle is swept right out under the street. You'll see all that next month, Miss Lane. You hope. Don't forget, Mike Hickey is as slippery as a snake. Huh? We got Hickey over the barrel now, but good. Ken's right, Candy. Who said so? Oh, Inspector Henderson. Hello, Inspector. Right. Come up to join the celebration party. No, Candy. Ken told me you would be here late, and since I was passing, I thought I'd bring you the bad news in person. Bad news? What? Well, what do you mean, Inspector? Hickey sprung Niles and Doc Tobin before I could get them to confess. I don't know. How believe. could he do that, Inspector? Well, I was just getting them both softened up by telling them they were sure to get a life rap unless they told everything. When Jerry Gans, he's Hickey's lawyer, showed up at the jail with a DA. Uh oh. Yeah, Gans yelled that I couldn't hold his boys because they weren't booked yet, and the DA backed him up. So I had to take Niles and Tobin before a city magistrate to charge and book them. And, of course, the DA, who was appointed by Hickey, made sure there was a Hickey judge on the magistrate's bench. Oh, great. I can see what that means. Yeah. It means that in spite of everything I could do, the magistrate set a cheap 5000 day a dollar bail for both Niles and Tobin. Only $5,000? For those, those murderous... That's what? right, Miss Lane. The bondsman who came with Gans stepped right up, slapped down the 5000 and our case against Hickey walked out of court. Free on bail. Oh, no. Well, Jeff and Jemima, they'll skip time. Of course. Sure, sure. They've already skipped. I only had one man handy, and I put him on their tail. He followed them to the airport, where they took off in a chartered plane. Oh. Gee. Well, there goes the ball game. And how? And the one, they're headed out of the country. And without them to testify against Mike Hickey, we haven't got a case against him. And the big boy is still running this town. <laughs> Dismayed, Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and Candy Myers stare at the grim-faced Inspector Henderson. Aware now that at the very moment of victory, their prize has been snatched from their hands. And Mike Hickey is still free to assert his gangster rule over Metropolis. We know that Hickey, threatened as he never was before, will attempt anything to crush all opposition to his evil rule. We know, too, that Perry White, his name cleared, will stake everything to dethrone the corrupt political boss. What will the next move be in this titanic struggle for civil rights in a great city? We'll find out in tomorrow's thrilling episode, so be sure to listen. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 14 of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. 
Well, you have another candy. Another? I haven't had any. Well, I mean, with somebody at your house, fix you another different, wonderful kind of candy, Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. Well, you're giving me ideas. Just mention to someone that here's a candy so quick and easy to make, it's a pleasure. Tell them to mix those delicious bubbles of toasted rice, Kellogg's Rice Krispies, with marshmallows and such. Out comes a treat that's terrific. Well, when do we eat? Today, after you show somebody the simple recipe for Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. It's right on the package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, in his office at the Metropolis Daily Planet, Editor Perry White stands by tensely as Clark Kent receives startling information on the telephone from Police Inspector Henderson. What? what? Well, great Scott, Inspector, are you sure? Well, what is it, Kent? Just a moment, Chief. Oh, this is bad news, Inspector. Very bad news. Right. Okay, so long. Well, what's bad news, Kent? Well, you know, Mike Hickey's lawyer, with the aid of the D.A. and a Hickey judge, arranged for Harry Niles and Dr. Tobin to be released on bail from the city jail. Yes, 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 yes. I, I know that, but what about the bad news? Well, wait a minute now. Get this, Chief. Niles and Dr. Tobin left Metropolis in a private plane last night. That's right. You mean they skipped their bail? Uh-huh. Matter of fact, Henderson is sure they skipped the country. But, but with no witnesses against Hickey, there's no case against him. So, Mike Hickey is still the boss of the city. You know, even if you had a camera, you'd probably never get a chance to snap a photo of a movie star like Hedy Lamar of United Artists. Right. So think of getting her photo as a prize. Yes, she's in that swell pep photo series of 24 famous screen and sports stars. One of these photos is yours in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Sure, a brilliant candid camera-sized photo of a top-notch star. Besides Hedy Lamar, there's that he-man Dana Andrews of Sam Goldwyn Studios. And Adolph Kiefer, the champion backstroke swimmer. Now as you collect all 24 photos in this great series, keep them in a pep photo album. Yes, a special album that keeps your photos clean and safe in neat rows. To get your album, look for directions on the side of your pep package. Remember, you get a prize photo in every package of pep, those crisp flakes of whole wheat. And every morning you get prize eating in each delicious pep spoonful. That's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. Acting to remove all opposition to his corrupt rule, Mike Hickey, political boss of Metropolis, attempted to smear editor Perry White, candidate for mayor on a Reform Party ticket, by framing him as a hit-and-run driver. White was arrested and jailed. But Clark Kent, who is Superman, and his friend Candy Meyer, the private detective, uncovered the frame-up, and Superman captured the two key figures in the plot. However, using all his political influence, Hickey had the prisoners released from jail on a ridiculously low bail and arranged for them to skip town immediately. Now, although their case against Mike Hickey has blown up, Perry White and his co-leader of the Reform Party, George Hollister, prominent metropolis merchant, are still certain they can defeat Hickey's machine in the approaching elections. But in White's office in the Daily Planet, Kent voices a warning. Gentlemen, now that Inspector Henderson's statement has cleared Mr. White and our Reform Party is back in business again, we've become an even greater threat to Mike Hickey. So we've got to expect trouble and plenty of it. Trouble? What you kind mean for Mike Hickey, Kent? Right, Chief. After all, tomorrow is primary day. And if you get the 100,000 votes you need to be nominated... 100,000? Yes. Well, I'll get two or 300,000 votes. Maybe more. Well, I know. The people know now I was framed in that phony hit-and-run accident. And even if we can't prove Hickey was behind it, they are plenty suspicious. That's right, Kent. Our district leaders tell me more voters will go to the polls tomorrow than on any other primary day in the city's history. I know, Mr. Hollister. But Hickey realizes he's in for a real fight now, and he'll take his gloves off. Well, let him. We're waking the people up, showing them Hickey can be licked. And we'll keep hammering to get more and more people behind us, and come election day, Hickey and his rotten political machine will be swept into the yash can. Extra, extra, Harry White, 
Perry White celebrates the impending defeat of Mike Hickey and his political machine. The fat, heavy-jowled political boss sits in an inner room of his headquarters above a tavern with his two chief lieutenants, Andrew High, the mayor of Metropolis, and Peter McCann, the city treasurer. Hickey's fleshy face is set in a deep scowl, and he chews savagely on his ever-present cigar. We're in trouble, boys. Serious trouble. The reform party showed too much strength in the primaries. Oh, that doesn't mean anything, Mike. The people are steamed up right now about that hit-and-run frame on Perry White. They'll forget all about it by election time next month. I'm not so sure, Andy. What do you think, Pete? I believe Andy's right, Mike. You said yourself a thousand times the people are too dumb and too lazy to care about politics. They got steamed up today, but it'll pass like it always does, and they'll be things to us. Not this time, I'm afraid. The Daily Planet won't let them forget. And if the morning bulletin and the Gazette throw their support behind the Reform Party, we're in the... No, they still can't lick us. After all, one out of every four registered voters is on the city payroll. Because we put them there, they'll vote for us. So they can stay in the gravy train. That's true, but that still leaves three out of four, Andy. Three quarters of the voters to vote against us. Oh, that's nothing. We know that not more than half the voters ever go to the polls anyhow, Mike. We're sure of our gang on the payroll. And if our ward bosses pick up another good block of votes... Please, please, get kind of throw your thick hands at this election. will be like all the others. More than half the voters will turn out this time, a lot more, because the Daily Planet keeps them stirred up. Why, the Planet just announced a series of articles by their star reporter, Clark Kent. That'll be dynamite. I know, Kent. He talks big, but it's... But nothing. He's a smart reporter, that Kent. He's going to ask us what happened to the $5 million fund the people voted for slum clearing and housing. Well, you're the city treasurer, Pete. How will you answer that? I, uh, I refuse to answer. That's right, Pete. Smart. Very smart. Don't you see how that's practically admitting we stole it? And Kent's going to ask us what happened to the $2 million fund for the new playground. <laughs> how will you answer that, Mr. Mayor? Well, I'll, uh, I'll say the, the fund's being held in abeyance, pending uh, estimates, plans, uh, etc. Mm, held in abeyance. Uh, where? In your personal strong box? That's nobody's business. No? Now, uh, look here, boys. We may get away with that kind of stuff when the people are asleep, too lazy or too busy making money to care about their own government. But when they've got the biggest newspaper in the city screaming at them day after day to wake up, then we're in trouble. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you're right. You huh? bet I am. We've got to make the planet shut up. How? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I think I know how to do it. You know? How, oh, Mike? <laughs> Why didn't I think of this before? Relax, boys. Just sit back and watch me bust the Daily Planet together with Perry White and Clark Kent. High, wide, and handsome. <laughs> his skull gone now. Mike Hickey leers triumphantly at his two lieutenants. What does the political boss mean? We'll be back in a moment to see how Hickey carries out his threat. So keep listening. Know something? To really rate with your crowd, you don't have to be the best athlete or something like that. You'll stand ace high if you've got the best collection of pep photos. Correct. Wait till you flash the whole collection on your friends. All 24 photos in this knockout series of great screen and sports stars. Remember, you get a photo as a prize in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Think of it. An actual candid camera-sized photo of a famous star, like little Peggy Ann Garner of 20th Century Fox, and Charlie Trippy, the all-American halfback. Twenty-four in all. Now, of course, you want to swap your duplicate photos with friends. And here's the exciting way. Play the game of photo swap. Every photo swap game's a thrill, because you swap blind each time. You don't know which photos you'll get. Now, to play photo swap, always carry with you at least two or more duplicates you want to swap. Then, when you meet a friend, you both haul out your photos and keep them face down in your hand. Then you're all set. 
And here's how it goes. Hey, photo swap? Yup. Swap two off the top. Okay, each of us gives the other the two top photos in our hand. And there you are with probably one or maybe two new photos for your collection. Of course, if you get duplicates, use them in another game of photo swap. Most everybody's playing it. Right. Most everybody's saving photos from packages of pep, those crunchy flakes of whole wheat. When you get up, you think how good pep will taste. Then at breakfast, you find pep tastes even better. That Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. <laughs> Adventures of Superman. Following his nomination, Editor Perry White spent a busy evening with George Hollister and Bert Gray, planning his campaign for election. Clark Kent worked on his articles exposing Mike Hickey and his machine. Then, planning an early start in the morning, White decided to spend the night in Kent's apartment instead of driving to his suburban home. It is about midnight when the phone rings. Hello? Yes, this is Clark Kent. Who is it? Oh, hello, Mr. Grayson. How are you? Uh, that John Grayson, our publisher? Uh-huh, it's Chief. Yes, he's here. Sure, just a minute, please. I want to talk to you, Chief. Uh, I guess he wants to congratulate me. Maybe. Uh, hello, John. How do you feel about your editor being the next mayor of Metrop? Huh? What's that? He what? What is it, Chief? Uh, just a minute, Ken. You're kidding. But, but, but that's impossible. Why, Chief, why, listen, what is it? He can't do it, I tell you. I... I well, I don't know what I'll do, but he can't do it. Oh, why, why, it'll cost us the election. Chief, look, will you tell me? Yes. Yes, oh, oh, all right, John, yes. Yes, we'll be there. Okay. Good night. Chief, in heaven's name, what is it? Why are you trembling? Yeah, you were right, Kent. About what? About Hickey. Uh-oh, what did he do now? The building commissioner, uh, one of his boys, has condemned the Daily Planet building. Condemned the Planet building? Yes. The planet can't go to press anymore in our building, Kent. But... And without the planet to blast Hickey day after day, we're licked. His face gray, Perry White looks suddenly like an old man. And even Clark Kent, who has been expecting trouble from Mike Hickey, is stricken speechless at this latest and terrible blow below the belt. Yes, Mike Hickey is far from beaten. His powerful and corrupt political machine is about to ride roughshod over the Daily Planet and our friends, as it has over all other opposition. What can Kent and White do? This is a challenge demanding all of Superman's great powers. And he accepts that challenge tomorrow. So be sure to be with us then. Same time, same station. When the Man of Steel goes into action in Chapter 15 of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. By the way, do you like candy? Say, are you kidding? Well, then how about having Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares? Yes, how about that? Well, just get somebody at home to make them for you. So easy to fix that quick as a minute you get 24 crunchy, light marshmallow squares. Delicious all through with those toasted bubbles of rice, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Sure, this swell cereal double features in candy. Okay, when do we eat? Today, just get someone to fix you Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. The recipe is right on the package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, he's Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, John Grayson, publisher of the Metropolis Daily Planet, tells Clark Kent and editor Perry White how Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss of the city, has just dealt them a staggering blow. Well, we're out of business, gentlemen. The notice was served on me this evening. The building commissioner has condemned the Daily Planet. Condemned it? Mike Hickey is responsible for that. The building commissioner is his stooge. Hickey appointed him. And I'm sure he got him to condemn the Planet building to keep us from exposing him to the voters and beating his rotten political machine in the elections. Oh, of course he did, Chief, but I... Well, who does that gangster think he is? Hitler? 
Does he think he can get away with this? He did get away with it, Perry. And I don't think there's a thing we can do about it. Say, know how a professional photographer judges a photo? He judges it by the pose and the lighting and how lifelike it is. Right. And all 24 of your pet photos score high on each count. Just think of getting a top-notch photo of a great screen and sports star as a prize. One photo is yours in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Correct. A photo of a star like Virginia Mayo of Sam Goldwyn Pictures and slick George Sanders of United Artists and the Chicago Bears' great halfback, George McAfee. Now, of course, you're aiming to collect all 24 stars in this standout series. And the exciting way to swap your duplicates for photos you don't have is Photo Swap, the thrilling swap game. We'll show you how to play later in the program. Remember, a photo is yours in every package of Pep. Those crisp flakes of good whole wheat. As you march those spoonfuls of pep from your breakfast bowl, you'll have a parade of good eating. That's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. As candidate for mayor on a Reform Party ticket, Editor Perry White is spearheading a drive to free Metropolis from the grip of the corrupt political machine controlled by Mike Hickey. Due to the efforts of Clark Kent, who, as we know, is Superman, Hickey failed in a bold attempt to smear White and send him to the penitentiary. But now Hickey has struck again. Fearing the power of the press, he has set out to muzzle it by condemning the building that houses White's newspaper, the influential Daily Planet. As we continue now, John Grayson, owner and publisher of The Planet, is conferring with editor Perry White and Clark Kent in his home. Listen. Yes, Perry, it looks as if Mike Hickey is too strong for us. I'm afraid we'll let Oh, no, we're not, John. We can't let Hickey get away with this. We'll fight him. We'll... Now, just a moment, Chief. On what grounds did the commissioner condemn the planet building, Mr. Grayson? Simple but effective grounds, Kent. He claims the rock beneath the building has cracked and is beginning to crumble. Oh, no. Nonsense. Well, of course it's nonsense, Perry. Our engineers examined the foundations and underlying rock a short time ago when we were considering adding three stories to the building. We found everything in good order. But what can we do about it? Take him into court. Fight him right up to the Supreme Court if we have to. That'll take too much time, Chief. That's right. My lawyers say it might take months to have that condemnation order set aside. Months? But but election day is only four weeks away. And we can't beat Hickey unless we keep hammering at him every day in the planet. Exactly, Perry. That's why I say we're licked. No, sir. No, sir, I won't admit that. We've got to face facts, Perry. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. An idea? What, Kent? Yes, let's have it. Besides the planet, you own several small-town newspapers, don't you, Mr. Grayson? Why, yes. Including one in Willow Falls, just 40 miles away? That's right, the Willow Falls Star. You have a roomy modern plant there. Just what are you getting at, Kent? Perfectly simple. My idea is to publish the Daily Planet in Willow Falls and truck the papers into Metropolis. What? Well, you're out of your mind, Kent. No, I'm not. The star is equipped to print 20 or 30,000 papers a day. So? The planet has a circulation of half a million papers a day. I know that, Chief. But there's a lot of room in the star plant. We can put in enough linotypes and presses to print all the papers we need. Impossible, Kent. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Do you know how long it would take to bring that equipment in from the factories? Maybe a month or two at the earliest. Well, granted, but I didn't... Yes, and by that time, the elections will be over. No. No, that's no good. Now, wait a minute, will you? My idea is to take the linotypes and presses we need from the Daily Planet. Huh. Are you kidding? No. You're not very practical, Kent. Those machines weigh several tons apiece. Disassembling them and moving them to Willow Falls would be at least a month's job. Well, of all the silly ideas. Oh, really? Well, now, suppose I told you the plant in Willow Falls will be ready to turn out half a million papers a day by tomorrow morning. What? Why, that's so ridiculous, it's funny. Now, look, Kent, this is no time for jokes. We're in serious trouble. I'm not I'm joking, Chief, and I'll prove it. Now, wait a minute, Kent. Now, where are you going? See a man about a moving job. Now, Kent, don't be a fool. Now, oh, let's see. Where can I... Oh, I could change in this alley. This is a real job for Superman. Now, let's see. I'd better pick up Pat Murphy, our foreman. Together, we can prepare a little surprise for Mr. Grayson and the chief. And for Mike Hickey. There we are. All set. Up and away! There. Delivery doors are open. You say you want this big press first, Murphy? That's right. Well, don't tell me you mean to fly with it. It weighs ten tons if it weighs an ounce. That's a flyweight for me. Watch closely, Murphy. Mother of mercy. You lifted it right off the floor. Sure, and it'll be in Willow Falls in a matter of seconds. Have those other machines disconnected when I get back, will you? Now. Up and away! Saints alive. 
He flew away with that tent on first like a bird with a straw. Gasping, Pat Murphy watches Superman disappear through the open delivery doors with the mammoth press. And he has hardly had time to compose himself before the Man of Steel has returned from Willow Falls for another load. Well, what's next, Murphy? Is that, is that number two, Chris? Right you are. Up with it. There. Now, up and away! I must be dreaming. He done it again. Like a man in a daze, the planet foreman points out great presses, line attack machines, and huge rolls of paper to Superman, who transports them with incredible speed through the air from Metropolis to Willow Falls. Then, by 7 o'clock in the morning, the reconverted plant of the Willow Falls Star is a beehive of activity as Daily Planet employees, assembled by Foreman Pat Murphy, arrive to man the great presses that turn out the Daily Planet. Soon, a long line of Daily Planet trucks, all with the slogan, Vote Right for Perry White, painted in huge letters on their sides, take on loads of papers and get underway to newsstands throughout Metropolis. I can't believe it, Kent. I must be dreaming. How did you ever get hold of Superman and persuade him to do this for us? Well, how I got hold of him is a secret I can't reveal at the moment, Chief. But persuading him to do the job was quite easy. He's right with you in this fight against Mike Hickey. In fact, he's much closer to you than you think. Huh? What was that, Kent? Huh? Nothing, Chief. Nothing. Oh, boy, if I could only see Hickey's face when he realizes we've pumped his ace again. I'd give a week's salary for his picture when he finds out. I'd give more than that to know what he's thinking and what he'll do next. Because as sure as there are little green apples, he will do something. And it'll probably be worse than anything he's done before. Clark Kent is probably right. And we'll be back in a moment to find out how Mike Hickey takes this latest setback. So keep listening. You know, for sheer fun, you just can't beat collecting things. Especially when they're red-hot items like those 24 photos of great stars you get as a prize. One in every package of Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Correct, because these Pep photos are brilliantly clear, actual photos of famous screen and sports stars. Like Joan Bennett, the leading lady in all those United Artists movies. And Orville Grove, the Chicago White Sox pitcher. What more, every photo's perfect for collecting. A handy, candid camera size. Not only that, you've got more fun in store besides collecting. You can play Photo Swap, the exciting way to trade your duplicates. And the photos you get in exchange may help complete your collection of all 24 stars. Yes, sir. Now, to play this thrilling game, always carry with you the photos you want to swap. Then when you see a friend coming, pull out your spares and turn him face down in your hand. Of course, he does the same. Okay? Here's what the two of you say. Hey, photo swap? Yep. Then swap two off the top. Now, you exchange, sight unseen, the two top photos in your hand. And there you are. You swap and get different photos. Each game's excitement plot. Yes, sir. Like the fun of eating pep, those catchy flakes of whole wheat. Pile your bowl full every morning at breakfast because pep's a mountain of good eating. That Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. What's more, for super excitement, be here tomorrow at the same time. We'll tell you all the details about a thrilling offer. Yes, we'll be offering us something that's terrific. An offer you won't want to miss. So be sure you're here without fail. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In Mike Hickey's headquarters above a tavern on Morton Street, an unusual quiet prevails. Through the long, smoke-filled room, ward healers and political hangers-on, always so loud and assertive, talk in low tones their eyes shifting uneasily to the oversized barber's chair in the center of the room, where Mike Hickey sits alone, a deep scowl on his heavy-jowled face. At his feet, ripped and trampled in a fit of rage, are shreds of the late edition of the Daily Planet. Torn headlines scream the news of Boss Hickey's unsuccessful attempt to muzzle America's free press. And as his angry glance catches those headlines, yellow lights flare in his deeply pouched eyes. And then the lights burn out, leaving his eyes cold, Emotionless, crafty. His heavy head swings to watch the door expectantly, and when a man enters, he nods toward his office. The newcomer is short, slight, quietly dressed, with felt hat pulled low over his eyes. Unobtrusively, he walks around knots of men and into Mike Hickey's private office at the end of the room. Then, heaving himself from his barber's chair, the political boss waddles after him into the office and 
kicks the door shut behind him. Took you long enough to get here. I come as quick as I could, Mr. Hickey. What's on your mind? There's a man in this town who's lived too long. I want you to get rid of him. What's his name? It's written on this piece of paper with his address. You're kidding, ain't you, Mr. Hickey? I never kid. You ought to know that. I want this man taken care of tonight. For an instant, the yellow lights flare again in Mike Hickey's eyes and then smolder out, leaving them as cold and expressionless as those of the slight man before him. He folds the slip of paper carefully, puts it into his pocket, then nods and walks quietly from the room. Whose name is on that deadly piece of paper? We'll find out in tomorrow's surprising action-packed episode, gang, so be sure to listen. Don't miss Chapter 16 of Ruler of Darkness. Tomorrow on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Will you have some candy? Sure. Some Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares? Sure thing. Where are they? Well, I wasn't offering. I was just asking whether somebody at your house will make you some of the most delicious, easy-to-fix candy you ever pop into your mouth. Light as a feather Marshmallow Squares, all golden with the toasted rice bubbles of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Can you picture a cereal that doubles in candy? And how? When do we eat? Today, just get somebody to fix you Rice Krispies Marshmallow Squares. The simple recipe is printed right on the package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, he Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, in a desperate move to retain his corrupt political empire, Mike Hickey sends a man known as the Pistol on a startling and mysterious mission. I've got a little job for you, Pistol. I'm listening, Mr. Hickey. There's a man in this town who's lived too long. I get it. What's his name? From this piece of paper. With his address. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Kidding, ain't you, Mr. Hickey? I never kid you ought to know that. I want you to get rid of this man. Tonight. Hold everything and stand by for some spine-tingling news. You remember a few weeks ago, Kellogg's Pep offered you a gyrocket, a sensational flying rocket model, a gyrocket that streaks right from your hand. Well, listen to this. Fact is, thousands of people sent in for their gyrocket then send for another and another. And requests are still pouring in even after the closing date. Right. So to give everybody a fair chance, Kellogg's Pep now reopens this offer for a limited time only. And if you act right away, you can still get your gyrocket. Think of it. A gyrocket almost half a foot long with a slender, streamlined body of sturdy wood, brilliant red or blue or yellow. And get this. A steel propeller at the stern packs your gyrocket with power. Yet launching's a cinch. For with your gyrocket... You get a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You just hold the rod in your hand, flick your arm, and your gyrocket streaks into the air higher and higher, up over the treetops. Send for several gyrockets today. You can be captain of a whole rocket fleet of the future. But you've got to act right now. This offer is reopened for a limited time only. So for each gyrocket you order, send a Kellogg's Pep Box Top plus 15 cents to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, plus the dime and a nickel and your name and address clearly printed to Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. 
His corrupt political machine threatened by a reform party movement. Boss Mike Hickey made several attempts to wreck the party and discredit Editor Perry White, candidate for mayor. But Hickey's attempts failed due to the efforts of Superman, who masquerades as Clark Kent, mild-mannered and bespectacled reporter. With the elections only a few weeks off, Hickey decided on a bold and violent move. Summoning a gunman known as the Pistol, Hickey gave him a piece of paper with a man's name written on it and ordered him to remove that man. A moment later, Pete McCann, city treasurer and a Hickey henchman, entered the political boss's private office, an alarmed expression on his face. That little guy who just left here, Mike, wasn't that the Pistol? Was it, Pete? I'm sure it was. He had his hat pulled down over his eyes, but I recognized him. What was he doing here? That's my business. No, 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 look, Mike. Anytime the Pistol's around, it means there's going to be a funeral. Did you give him an order to rub somebody out? What makes you say that, Pete? Because that character wouldn't have been here otherwise. So? Mike, have you gone nuts? You've always said, frame a guy, beat him up, but no killings. That's the hardest rap to square. And now you order one yourself. Well, what of it? Who is it? The less you know, the better. Is it one of our guys? Somebody pull a double cross? I told you, Pete, for your own good, the less you know. Harry White, maybe. Holy mackerel, it isn't him, is it? Look, if you want to play guessing games, get on a quiz show. Anything else you want to see me about? No, Mike. Nothing else is important. I'm... I'm worried. The elections are only a few weeks off, and, and while we can't lose... Oh, no? It'd be bad business to get smeared with a killing. Now, well, don't worry. We won't get smeared. But we might. Inspector Henderson would give his right arm to print something on you, and... Say, you didn't send the pistol after Henderson, did you? Never mind what I did, Pete. You just get this through your head. This is one election we can't afford to lose. If we do, we're not only off the gravy train, but you and I and the mayor and the building commissioner and a few of the other boys will go back to the penitentiary. The penitentiary? No, no, no. Look, my... You heard me. If those reform guys get in, they'll put us on trial for stealing public funds and for a lot of other things you know about. Well, the people would never go along on that. Oh, no? I can read the cards. And I tell you, they're stacked against us. There's only one thing left to save our machine and our hides. That's the chance I took today. You mean the pistol? That's right. There's one man in this town our political lives hinge on. If he's put out of the way, we can still win the election. And we still have things our way. What man is that? (laughs) You'll know tomorrow when you read his death notice. Well, we'll be at the auditorium in a few minutes, Chief. Got your speech memorized? I know what I'm going to say, Kent. I've got enough dirt on Hickey to build a mountain. And I'm going to bury him in his whole rotten machine under it. That's the stuff. Pile it on, Mr. Mayor. (laughs) Sounds good, eh? Vote right with Perry White. That's a good slogan you dreamed up, Kent. Going to help us win. I sure hope so. Oh, we can't miss. Well, everything looks good, all right, but... I don't know, I'm still worried. About what? Well, I can't understand why Hickey's been so quiet since he failed to muzzle the Daily Planet. He hasn't made a move. Well, that's because he tried every dirty trick he knew and failed. I think he realizes now that he's licked. And I don't know, Chief. Hickey's a tough, resourceful customer, you know. He doesn't give up easily. Well, that's right. But he's smart enough to know that when a whole city rises up against him, as Metropolis is doing, he's done for. But he can't afford to lose this election. Don't you see, Chief? He knows if he loses, he'll face trial for, for theft, conspiracy, intimidation. Hey, uh, enough crimes to send him up for life. And so the rest of his mob. That's why I'm worried about this this sudden quiet on his part. What's there to worry about? I don't know. It's got a funny feeling that Hickey's cooking up a particularly dirty dish of some sort. Ah, nonsense, Kent. Nonsense. I tell you, Hickey shot his boat and he knows it. He... Hey, what are we slowing up for? Oh, we're coming to the auditorium. Wow, look at that crowd, Chief. You're going to have a terrific audience tonight. Well, they're not coming out just to hear me. The governor's going to be there, you know. Oh, yeah. And his support has helped us a lot. Certainly has. I don't see... You don't see what? Inspector Henderson and his police detail. He promised to be here himself tonight. What for? Well, you're a pretty important figure now, Chief. Oh, you mean you're afraid somebody might try to shoot me or something? I don't think Hickey would go that far, but you can't... Oh, you've got Hickey at us off the brain, Kent. He's too smart to try anything. Oh, there's Henderson's car now. And three squad cars behind him. That's fine. Okay, Chief. Here we are. I'm out. Leaving their taxi in front of the auditorium, Perry White and Clark Kent are taken in tow by Inspector Henderson and a special police detail and escorted through an enthusiastic crowd into the huge building. As they go through the doors, 
Kent, impelled by some instinct, glances behind him, but fails to notice a short, slight, quietly dressed man with a felt hat pulled low on his forehead, who has just alighted from another taxi. <laughs> Merging with the crowd, the slight man whom we last saw in Mike Hickey's private office moves into the lobby. But instead of continuing into the auditorium, he slips unobtrusively to a stairway and descends to the smoking lounge. <laughs> There he pauses to light a cigarette, his glance sweeping the room. Then, as the only two other men in the lounge start up the stairs to the auditorium, the pistol moves quickly to a small door set in the wall, opens it, and steps into a maze of steam pipes, water pumps, and motors. A narrow, winding iron stairway goes upward along the wall, and swiftly, cat-like, the pistol mounts it and starts climbing. A moment more, and he has passed from sight. As we know, the pistol has been commissioned by Mike Hickey to remove the one man whom Hickey says stands between him and success in the election. Who is that one man? And what will happen? We'll return in a moment to find out, so keep listening. Talk about surprises. We expected a terrific response when Kellogg's Pep offered you a gyrocket, but nothing like the landslide of orders that came in. Well, we want to give every one of you a chance to get this sensational flying rocket model. So we're reopening this gyrocket offer for a limited time only. Yes, sir, you can still get a gyrocket that streaks right out of your hand high into the air. A gyrocket almost half a foot long. Correct. Almost half a foot of sleek, streamlined body made of gleaming wood in brilliant blue or red or yellow. And get this. Your gyrocket has a powerful steel propeller at the stern, yet launching's a snap. Because with your gyrocket, you get a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You flick your arm and your rocket soars off up over the treetops. Remember, this gyrocket is made of solid steel and wood, built for hundreds of launching. Send for several gyrockets today. Then have thrilling contests with your friends. Test your fleet against theirs for speed and distance. But be sure you send for your gyrocket right away, because this offer is back on the air for a limited time only. Now, for each gyrocket you order, send 15 cents and a Kellogg's Pep box top. To Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, plus a dime and a nickel, and your name and address, clearly printed, to Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Before a huge, enthusiastic crowd in the Metropolis Auditorium, the governor has just introduced Editor Perry White, candidate for mayor on a Reform Party ticket. As thunderous applause breaks out, and White walks forward on the stage, Clark Kent, standing at the back of the stage with the governor, glances about him nervously. What's the matter, Kent? You seem awfully nervous. I am nervous, Governor. Mr. White is a pretty clear target on this stage. Target? Oh, come now. Inspector Henderson is right here on the stage, and he has his men planted at all the doors. Nothing can happen to White. I'm not so sure. Mike Hickey must be desperate right now. Very desperate. Oh, forget it, Kent. Hickey's too smart to try murder. I wish I could be sure of that, but... Well, I'm uneasy. As the great crowd applauds Perry White, who comes forward smilingly, holding up a hand to quiet them, the man known as the Pistol is crouched hardly 60 feet away on a narrow iron staircase behind a ventilator grill set into the wall of the auditorium. Taking a long-barreled revolver from his shoulder holster, the Pistol snaps a silencer on its muzzle and sights it through the grilling, taking careful aim at the man on the stage. As his steely eyes fix themselves on his target, he whispers, Vote right with Perry White, huh? Okay, Mr. White. Here's your vote from Mike Hickey. Now, his eyes cold and hard as steel, the pistol's finger slowly tightens around the trigger of the gun aimed directly at the heart of Perry White. Clark Kent, who is Superman, has suspected that the desperate Mike Hickey might try to harm White. But Kent has not seen the unobtrusive little killer. How can he possibly save the gray-haired editor now? There's a thrill a minute in Monday's exciting episode, so be sure to listen. Don't fail to tune in same time, same station, Monday, for another action-packed chapter of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine. 
and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the Super Cereal. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, he Kellogg's pep, the super serial. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the Super Cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, while Clark Kent stands beside Editor Perry White, who, as Reform Party candidate for mayor, addresses a huge crowd in the Metropolis Auditorium, he is unaware that a man crouches behind a screened metal ventilator overlooking the stage. His cold eyes sighting along the barrel of a gun with a silencer snapped on its muzzle. Aimed at Perry White. To paraphrase Shakespeare a bit, I come not to praise my Kiki, but to bury him in the election. Vote right with Perry White, huh? Okay, Mr. White. With this little gun, I'm going to give you your vote from Mike Hickey. Now for some sizzling news about a red-hot offer. Yes, sir, a gyrocket offer. A terrific flying rocket model that streaks right from your hand. Correct. A gyrocket that thousands and thousands have already ordered from Kellogg's Pet. And even now, requests keep coming in postmarked after the closing date. So to give everybody a fair chance, now we're reopening this sensational offer for a limited time only. And you can still get a gyrocket. Right. A gyrocket you can launch right out of your hand, high into the air, up over the treetop. A gyrocket almost half a foot long, shaped of gleaming wood, streamlined to the last inch, braided red or blue or yellow, plus a steel propeller at the stern that bites into the air, driving your gyrocket like a flash into the sky. And it comes complete with a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. Remember, this gyrocket is not a flimsy cardboard cutout, but a model of rugged steel and wood, built to take it for hundreds of launchings. But you've got to act now, because we've been able to round up only a limited number of gyrockets to reopen this offer. So don't get left out of the excitement. For each gyrocket you want, just mail 15 cents and a Kellogg's Pep Box Stop to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Don't delay. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box stop from Kellogg's Pep, plus a dime and a nickel and your name and address clearly printed to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. Due to the efforts of Superman, all attempts by corrupt political boss Mike Hickey to discredit editor Perry White and his reform party have failed. Worried, Hickey saw that unless he did something drastic, White would be elected mayor, and he, Hickey, would then be swept out of power... And probably right into the penitentiary. Desperate, with the elections only a few weeks away, Hickey summoned a professional gunman known as the Pistol and instructed him to get rid of White. That evening, when the campaigning editor rose to address a huge political rally in the Metropolis Auditorium, the Pistol, hidden on an iron staircase behind a screened ventilator which overlooked the stage, took careful aim at the unsuspecting White and fired. But in a split second, the powder flash attracts the attention of Superman, who, in his guise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter, is seated on the stage with the governor and Inspector Henderson. Immediately alert, Kent leaps into action, shouting a warning to White. Chief, look out! Kent hurls himself through the air with the speed of light, knocking the astonished editor off his feet as the killer's bullet speeds toward its mark. Suddenly, Perry White falls to the floor of the stage, a whitening streak of crimson staining his shirt front. Chief, Chief, are you the way, Kent? Mr. White was hit, Inspector. I can see that. Hear me. Keep the crowd away and find it out. There must be one in the audience. And nobody leaves this place, get it? Nobody. A few minutes later, behind the closed and guarded door of a small room under the stage of the auditorium, Clark Kent and Inspector Henderson stand by tensely as a doctor bends over Perry White. Well, how about it, Doc? Is he? Will he be all right? Yes, he'll be all right, gentlemen. Oh, good. It's just a very slight flesh wound. 
The bullet grazed him in passing. Oh. Thank heaven. A half inch closer, though, and it would have been all over for him. Good thing you moved so fast, Mr. Kent. Yeah. I never saw anybody move so fast. One second you were sitting next to me, Kent. The next you were all the way across the state. Hey, how in... Never mind that now, Inspector. I noticed the shot came from behind a ventilator screen under the balcony. Let's have a look up there right now. Come on. The gunman stood on this iron staircase, Inspector, and fired through the grilled ventilator screen. How do you know, Kent? Huh? Oh, well, I, I, I saw the flash of the gun when he fired. And unfortunately, I didn't have time to get a look at him. I had to move fast. Get a look at him? Huh? How could you have seen him if he was behind this wall? Oh, oh. well, I did that. Never I... mind, never mind. If he was here, he's probably still in the auditorium someplace. I'm afraid not. This stairway leads down to the basement, and there are doors from the basement to the alley. He must have skipped. Uh, it could be. But it's worth a look. Come on, we'll go down to the basement. No, oh, nobody down here. I guess he did get away, Kent. Of course he did. If only I'd had time to get a look at him. I'd... There you go again with that nonsensical routine. Who do you think you are, Superman? Huh? Uh, no, what was oh, that? Skip is... it. I... Brother, would I like to get my hands on that would-be killer? You know, it was only a miracle that White wasn't killed. Now, who do you suppose would want to shoot him? Mike Hickey? Huh? My hunch says Hickey was definitely behind this. And if he was, I'm sure he won't stop with his one attempt to get Mr. White. Hmm. Look, Inspector, I, uh... I can't be with White every minute, so I'm going to have to favor you. Will you please set a special police detail to watch over him until after the election? Well, that's not routine, you know. I know. But... And I'd get a lot of criticism from the Hickey mob for it. But I'll see that White gets protection. Oh, thanks, Inspector. Now I'd better get back to him. And I'm going after that gunman. See you later. <laughs> Long time no see, Pistol. Where you been keeping yourself? Ah, oh, here and there. Fill it up again, Eddie. Okay, chum. Hey, you are. Hey, you think that Reform Party bunch got a chance in the elections, Pistol? <sighs> Not a prayer. I don't know how you can be so sure. That guy Perry White is awful popular. And that stuff he's printing in his paper about Mike Hickey, that ain't doing Mike so good, you know. Look... All you got to worry about is White being the next mayor. Stop worrying. You're pretty sure he won't be elected, huh, Pistol? Me? <laughs> I know he won't, Eddie. I sure hope you're right. That reform bunch would ruin my dice game if they... Oh, your attention, please. I want to hear this. Your attention, please. Mary White, candidate for mayor on the reform party ticket, was shot at by an unseen gunman as he spoke to a large crowd at the auditorium this evening. Well, what do you know? Fortunately, I... one of Mr. White's reporters, Clark Kent, who was also on the stage, saw the flash of the gun and managed to hurl White aside, barely in time to save his life. Uh... The popular candidate for mayor suffered only a slight flesh wound what? and promises to continue his campaign with his same vigor. Mr. White has left Metropolis Hospital and will spend the night at the newspaper club. Turn you now to the music of Johnny Garden. The newspaper club, huh? How do you like that, huh? Hey, where are you going so fast, Pistol? I got business to take care of. So long. Where to, mister? The newspaper club, Jabby, and step on it. I'll pay. You won't get away this time, Mr. White. <laughs> Failing in his first attempt to eliminate Perry White, Mike Hickey's gunman is on the editor's trail again, determined to succeed this time. What will happen now? We'll be back in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Now hold your breath. In just a second, the excitement will double. Correct, because Kellogg's Pep has reopened your gyrocket offer. After the original offer closed a few weeks ago, requests for these gyrockets kept pouring in. Now we have a new supply. So for a limited time only, you can still get a gyrocket. A sensational flying rocket model that streaks right from your hand high into the air. A gyrocket almost half a foot long with a gleaming wooden body, red or blue or yellow. Slender and streamlined to the last inch. At the power end is a steel propeller designed for rotational thrust. Yet launchings of since. Because your gyrocket comes complete with a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You just hold the launching rod in your hand, flick your arm, and your gyrocket zooms off up over the treetop. So get in on the fun right away. Then for several gyrockets, get a whole rocket fleet of the future. Right. Then challenge your friends to distance and speed contests. Rate your fleet against theirs. 
But this Guy Rocket offer is back on the air for a limited time only. So get yours right now while we still have a supply. For each Guy Rocket you order, send 15 cents and a box top from Kellogg's Pet to Superman, Box 1, 2, 4, New York 8, New York. Remember, you can't buy this Guy Rocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, together with a dime and a nickel, and your name and address, clearly printed, to Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In the lobby of the newspaper club, the sharp-eyed, plain-clothed men from Inspector Henderson's office size up every man who enters. Outside the door of a room on the 14th floor, two uniformed police officers stand alertly on guard. Inside the room, Clark Kent is just taking leave of Perry White. Uh, it's getting late, Chief. So I think I'll run along. I think you'll be safe here. Oh, sure I will. I tell you, Kent, putting all these guards around me is a lot of Tom foolishness. And I don't like it. Well, that's too bad. Would you rather stop a bullet as you almost did earlier tonight? Oh, forget that. Won't happen again. Oh, some crackpot did it, but the police will find him and lock him up. I don't think it was a crackpot. Still think it was one of Mike Hickey's men. I told you before, Kent, that's nonsense. Is it? Why, of course. Now, look, I don't say Hickey isn't capable of murder, but he's too smart to take a chance on a rap like that. Well, you're going to be guarded until after the elections, whether you like it or not, and that's that. Besides, it's too late to argue. Yes, yes, it is late. Okay. Good night, Chief. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Kent. Good night. Leaving, Mr. Kent? Yes, Riley. I think Mr. White will be safe here with you fellas on watch. You can bet on that. <laughs> I'm sure I can. Good night, Riley. Good night, Mr. Kent. Taking the elevator down to the lobby, Clark Kent exchanges greetings with a plain clothes man on duty. Then leaves the newspaper club, believing that Perry White is safe from any further attacks on his life. But hardly has Kent's taxi pulled away when the pistol, moving noiselessly and swiftly, runs up the fire escape that faces on the dark alley side of the newspaper club. Reaching the 14th floor, he steps onto a narrow ledge only six inches wide. Then, flattening himself against the wall, the gunman begins inching his way along the dark ledge to a lighted window 50 feet away. The window of the room occupied by Perry White. Sure-footed as a stalking cat, the pistol slides closer and closer along the narrow ledge to his unsuspecting victim. Closer he comes. And closer. Only a few more careful steps now, and he will be at the window of the editor's room. Clark Kent is not here now to save Perry White as he was at the auditorium. What will happen? Don't miss tomorrow's sense of exciting episode, gang. Yes, whatever you do, be sure to tune in again tomorrow. Same time, same station, for another thrilling chapter of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg Pep, the super serial. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, in a conference with his henchman, the mayor of Metropolis, political boss Mike Hickey makes a prediction which bodes no good for Superman's friend, Editor Perry White. Listen. So you're worried about Perry White taking your job away, Andy? Well, frankly, yes, I am worried, Mike. White and his reform party are gaining tremendous strength in the city, and I, for one, am not sure we can beat them in the elections. Stop worrying, Andy. White's campaign is over. Oh, well, what do you mean, Mike? I mean that by tomorrow morning, Perry White will be dead. Say, the excitement is mounting higher and higher. Yes, gyrocket excitement. 
You remember a few weeks ago, Kellogg's Pep offered you a gyrocket, a flying rocket model that streaked right from your hand. Well, even after the offer closed, requests are still flooding our mail. And now we've reopened this offer for a limited time more. Meaning, if you act right now, you can get your gyrocket. Think of it, a gyrocket almost half a foot long, with a sleek, slender body made of gleaming wood in brilliant red or blue or yellow. And get this. Your gyrocket has a steel propeller at the stern, a propeller that sends it fighting into the air, up over the treetop. What's more, this gyrocket comes complete with a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You just hold it in your hand, flick your arm, and your gyrocket shoots up, flashing into the sky. Remember, this gyrocket is not a flimsy cardboard cutout, but solid steel and wood, built for hundreds of launchings. Send for yours today. Race your gyrockets against those your friends have. Test yours against theirs for distance and speed. But notice. This offer is back on the air for a limited time only. So for each gyrocket you want, today send 15 cents. And a box top from Kellogg's Pep to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Don't forget, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, plus the diamond and nickel, and your name and address clearly printed to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. <laughs> And now, the adventures of Superman. When all Mike Hickey's attempts to discredit Editor Perry White, candidate for mayor, were blocked by Superman, the corrupt political boss became desperate. Realizing that a victory for White and his reform party in the coming elections would spell his doom, Hickey ordered a professional gunman known as the Pistol to eliminate White. Following the Pistol's first attempt to shoot White, which was barely foiled by Clark Kent, who is Superman, Inspector Henderson provided a special police guard for the gray-haired editor. But that night, when White retired to his room in the heavily guarded newspaper club, the pistol climbed a fire escape to the 14th floor, and working his way inch by inch along a narrow stone ledge, approached the lighted window of White's room. As the gunman flattened against the wall, cautiously advances toward the windowsill of the unsuspecting editor's room, Police officers Rosen and Kowalski, patrolling the outside of the newspaper club, entered the dark alley behind the building. Happening to glance up in the direction of White's room, Officer Rosen suddenly draws his gun and cries out, Hey, Kowalski! Yeah, Rosie! Look up there on Mr. White's windowsill! Holy mackerel! Hey, you! Let me tell a gun! Hey, shoot him up! Let him have it! I'll get him! I got him! Good work, Rosie! Hey, look out! He's pulling! Call an ambulance! Hurry! <laughs> Hello. That's you, Kent? Yes. Who's... Inspector Henderson. Uh, can you meet me at the city morgue right away? The morgue? What happened? That gunman went after Perry White again. What? And you mean he... M Mr. White is... No, no, easy. Not easy. White's okay. But oh. The gun was dead. Two of my boys shot him down off White's windowsill. Oh, I thought maybe... Yeah, it looks as if you were right, Kent. I think this guy was working for my kicking. That's so? How do you know? I'll tell you as soon as you get out here. I sent a detail out to pick up Tiggy and bring him down, too. So hurry up. <laughs> Just a minute, Kent. I have something to ask, Mr. Hickey. All right, Inspector. Why did you bring me down here, Inspector? You know I'm a busy man. I, I know, I know, Mr. Hickey. This won't take a minute. Can you identify this man? I never saw the poor fellow before in my life. You're sure, Mr. Hickey? Sure you never saw the pistol before? When he was alive, I mean? I don't like your tone, Inspector. Yeah? I said I never saw this man before, dead or alive. Now, if that's all, I'll be going back home. Not so fast, Mr. Hickey. I've got something else to show you. This, uh, this is a telephone message slip, Mr. Hickey. The kind they use at hotels to take messages for guests when they're out. We found it in the pistol's pocket. Well, what's that got to do with me, Inspector? Quite a bit. According to the date, this message was taken today. At 9.05 this morning, to be exact. It says, Mr. Hickey, call when you were out. Please call him back. Now, do you still say you don't know the pistol? That's right. I don't know him. And get this, Inspector. I don't know what you're driving at. I'll tell you what I'm driving at. You got in touch with the pistol this morning. You told him to get rid of Perry White. You can't prove that message was for me. I'm not the only man named Hickey in Metropolis, you dumb flat foot. No, wait just a minute. Wait you. a minute, Inspector. Wait a minute. Mr. Hickey, can you deny that you're the only Hickey who has a strong motive for wanting Mr. White out of the way? You keep out of this, you crummy reporter. How dare you accuse me? Because I know that first you tried to discredit Mr. White by framing him as a hit-and-run driver. When that didn't work, you tried to shut up the Daily Planet. That didn't work either, and you got scared. You realize White might beat you in the coming elections, and if that happens, you'll wind up in the penitentiary. 
So you decided to put him out of the way. Doesn't that add up? It adds up for me. Uh -huh. Well, try to prove it. We'll prove it, all right. You bet we will. Meanwhile, I'm warning you, Mr. Hickey. Keep your hands clean from here in. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> okay, Hickey. Beat it. You started something, punk. We'll see who finishes it. Well, Vector, he knows we're on his trail now. We've got to move fast before he covers it. Don't worry, Kent. I'm going to assign every detective on my staff to this case. We'll tie Hickey up with a pistol, or my name isn't Bill Henderson. Great Mike, you say Henderson and Kent know you hired the pistol to get white? I'm pretty sure of it, Andy. Henderson may know, but he's got to prove it. And we're not going to let him prove it. You're going to kill this investigation right now. I am. Yes, you're the mayor, aren't you? Yes, but I can't call Henderson off now. That's practically admitting you're guilty. Why, the newspapers will raise such a thing, the governor will step into the picture. I don't mean to do it that way, stupid. I want you to get rid of Henderson. Get rid of him? How? I've got some figures. We'll get Henderson out of the way and one of our own boys in as police inspector. Then we'll not only be able to get to Perry White, but we can fix this town so we have to be reelected. Well, I tell you what to do. His fat, heavy jowled face close to the mayor's. Mike Hickey outlines his plan swiftly. A plan which he says will get rid of Inspector Henderson and open the way to victory in the election. We'll be back in a moment to see what Hickey does. So keep listening. <laughs> Now you've got more thrills coming, because that Jai Rocket offer is back on the air temporarily. Right. So many thousands sent in requests after the original offer closed that Kellogg's Pep now reopens the offer for a limited time only. Yes, sir. Right now, if you hurry, you can still get a Jai Rocket, a sensational flying rocket model, a Jai Rocket almost half a foot long, a Jai Rocket that streaks from your hand into the sky, up over the treetops. This Jai Rocket has a sleek, gleaming wooden body in brilliant red or blue or yellow. Slender and streamlined for minimum drag through the air. And the steel propeller at the business end of the rocket develops maximum thrust. That's not all. With your gyrocket, rocket, you get a metal launching rod plus a wooden rocket launcher. Right now, send for several gyrockets. rockets. Get a whole rocket fleet of the future. Then have thrill-a-minute games with your friends. Match your fleet against theirs for speed and distance. It's excitement. Plus, remember, this terrific offer is back in the air for a limited time only, while the new supply lasts. So don't get left out. For each gyrocket rocket you order, send 15 cents in a Kellogg's Pep box top to Superman, box 124, New York 8, New York. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket rocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, together with a dime and a nickel, and your name and address, clearly printed, to Superman, box 124, New York 8, New York. Do it today, sure. This offer is limited to the United States. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of Superman. Early the following morning, his modest but comfortable bungalow, police inspector William Henderson is at the breakfast table with his wife. Yes, Molly, if all goes well, I'll get the goods on my kicky today. That'll be the end of that crook and his dirty politicians in Metropolis. Oh, I hope so, Bill. I know how hard it's been for you uh... trying to do an honest job. All those grafters and gangsters around you. Uh, I wanted to quit many a time. I knew if I did, Hickey and the mayor would make one of their stooges police inspector, and it wouldn't be safe for the ordinary citizen to walk on our street. Ah, oh, you're a good man, Bill. <laughs> if I do say so myself, it shouldn't. Oh, go on. Uh-oh. <laughs> Don't oh. tell me we're getting company this early. Uh, must be the mailman. I'll go. Yes, the inspector. Why, yes, but I'll be glad to see me. But I... My Casino. What are you doing here? I come to see you like you told me to, Inspector. What are you talking about? I don't invite racketeers to my house. Now go on and feed it. Not so fast, Inspector. I brought this stuff. Look. Please. Wait, Molly. What? Hey, what are you dumping that money on my table for? Don't have to put on an act for me, Inspector. This is the cut you asked for. For laying off my shakedown racket in the food market. I asked for it. Why, you Bill, what does it mean? Oh, it's some kind of a trick, Molly. Now, look, Casino, I'll give you just one minute oh, to get... Come on in, boys. Come on in. 
We've got him with the goods. Mayor Hart. What are you doing here? Oh, so the honest Inspector Henderson is shaking down racketeers. Now, listen, I know. Oh. Oh, I get it now, Mr. Mayor. This is a frame-up. No, no, Inspector. Answer me. It is a frame-up, isn't it? That kind of talk won't do you any good, Henderson. Huh? We've got you called. All right, boys. Escort Mr. Henderson downtown. Oh, wait a minute. We'll relieve him of his badge at headquarters. Oh, dear. Dismayed. Helpless. Inspector Henderson and his wife can only stare as the leering mayor and his personal police detail close in. And a moment later, Henderson is on his way downtown. Framed as a thief and racketeer. This time, apparently, Mike Hickey's plot has worked. With Henderson out of the way, Hickey can ensure his victory against Reform Party candidate Perry White in the coming election. What will happen now? A great deal happens tomorrow. Exciting and surprising things. So be sure to listen. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for another thrilling chapter of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pet. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg Pep, the super serial. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, he's Kellogg Pep, the Super Serial. Super, as in Superman. Kellogg Pep, the Sunshine Serial. Kellogg Pep, the Super Serial presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, in the office of the city mayor, political boss Mike Hickey makes further plans against Superman's friends and all the innocent citizens of Metropolis. You did a nice job framing in police inspector Henderson, Andy. <laughs> a very nice job. That was your idea, Mike. Yeah. Now we need a new police inspector. One who'll take orders from us. Have you anyone in mind? Yeah. You, uh... You can tell the press you're appointing Joe Hatton as acting inspector. Joe Hatton? But didn't he once serve a jail term? So what? It was a long time ago. He's reformed. Yeah, I know, but a lot of people won't like that, Mike. Well, who cares what people like? I'm running this town, and I'm going to keep on running it. Joe Hatton will do as I say. And if you know what's good for you, you will, too. <laughs> Now, hang on tight to your chair, because excitement's about to break loose. Remember recently, Kellogg's Pep offered you a gyrocket, a sensational rocket model that flies and zooms and streaks from your hand. Well, the response was terrific. In fact, requests still poured in even after the closing date. So now we've reopened this offer temporarily. Right. We've rounded up some more gyrockets for you. So if you step lively, you can still get one while they last. Yes, sir. A gyrocket almost half a foot long. The rocket body is long, slim, and streamlined. Shaped of gleaming wood, red or yellow or blue, and with a steel propeller that packs maximum power. With your gyrocket, rocket, you get a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You launch it right from your hand. A flick of your arm and off it streaks high into the sky, up over the treetop. Notice, this gyrocket rocket is not a flimsy cardboard cutout, but rugged steel and wood. Built to take it for hundreds of launchings. But this terrific offer is back in the air for a limited time only, so don't miss out. Send for your gyrocket rocket today, right now. To get your gyrocket, rocket, send 15 cents and a Kellogg's Pep Box Stop to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket rocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, together with 15 cents, a dime and a nickel, and your name and address clearly printed to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. <laughs> And now, 
the adventures of Superman. When all his attempts to discredit Editor Perry White, candidate for mayor on a Reform Party ticket, were blocked by Clark Kent, who we know is really Superman, political boss Mike Hickey realized that his corrupt machine might lose the coming election. Alarmed, he ordered a gunman to kill White. But Hickey's killer was spotted in time and shot down by the police. Inspector Henderson and Clark Kent then accused Hickey of being behind the plot. But before the inspector could prove his charges, Hickey conspired with the mayor and a petty racketeer to frame Henderson and remove him from office. Now, the following morning at the Daily Planet, we find reporter Lois Lane and Clark Kent in Editor White's office. We've got to find some way to clear Henderson before Election Day. We've just got to. Election Day is only two weeks off, Chief. That's right. Well, we'll have to clear him before that. Now, Kent, I want you to get working on this at once. And you too, Lois. Okay, Chief. Get Tony Sloan and Sam French in on this, too. They're both crack reporters. Right. Tell them to drop everything else and concentrate on this story. Now, Kent, you see Henderson at once and find out all he knows. Right. One other thing I must do first. You know, what's that? Well, who are you calling? Andy Myers. What for? We've got to get the chief a new bodyguard. Are you kidding? He has a bodyguard, Clark. Inspector Henderson's man. That's right. Now, wait a minute. Joseph Hatton is the new inspector, and he's a hickey man. You don't think Hatton will protect Hickey's chief opponent, do you? Good heavens. I never thought of that. Oh. Hickey can make another try at you now, oh, chief. Oh, nonsense. Nonsense. Hickey wouldn't dare try anything like that again. Yeah, it says you... Hello, Candy. Yeah, this is Clark Kent. Okay. Listen, I... Yes, I know. That, that, that's why I called you. Uh-huh. I, I want you to assign a bodyguard for Mr. White. That's one. I don't need a bodyguard, I tell you. Good boy. Right. Thanks, Candy. So long. Now, listen, Kent. I'm not a baby. I know how to take I care know, of myself. I know, I know, I know. You know all about taking care of yourself, but you're in danger of your life. Hickey made two tries at you last night, and there's nothing to stop him from trying again. Well, now, look, Chief. I'm going to see Henderson. But I want your promise not to leave this office until Candy and his men arrive. Well, well... Oh, all right. I promise to see that he stays put until Candy gets here, Clark. Okay, Lois. I'll see you both later. <laughs> See, you're not in jail, Inspector. I will be, Kent. I think his party wins the election. Yeah, that'll give him a chance to go ahead with a frame trial. Then I'll really be a cook goose. Relax. We're going to clear you before the election. And use then the evidence of the frame to cook Hickey's goose. That's impossible, Kent. We'll see. Now, this, this casino that the racketeer Hickey sent to your house, what do you know about him? Oh, plenty. He runs a mob I've been after for a long time. Oh? Yeah, they operate a shakedown racket at the city market. You know, selling what they call protection to the merchants. That means the merchants kick in regularly with a fat fee for casinos' boys to last it on their fruits and vegetables. Hey, nice boy. Yeah. How does he get away with operating at the food market? Oh, easy. He splits his grant for the commissioner of markets, a hickey man. But you won't find casino there now, if that's what you have in mind. How do you know? Because I've checked. Oh. He's in the special custody of the DA, also a hickey man. Uh-oh. Which means nobody can get to him. Yeah. You see, hickey isn't taking any chances. Yeah, that kind of time he's just... Yeah, you're not kidding. Yeah. Look, Inspector. Hmm? Maybe we can get Hickey the way you started to, by proving the hire that, that he hired that gunman. Uh, what was his name? The pistol? Yeah. To get rid of Mr. White. Tell me how far you went, and I'll carry on for you. Oh, there. forget it, Kent. You can't get to first base on that angle without the cooperation of the police department. And Hickey Stooge, the new inspector, certainly isn't going to cooperate with you, do you think? No, hardly. But maybe there's no, some way No, no, to... no. I know what I'm talking about, Kent. No. I'm done for unless Perry White and the Reform Party licks Hickey's machine in the election. And frankly, with Joe Hatton, the new inspector of police... I'd say White and your reform party haven't a chance. Why do you say that, Inspector? Look, I don't want to scare you, Kent. But with me out, there's nobody to keep Mike Hickey in check. No, that's true. You think he's done plenty already, framing Joe Martin and me, trying to shoot Perry White? I'll take it from me. You haven't seen anything yet. Not anything. We find out that Inspector Henderson is right. As we hear fat political boss Mike Hickey in a private conference with a heavy set, star faced young man. You got everything organized, Lou? Boys already? Yeah, everything's all set, Mr. Hickey. <laughs> now get this. The lead goes off this town tonight, you understand? I want every citizen in Metropolis to realize that if they vote for Perry White and his reform party, if they even listen to one of their speakers, they're taking their lives in their hands. Is that clear? Yeah, plenty. Okay. Now go to it. Spread the word. What does Mike Hickey mean by these orders? We'll be back in a moment to find out in the startling climax of today's episode. 
So keep listening. Now, here's the biggest excitement scoop in years. Kellogg's Pep has reopened your gyrocket offer because so many thousand requests poured in after the original offer closed. So for a limited time only, you can still get a gyrocket, a terrific flying rocket model. Yes, sir, a gyrocket almost half a foot long that streaks from your hands, zooming into the sky up over the treetop. Your gyrocket has a slender wooden body in brilliant red or yellow or blue. It's streamlined and sleek. And a steel propeller at the stern loads the gyrocket with amazing thrust. Yet launching's a cinch. Because with your gyrocket, you get a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You hold the launching rod in your hand, flick your arm, and your gyrocket streaks up high into the sky. Now's the time to join the fun. Get several gyrockets. You can be captain of a whole rocket fleet of the future. Right. Then have thrilling contests with your friends. Trials for speed and accuracy and distance. Now listen carefully. For each gyrocket you want, today send 15 cents. And a box top from Kellogg's Pep to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. But you've got to act right now. This gyrocket offer is back on the air for a limited time only while the new supply lasts. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send the Kellogg's Pep box top together with 15 cents, a dime and a nickel, plus your name and address clearly printed to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. the adventures of Superman. Our scene is Metropolis Square that evening, where a large crowd of people is congregated around a sound truck. On the sides of the truck, emblazoned in huge letters, is the slogan, Vote Right with Perry White. Addressing the crowd from the tailboard of the truck through a public address microphone is Lois Lane, girl reporter. But when Hickey found that he couldn't stop us from printing the planet, he realized that he might lose the election. So he hired a gunman to kill Perry White. Fortunately, fortunately, Inspector Henderson's men stopped the gunman at Mr. White's window, and Henderson provided Mr. White with a police bodyguard. So, my Hickey's reply to that was to frame Henderson. And now, to stop everything, Hickey stooge mayor appoints Joe Hatton as police. Joe Hatton, a man who was on the force several years ago as a captain, and who was then prosecuted and sent to jail for withholding evidence in a murder case. That's the kind of a man Hickey and the mayor appointed inspector. How do you like that? Skirts of the crowd, Lou Evans, the heavy set, scar faced young man, raises his hand significantly to several husky, tough looking men near him, and then whistles shrilly. At the signal, some 50 men start moving through the crowd from every direction, pushing, slugging, swinging blackjacks, moving toward the sound truck and throw it lane. Screaming out, Lois Lane feels the huge truck upended by Hickey's ruffians and then overturned. And everything goes black for the girl reporter. A moment later, Hickey's goons disappear, leaving the unconscious Lois and several beaten, staggering citizens amid a scene of panic. This, then, is what Mike Hickey meant when he told his henchmen that the lid was off in Metropolis. And the people were to find out what it meant to defy a corrupt political boss. What has happened to Lois Lane? And what will happen to the reform movement? As Mike Hickey unleashes his all-out reign of terror, what will be Superman's answer to all this? We'll find out in tomorrow's thrilling episode of Ruler of Darkness. So don't fail to be with us then. Be sure to tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station, for more of the exciting adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Tap. For excitement... The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the Super Serial. This program came from New York.
Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, Heath Kellogg's pet, the Super Serial. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the Super Cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman and his guise of Clark Kent return to his apartment from a political meeting in the suburbs just in time to answer the urgent ringing of his telephone. Listen. Hello. Is this Mr. Clark Kent? Yes, who is this? This is the Metropolis Hospital. A young lady was just brought in here, Miss Lois Lane. Wait, Scott, what happened to her? I, 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 she... I don't know, sir. I was just told to call you. If but you I, come I... to the hospital, you'll be given all the information. I'll be there at once. Thank you. Great Scott. Looks like we sure started some excitement. Yes, sir. The minute we reopened that gyrocket offer. Absolutely. You remember a few weeks ago, Kellogg's Pep offered you a gyrocket. A sensational flying rocket model that streaks right from your hand high into the sky. Right. And requests poured in even after the closing date. So to give everybody a fair chance, now we've reopened the offer for a limited time only. So send for your gyrocket now. The supply may run out any time. Remember, this gyrocket is almost half a foot long and every inch businesslike. The streamlined body is sleek and slender, a brilliant blue or yellow or red. And the metal propeller at the stern of the rocket packs it with power. Right. And launching's a cinch, because you get a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. With a flick of your wrist, you can zoom the gyrocket into the air, up over the treetops. Now remember, this terrific offer is back in the air for a limited time only. So don't say we didn't warn you. To get your gyrocket, send 15 cents and a Kellogg's Pep Box Top to Superman. Box 124... New York 8, New York. Do it now or you'll miss out on the fun and excitement. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, the super serial, plus a dime and a nickel and your name and address clearly printed to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. <laughs> Adventures of Superman. Worried by the rapid growth of a reform party headed by editor Perry White, who was a candidate for mayor in the coming elections, Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss of Metropolis, took drastic steps to discredit White. Hickey also shut down the Daily Planet and even tried to have White shot. But Superman and Police Inspector Henderson foiled all of Hickey's moves. Desperate, Hickey and the mayor, one of his political henchmen, framed Inspector Henderson and had him removed from office. And in his place, they appointed one of their followers. Then, confident once more, Hickey said, Now we can go to town, boys. Now we can show the people that if they vote for Perry White and his reform crowd, they'll be taking their lives in their hands. You know what to do, boys. Hop to it. That night, Hickey's goon squad swept down on a political rally at which Lois Lane, Daily Planet reporter, was speaking. A short time later, Clark Kent and Perry White were summoned to the Metropolis Hospital and shown to a room in which Lois was propped up in bed, her left arm in a cast. Lois, what in the world what happened to you, Lois? Just a broken arm, Clark, and a few bruises. Just a broken arm? Oh, Pete's sake, what happened? Were you in an accident? No. A gang of ruffians showed up at my reform party rally in the square this evening. What? They were obviously a hickey goon squad, and one of their cute little tricks was to tip over the sound truck I was standing in. Tip it over? Oh, Caesar, what, 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 you might have been killed. Sure, and so might a lot of other people who were there. Twelve people were brought in here with me, Chief, I understand, because besides tipping over the truck, the strong arm boys worked the crowd over with brass knuckles and blackjack. Great. Well, where were the police, so why didn't they stop it? There wasn't one single police officer there, Chief. Hmm, naturally. Well, they're supposed to be on hand at all political meetings. Where were they? Oh, now, look, Chief. Joe Hatton, Mike Hickey Stooge, is our new police inspector. You don't expect him to protect our meetings, do you? Of course not. Oh, this is too much. Jim Olsen just gets out of the hospital where Hickey's goons put him. And now, now Lois goes to the hospital. Well, this is Hickey's warning to the people to stay away from our reform party meetings and from the polls on election day unless they want their heads broken. But that's virtually removing the power of the law. Yes. Hickey is no better than, than Hitler. 
He's saying vote for my party or don't vote at all. Exactly, Lois. Well, now, do you see what happens when people are either too lazy or too busy making money to make sure only honest men are elected to office? Gangsters like my Kiki take over a city, and then they just try and get rid of them. Don't you worry, Chief. We are going to get rid of him. Well, how? That's what I'd like to know. So would I. You'll find out, and so will my Kiki. So long, everybody. I'll see you later. Hurrying from Lois Lane's hospital room, Clark Kent steps into a deserted stair hall and swiftly resumes his true identity of Superman. A few moments later, a tall, broad-shouldered figure in the familiar blue costume and crimson cape enters the office of Hubert Mason, manager of the United Broadcasting Company. Good evening, Mr. Mason. Good heaven! Superman! That's right, sir. I come to ask a favor of you. Uh, of course, anything I can do. Thank you. I'd like your permission to make an announcement over the air. In return, I can offer you a terrific scoop for your next news broadcast. What do you say? Why, well, this is most unusual, but... Well... All right, Superman, if you say so, just come this way. Stand by, please. Okay, Superman, you're on the air. Citizens of Metropolis, this is Superman speaking to you. It is no secret that your city is in the hands of an evil and corrupt political machine, controlled by a ruthless dictator whom you know. Now, this man, speaking through his newly appointed inspector of police, has threatened to keep you from exercising your rights as free Americans to meet in open assembly and to cast your votes for candidates of your own choice. He has threatened that if you attempt to exercise your rights, his gangster followers will attack you and that your own police force will not protect you. Now listen, please, to my answer to my kicking. And my promise to you... Holy smoke, be quiet, Andy. I want to hear this. ...that his Hitler tactics will not succeed in Metropolis. And I warn him to quit before it is too late. And to you, citizens of Metropolis, I say go on, attend your political meetings and rallies. Go to the polls on election day and vote for the candidates of your choice. Turn the radio I off, you, Andy. That no harm will come to you. Good grief, Mike. This is terrible. Now, what do we do? What a stupid fool you are, Andy. You don't really believe that was Superman, do you? Well, he said so. You mean you don't think it was? Of course not. This is a trick by Perry White and Clark Kent to try to scare me. My kicky. <laughs> Those chumps must think I was born yesterday. Well, what about the people? They'll believe it was Superman, that he'll protect them somehow. They'll learn better tomorrow night if they dare to show up at any other neighborhood rallies run by White's Reform Party. We turn 50 tough boys loose on them tonight. We'll turn a hundred loose tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, boy. When we break another couple of hundred sick heads in this town, the people will know I mean business. They won't go to the polls on election day except the ones we know, and they'll vote for us. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> Is that a joke? <laughs> <laughs> Certain it was not really Superman who had defied him on the radio, Mike Hickey prepares to redouble his efforts to intimidate the voters of Metropolis. We'll be back in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode, so keep listening. Now decide quick how many thrills you can take, because Kellogg's Pep has reopened your gyrocket offer for a limited time only. Yes, sir. We're taking care of the thousands of requests that came in postmarked after the original offer closed. But now, to give everybody a fair chance, this well offer of Gyrockets is opened again. Remember, this Gyrocket is a terrific flying rocket model. A Gyrocket you can launch right from your hand. A Gyrocket almost half a foot long that you zoom into the sky, up over the treetops. Listen to this. The Gyrocket has a sleek, streamlined wooden body. Brilliant red or yellow or blue. At the stern of the rocket, a steel propeller develops maximum thrust. A flick of your wrist, and off it soars, streaking into the sky. Remember, the Gyrocket is not a flimsy cardboard cutout, but a solid steel and wood body, sturdy enough for hundreds of launching. And it comes complete with a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. Get in on the excitement right now. Send for several Gyrockets. Right. Then have thrilling contests with your friends. Test for distance and speed and spot landing. Now listen, for each Gyrocket you want, send 15 cents and a Kellogg's Pep Box Top to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Remember, this offer is back on the air for a limited time only, so act now. Because you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, plus a dime and a nickel, together with your name and address, clearly printed, to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Do it now. This offer is limited to the United States. <laughs> Now, back 
to the adventures of Superman. It is the following night in Metropolis. Three miles high in the air, Superman hovers in curious flight. The huge city of lights and shadows a clear pattern below him as his sharp eyes shift constantly from one to another of ten focal points in the city. Each the center of an important reform party rally. Suddenly, he stiffens. Uh-oh. Looks like trouble at that meeting in Lincoln Square. Away! My kitty, I mean business. But if it doesn't, then he wants more convincing. Uh, wait a minute. Looks like trouble at that rally in Metropolis Park. Away! This is your radio reporter again with more news about Superman. Superman has just dispersed another gang of hoodlums who attempted to break up a reform party meeting in Metropolis Park. We return you now to... One moment, please. I have just been handed another report. At least 20 men, armed with blackjacks, attacked a reform party rally at First Street and Elm a few moments ago. But they quickly fled from the scene when Superman dropped down on them from the sky. It appears that Superman is being... Now, look here, Mike. This is getting bad. Very bad. All right, all right. He says our boys are beaten up and scared stiff of Superman. Now, what are we going to do? Shut up, Andy. I'm trying to think. Okay. No, you were sure it wasn't Superman on the radio last night. Pipe down. We've got to come up with something fast now. I will be snowed under at the election. Now, don't I know it? I. Wait. <laughs> I've got it. What have you got this time? I just figured out a way to stop Superman and Perry White and Clark Kent. In fact, the whole pack of them. <laughs> I've got a trick up my sleeve that'll stop even Superman. And the elections will be in the bag for us. His fat, heavy jowled face gleaming with triumph, boss Mike Hickey says he knows how to stop Superman and win the election. What does he mean? There's a thrill a minute and a shocking surprise in tomorrow's exciting episode. So be sure to listen. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 21 of Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, alone with his chief henchman, city mayor Andrew High, political boss Mike Hickey makes a mysterious threat against Superman and his friends. Andy, I told you to stop worrying. Everything's going to be fine and dandy. How can it be, Mike, with Superman backing up the reform party? Forget Superman. I tell you, we'll win the election hands down. I don't see how, Mike. Why, the whole city will turn out to vote against us now that Superman said he'd protect them at the polls. Relax, Andy, relax. I've got something up my sleeve that'll take care of everything. But everything. Really? Well, what is it? Never mind, Andy. Just remember what I told you. We'll win the election. Just wait and see. Hey, get a good grip on your chair and prepare for thrills. Because Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, has reopened that sensational gyrocket offer for a limited time only. Right, because requests are still coming in long after the recent offer closed. So now we're giving everyone a fair chance. 
We've reopened this terrific offer so all of you can get a gyrocket. A real flying rocket model. Yes, sir. A gyrocket that streaks right from your hand. A gyrocket almost half a foot long that you launch to zoom into the sky up over the treetop. A gyrocket with a sleek, gleaming wood body. Brilliant red or blue or yellow. At the stern of the rocket, a steel propeller develops maximum thrust. Yet launching descent because you get a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You hold the launching rod in your hand. You flick your arm and off the rocket soars. Get in on the excitement today. Send for several gyrockets. Then have thrilling contests with your friends. Race your rocket fleet against theirs. But be sure you send for your gyrocket right away. This terrific offer is back in the air for a limited time only, so get yours now. Here's all you do. For each gyrocket you order, send 15 cents and a Kellogg's Pep Box Top to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, plus a diamond and nickel and your name and address clearly printed to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. Facing defeat by editor Perry White's reform party in the coming election, Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss of Metropolis, set out to terrify the voters and scare them away from the polls on election day. While the new police inspector appointed by Hickey kept the police away, gangs of hoodlums armed with blackjacks attacked Reform Party rallies. But to their unpleasant surprise, Superman appeared each time, fought them off, and sent them scurrying away. Then, in a radio address, Superman publicly condemned Mike Hickey and promised to give personal protection to all voters on election day. At Reform Party headquarters the next morning, editor Perry White, candidate for mayor, and reporters Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen were jubilant. Only Clark Kent who, unknown to all, is Superman, failed to join the festivity. Ah, yes, sir. It's all over with the shouting. Mike Hickey can have his new police inspector suit. We've got Superman on our side. Yeah, <laughs> man, the elections are in the bag. Let me be the first to congratulate yeah. you, Mr. White. Yeah, right. I mean, Mr. Mayor. Or wait, do we say your honor now? Of course, Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, one and all. <laughs> say, you haven't congratulated our new mayor yet, Mr. Kent. I'll congratulate him. When he's elected, Jim. Why, he's as good as elected right now. I'm not so sure. What? Uh -huh. You all seem to be forgetting an individual named Mike Hickey. What about him? Well, he's not licked yet. Hickey is cunning, tough, and unpredictable. He realizes if he loses this election, he'll go to the penitentiary. I'm afraid he won't stop at anything. Well, Kent, the elections are now just five days off. Still worried about Mike Hickey? You bet I am, Chief. More than ever. Well, tomorrow's election day, Kent. And there hasn't been a peep out of Hickey so far. What have you got to say now? Just that I wish this were the day after tomorrow and the elections were over. I still think Hickey will try something, Chief. Oh, and if he's as smart as you say he is, he'll try to get lost before the votes are counted. Yes, sir. There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. <laughs> Mike Hickey's headquarters, an air of deep gloom prevailed. In the long, smoke-filled room, ward healers and political hangers-on stand about silently, scowling at each other. Suddenly, Mike Hickey enters. A low buzz of surprise runs through the room as Hickey, his moon-like, heavy-jowled face spread in a wide grin, hums gaily and offers jovial greetings to his supporters. Hiya, Frankie. Hiya, Frankie. How you doing, Mort? Hi, Hey, uh, what gives around here? Cheer up, cheer up. <laughs> you all look like you're at a wake. Come on, Punchy, put a smile on your face. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with all of you? Is the world coming to an end or something? Well, maybe it might just as well after tomorrow, boss. Oh, so that's it, eh? <laughs> you think we're going to lose the election, huh? Well, the papers say how the reform party's going to win by a landslide. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. That's Superman. He's done his dirt. <laughs> Don't worry about Superman. Mike Hickey talking. The mayor, put him on. Hello, Andy, what's in your mind? <laughs> yeah, I've just been hearing about the papers. Don't tell me you believe them, too. <laughs> huh? well, listen, didn't I tell you two weeks ago we had the election in the bag? Sure, I still say so. We'll win easy. Hey, Harry, you hear that, huh? Yeah, you must have drank too much beer. Never mind how, Andy. All you got to know is you're staying in City Hall a long time yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? 
Just be sure to stay close to your radio tonight and you will hear something. Something awful good. <laughs> right. So long. Here, take the phone away, Puncher. Yeah, yeah, okay, boss. Hey, listen, do you mean it? I mean it. We're going to win tomorrow, do you, huh? You bet your bottom dollar I mean it. Yes, sir, all these wise guys who think my kicky is done for in this town are going to get a big surprise. <laughs> yeah, a big surprise. Come on, Punchy, smile. <laughs> smile. <laughs> Mike Hickey's followers stare at him in wonder. Unable to understand his confidence, Clark Kent and Perry White have gone from their political headquarters to the Daily Planet's temporary offices in nearby Willow Falls. There, Kent has found a new reason for concern. You sure you didn't see or hear from Jim this morning, Chief? I just told you I didn't, Kent. That's strange. I wonder where he is. Well, the chances are he stopped off at campaign headquarters. We just came from campaign headquarters and Jim wasn't there, so where do you Great think... Great, Kent. You do more fretting about Olsen than a mother hen over her chicks. Now, listen, I want to get this... Hello? Oh, Mrs. Olsen. Yes, I was just going to call you. Did Jim leave? What? What did you say? What's the matter, Kent? He didn't, but... But I... What is it? Just a moment, Chief. Why, no, no, I I thought... Oh, no, 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 wait, Mrs. Olsen, don't get excited. No, I'm sure everything's all right. Yes, I will. I'll look into it and call you right back. Of course I will. Goodbye. Kent, you're as pale as a ghost. What happened? That was Jim's mother. I know it was Jim's mother, but what did she say? She says she spent last night with her sister, who isn't well. She just got home and discovered that Jim's bed wasn't even slept in last night. What? Yeah. Apparently, he left the house last night and... And he never came back. What has happened to the young cub reporter? We'll be back in a moment to find out in the startling climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Say, everywhere you go, you hear the exciting word. Yes, the word that Kellogg's Pep has reopened the thrilling gyrocket offer for a limited time more. Correct. So many requests poured in after the closing date of the original offer that we wanted you all to have a fair chance. We've reopened this offer temporarily so everyone can get a gyrocket. The sensational flying rocket model. That's a fact. A gyrocket rocket that streaks right out of your hand, high into the sky. Think of it, a gyrocket rocket almost half a foot long, with a slender, streamlined body of sturdy wood, brilliant red or blue or yellow. And get this, at the stern of your gyrocket, rocket, a steel propeller packs your gyrocket rocket with power. Yet launching's a sin. For with your gyrocket, rocket, you get a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You just hold the rod in your hand, flick your arm, and the gyrocket rocket streaks into the air, higher and higher, up over the treetops. Every launching's a brand new thrill. Send for several gyrockets rockets today. You could be captain of a whole rocket fleet of the future. Then you're set for speed and distance contests with your friends. But you've got to act right now. Because this offer is back in the air for a limited time only. So for each gyrocket rocket you order, send a Kellogg's Pep Box Top plus 15 cents to Superman. Box 1, 2, 4, New York 8, New York. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket rocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep. Plus a dime and a nickel, and your name and address, clearly printed, to Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. It is late afternoon in the Daily Planet's temporary offices in Willow Falls. All day, the election's forgotten. Our friends have been searching frantically for the missing Jimmy Olsen. Clark Kent and his own true identity of Superman is still searching. Editor Perry White and Lois Lane are alone in White's office when the phone rings. Oh, I'll take it, Chief. I got it, Lois. Hello, Perry White speaking. Hello, Mr. White. This is Jim. Jim? Yeah. Jimmy? Is that Jimmy, Chief? Yes. Uh, Listen, boy, you had us scared out of our wits. Where are you? What happened? I can't talk long, Chief. But listen, whatever they tell you, don't do it. Understand? I don't care what happens to me. What, what are you talking about, Jim? Jim! What is it, Chief? He stopped talking. Jim! Hello, Mr. White. Well, who's this? Where's Jim Olsen? Hold the receiver so I can Olsen's hear. Olsen's right here with us. Well, who are you? Shut up and listen. If you want to see Jim Olsen again alive, get on the radio before 11 o'clock tonight and announce your withdrawal as candidate for mayor. You got that? What? Now, listen, mister, whoever you are... Just do as you're told, Mr. White. Get on the radio before 11 o'clock and announce you're no longer a candidate for mayor. If you don't do it, 
by 11 o'clock, Jim Olsen is finished. <laughs> Stunned, Perry White can only sit at his desk, the dead phone in his trembling hand, while Lois Lane, equally stunned, stares at him, her eyes wide with shock. This, apparently, was the reason for Mike Hickey's surprising confidence about the results of tomorrow's election. What will Perry White do? And what will Superman do when he learns of this startling new development? We'll know on Monday, gang. So for thrills, action, and suspense, don't miss Monday's episode of Ruler of Darkness. Be sure to tune in again on Monday. Same time, same station, for more of the exciting Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, as Superman searches vainly for cub reporter Jimmy Olsen, who has mysteriously disappeared, editor Perry White, candidate for mayor, receives a startling telephone call from an unknown man. Do you mind telling me who you are? That doesn't matter. But get this, Mr. White. You've got till 11 o'clock tonight to get to a radio station and announce that you're withdrawing as candidate for mayor in tomorrow's election. If you don't withdraw your candidacy by then... You'll never again see Jim Olsen alive. Yes, sir, an avalanche of excitement. That's what we started when we reopened our Gyrocket offer. A terrific flying rocket model that streaks right from your hand. Correct. A Gyrocket that thousands and thousands have already ordered from Kellogg's Pep. And now thousands more are sending for another and another. So to satisfy all these requests, We've reopened this sensational offer for a limited time only. And you can still get a gyrocket. Right, a gyrocket you can launch right out of your hand, high into the air, up over the treetop. A gyrocket almost half a foot long, shaped of gleaming wood, streamlined to the last inch, brilliant red or blue or yellow. Plus the steel propeller at the stern that bites into the air, driving your gyrocket like a flash into the sky. And it comes complete with a metal launching rod plus a wooden rocket launcher. Remember, this gyrocket is not a flimsy cardboard cutout, but a model of rugged steel and wood, built to take it for hundreds of launchings. But you've got to act now, because we've been able to round up only a limited number of gyrockets to reopen this offer. So don't get left out of the excitement. For each gyrocket you want, just mail 15 cents and a Kellogg's Pep box top to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Don't delay. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, plus a dime and a nickel and your name and address clearly printed to Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. <laughs> When political boss Mike Hickey's vicious political rule was endangered by a reform party headed by editor Perry White, who is running for mayor of Metropolis, Hickey tried every underhanded trick he knew to crush his opponent. But Superman blocked every Hickey move. And on the eve of election day, it appeared certain that Perry White's reform party would win an overwhelming victory. Hickey knew he would go to the penitentiary if he lost his political power. But he assured his anxious henchmen that he still held a winning card. That night... Young Jimmy Olsen, cub reporter, disappeared. As we continue now, Superman, following a vain search for Jimmy, has returned to the Daily Planet in his guise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered and bespectacled reporter. It's fairly 
fairly plain, Chief, that Mike Hickey is behind this. He had Jim taken somewhere, and now he's using the boy as a as a lever to force you to withdraw from the mayoralty race. Good heavens. Do you really think Hickey would go that no, far? No, of course he would. So what time is it? Oh, it's... Let's see, it's almost 7 o'clock. Well, that fellow on the phone told me if I didn't withdraw as a candidate by 11, Jim would be finished. Oh, dear. What can we do? Only one thing. I've got to withdraw from the race. Oh, no, Chief, you can't. There's too much at stake in this election. I know, I know. But you don't expect me to stand by and see harm done to Jim, do you? No, of course not. Now, don't worry. Nothing will happen to Jim. I'll personally see to that. You will? Yes. But what can you do, Clark? Well, I'm pretty sure I can make Hickey produce Jim and fast. Oh, you must be out of your mind. Lois. You call Candy Myers. Call the FBI. Call... No, wait, Kent. Where are you going? See my kick. No, Clark, don't. You'll get hurt. Kent, come back here. I will soon, but not without Jim. Hurrying from Perry White's office, Clark Kent secretly resumes his true identity of Superman and streaks to Mike Hickey's political headquarters. Failing to find the fat political boss there, he hurtles to Hickey's home, only to draw a blank again. Then, once more, he takes to the skyways. And as we rejoin him now, he is at the home of Andrew High, mayor of Metropolis, and Mike Hickey's henchman. Where is Mike Hickey, Mr. Mayor? I, I don't know, Superman. I think you do. And I advise you to tell me the truth. Why, what do you mean? You know Mike Hickey is holding Jim Olsen that one of Hickey's men called Perry White a little while ago to say Jim would be killed unless Mr. White withdrew from tomorrow's election. Good heavens, I... I can't believe. I can't understand. Stop what... acting and tell me where he is. Now, see here, you can't talk to me that way. How would you expect anyone to talk to a man who swears to be an honest mayor and then sells out the city to a crooked political boss? Now, you see here... We're wasting time. I want Hickey and I want him fast. Now, where is he? I tell you, I don't know. I don't believe you. Hickey's housekeeper said he was having dinner with you. So speak up now he, or... He did have dinner with me, but he, he left about half an hour ago. Where did he go? I don't know. He didn't tell me. Who else was here at dinner? Uh, Inspector Haddon. Oh. Well, he's the man I want to see, then. But first, just one thing more, Mr. Mayor. If you should see or talk to Mike Hickey, tell him this. That unless he produces Jim Olsen quickly and uninjured, he'll be the sorriest man alive. Think hard, Inspector. Are you quite sure Mike Hickey didn't tell you where he was going after you and he left the mayor's house this evening? I'm sure he didn't, Superman. He dropped me off at the air's headquarters and went on in his car. Well, he didn't go to his home. He didn't go to his office. He didn't go to City Hall. Where else could he have gone? How would I know? Am I his keeper? Maybe not, but I'm going to make you his keeper to save your own skin. What are you talking about? I'll draw you a diagram. Mike Hickey is holding Jim Olsen. You're I want you crazy. to... Crazy! Up... Mike wouldn't do a thing like that. Don't try to kid me, Inspector. He'll do anything to stay in power, even murder, as you know very now, well. Now, look here! I want you to bring him I in. I will not. Who do you think you're talking bring to? Bring him in, Inspector. Or so help me, I'll take you ten miles up in the air and keep you there until you do. You you wouldn't dare try anything like that. I'll show you how wrong you are right now. Up sure. with no, you. no, let, let go of me, let go. I, I can't bring Mike in. I, I don't know where he is. I think you know where to look for him. But if you don't, you've got 2,000 police officers to help you find him. But look here. Put out a general alarm for Hickey and for Jim Olsen. I want one or both of them brought in before 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> Nine o'clock already, I know, Lois, I know. And where's Kent? Only two hours left to go, and still we don't hear from him. I'm sure he's doing all he can, but he's... Oh, oh here Clark. he is now. Oh, Clark, you well, not... Kent? No, not yet. No luck at all. I can't find Hickey anywhere. Oh, dear, that's bad. I knew it. Hickey planned this too well, so now we're late. Maybe not, Chief. I've had Inspector Hatton put out a general alarm for Hickey. If he brings him in, I promise I'll find Jim. Oh, forget it. Hatton won't bring him in. He's Hickey's suit. Why, of course. Certainly he won't do I know, I know. Him. But maybe to save his own skin, he'll... Not a chance, Kent. Not a chance. We'll wait one more hour. Then we'll go over to the radio studio and I, I'll withdraw from the race. No, Chief. It's the only thing we can do to save Jim's life. One more hour. What will happen? We'll be back in a moment with the dramatic climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Say the word spreading like wildfire. Yes, the exciting word that Kellogg's Pep has reopened the Gyrocket offer. Right. After the original offer closed a few weeks ago, requests for these Gyrockets still kept pouring in. So now we've reopened this offer to give everybody a fair chance. And for a limited time only, you can still get a Gyrocket. A sensational flying rocket model that streaks right from your hand high into the air. A Gyrocket almost half a foot long with a gleaming wood body, red or blue or yellow... 
slender and streamlined to the last inch. At the power end is a steel propeller designed for rotational thrust. Yet launching's a cinch because your gyrocket comes complete with a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You just hold the launching rod in your hand, flick your arm, and your gyrocket zooms off up over the treetops. Get in on the fun right away. Then for several gyrockets. Get a whole rocket fleet of the future. Right. Then challenge your friends to distance and speed contests. Race your fleet against theirs. But this gyrocket offer is back in the air for a limited time only. So get yours right now while we still have a supply. For each gyrocket you order, send 15 cents in a box shop from Kellogg's Pep to Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, together with a dime and a nickel, and your name and address, clearly printed, to Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. <laughs> the adventures of Superman. On the second floor of a boarded-up abandoned riding stable that faces on a dark alley, boss Mike Hickey sits, smoking a cigar, a leering smile on his fat, heavy-jowled face. His companion, Pete Evans, is a heavy-shouldered, powerfully built young man who wears a mask across the upper half of his swarthy face. Near them is a closed door. On the dirty floor across the room, a portable radio plays softly. Uh, half past nine, Mr. Hickey. That guy White sure is taking his time about quitting. Yes. But he'll withdraw from his candidacy before 11 o'clock, Pete. <laughs> you can count on that. Oh, I hope you're right. I don't like this kind of stuff. It's a federal rap, you know. Not even you can fix that. Yeah, don't worry. As soon as White makes his little announcement, you can drive Olsen out someplace and turn him loose. You've worn a mask all the time, so he won't be able to identify you. And he's never seen me, so... <laughs> Everything will be fine. Uh, maybe. But you never can tell. I'd feel a lot better if we, uh, you know, fought them off. Uh, that wouldn't be smart. If you did that, he... Can we... What's that? Uh, it's only Austin trying to get loose and get the gag out of his mouth. He'll get tired soon. Oh. <laughs> you know, Pete, White and Clark Kent and their reform crowd thought they had me over the barrel. Yeah. Even their own boys were ready to throw in the sponge and run. But I told them I'd find a way to win the election tomorrow. <laughs> and I have. <laughs> You're sure White will quit, huh? I was never more sure of anything in my life. White loves this Olsen kid like a son. He won't want to see anything happen to him. Hey, what? Why, he... Who opened Olsen's door? I'll see. Hey, son of a stuff, Mr. Hickey, pumping against There ain't no lock on it. Well, shut up, you fool! Uh-oh. Look. He sees me. You were able to identify me. Yeah, that dirty little... Shut up. You know, Olsen, that was a dumb thing to do because uh, we were going to let you go after Perry White announced his withdrawal from the election. But now it's different. Uh, I'm afraid Pete here will have to get rid of you. Yeah. And I'll do it right now. <laughs> Drawing his gun, Pete stares for a moment at Jimmy Olsen, who, bound and gagged, lies helplessly on the floor, his eyes bright with defiance. Superman knows that Jimmy is in Mike Hickey's hands, but so far he has been unable to trace the political boss. How can he manage to find the young reporter before boss Mike Hickey's order to kill is carried out? There are thrills, excitement, and a big surprise in tomorrow's suspenseful episode, so be sure to listen. Yes, tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for another chapter of... Ruler of Darkness on The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super serial. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super serial. Super as in Superman. 
Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, with Superman still unable to find him, cub reporter Jimmy Olsen lies bound and gagged in an abandoned stable as he hears Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss of Metropolis, pronounce his doom. I was going to turn you loose, Olsen, after Perry White withdrew as candidate for mayor. But now that you've seen me and can identify me, that won't do. So, Pete here... Yeah, yeah boss? We'll have to... Take care of you. Yeah, yeah. I'll take care of him, all right, Mr. Hickey. Right now. Say, if you like thrills by the double handful, deal yourself some gyrocket thrills. You remember a few weeks ago, Kellogg's Pep offered you a gyrocket, a flying rocket model that streaks right from your hand. Well, even after the offer closed, requests are still flooding our mail. And now we've reopened this offer for a limited time more. Meaning, if you act right now, you can get your gyrocket. Think of it. A gyrocket almost half a foot long with a sleek, slender body made of gleaming wood in brilliant red or blue or yellow. And get this. Your gyrocket has a steel propeller at the stern. A propeller that sends it biting into the air, up over the treetops. What's more, this gyrocket comes complete with a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You just hold it in your hand, flick your arm, and your gyrocket shoots up, flashing into the sky. Remember, this gyrocket is not a flimsy cardboard cutout, but solid steel and wood, built for hundreds of launchings. Then for several today, because these gyrockets make perfect Christmas presents to give your friends at school and in your crowd. But notice... This offer is back on the air for a limited time only. So for each gyrocket you want, today send 15 cents and a box top from Kellogg's Pep to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. Don't forget, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal, plus a dime and a nickel and your name and address clearly printed to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. On the eve of the mayoralty elections in Metropolis, Mike Hickey, boss of the vicious political machine which has ruled the city for years, realized that he and his henchmen were about to be swept out of power by a reform party. Spearheaded by editor Perry White and Clark Kent, who is really Superman. If this happened, Hickey knew, he would be tried for his crimes and sent to the penitentiary. In a desperate move to save his power and his freedom, the crafty Hickey abducted Jimmy Olsen, cub reporter on White's newspaper. While Superman searched for Hickey and Jimmy, the young reporter was bound and gagged in an abandoned riding stable. Attempting to free himself, Jimmy bumped against an unlocked door and rolled into the room where Hickey waited with his henchman, Pete. Enraged, the fat political boss leaped to his feet, overturning a portable radio which had been playing softly, and voiced a sudden change of plans. Listen. You're a stupid little fool, Olsen. Now you've seen me and identify me. That means I can't let you live. I'll take care of him right now. Wait, Mr. Pete. Wait. Put that gun down. Yeah, but Mr. Hickey, you said... You want all the neighbors and the cops to come barging in? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a way to do it without making any noise. Hold it, Pete. I... Hold it. Hold it. I don't want to be around when you do this job. You see, I always make it a practice to be somewhere else when there's any rough stuff, so I can't be tied up with it. Pull the boy back in the other room and come back here. You can do away with him after I leave. Yeah, but... Do as I say and hurry up. Okay, okay. What... What happened to the radio? It's not going. Well, I must have turned off when you tipped it over. How do you like that? Harry White must have been on the air while this thing was turned off. Mm, they're playing music. He's not on the air now. Bastard, we might have missed him. Pete! Yeah? Is this phone connected? Yeah, I had it hooked up the other tail, like you said. Good. Why are you calling, Mr. Hickey? The mayor. 
He'll know if White resigned yet, as we ordered him to. Ah, he ought to know, I guess. Hello? That's you, Andy? Mike Hickey. Listen, my radio was off for a minute or two. Did White go on the air and withdraw his candidacy yet? Oh, he didn't, huh? Well, he will. What? What's that? Superman's looking for me? Superman? <laughs> he made Inspector Hatton put out a general alarm for me? <laughs> what? Well, don't worry, Andy. <clears throat> Hatton and I understand each other. Superman will never find me. Yeah, you just sit tight. You don't know anything about Jim Olsen's disappearance or where I am or anything else. So get it? That's right. You don't know from nothing. <clears throat> yeah. Good night, Andy. Pete. Yeah, boss? See, it's just uh, three minutes to ten. We gave White until eleven o'clock to withdraw his candidacy. Give him another ring, just to remind him we're not kidding. Okay. Then as soon as he goes in the air, I'll leave. And uh, you can take care of Oates. <laughs> time is it now, Lois? It's, uh, two minutes to ten, Chief. Uh, no word from the FBI yet or Candy Myers or the police. Did Ken get back? No, not yet. He's still out looking. Uh, I'm afraid Hickey's too much for us, Lois. We don't know how to fight a man who'll stoop to anything to gain his end. Well, maybe. But we're not licked yet, Chief. We've still got one hour. Oh, we'll wait. We'll wait till the last possible minute, of course. But uh, wait, wait a minute now. Uh, maybe this is good news. Oh, I hope. Very wise speaking. I've only got an hour left, White. Oh, it's you again. Who is it, Chief? Yeah, it's me. I'm just calling to remind you. You want to see Jim Olsen alive again, get to a radio station before 11 o'clock and announce you're withdrawn as candidate for mayor. Go on. Wait, listen. Chief, who is it? Quiet, Lois. Listen. Yeah? If, if I do as you say, do you guarantee nothing will happen to Jim? Sure, Mr. White. Sure. But if you don't, well, you know, so long. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Hello. 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 Oh, he hung up. Was that the man who who has Jim? Yes. He called to remind me I had only until 11 o'clock. After that, Jim would be... Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, I can't think of a thing, Lois, but to give up. Come on. Where? To the United Broadcasting Company studio. We've got to be there before 11 o'clock. Her eyes blurred with tears. Lois Lane starts with Perry White for the broadcasting studio, where the gray-haired editor must bow to the demands of boss Mike Hickey to save the life of Jimmy Olsen. We'll be back in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode, so keep listening. Say, here's where your thrill department works overtime. Because that gyrocket offer is back on the air temporarily. Right. For many thousands sent in requests after the original offer closed, that Kellogg Step has reopened the offer for a limited time only. Yes, sir. Right now, if you hurry, you can still get a gyrocket, a sensational flying rocket model, a gyrocket almost half a foot long, a gyrocket that streaks from your hand into the sky, up over the treetops. This gyrocket has a sleek, gleaming wooden body in brilliant red or blue or yellow, slender and streamlined for minimum drag through the air. And the steel propeller at the business end of the rocket develops maximum thrust. That's not all. With your gyrocket, you get a metal launching rod plus a wooden rocket launcher. Right now, send for several gyrockets. Here's your chance to get Christmas presents for friends in your crowd. Yes, give them a present loaded with thrills, a gyrocket. Remember, this terrific offer is back in the air for a limited time only while the new supply lasts. So don't get left out. For each gyrocket you order, send 15 cents and a Kellogg's Pep box top to Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep. The Super Serial, together with a dime and a nickel, and your name and address, clearly printed, to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. 
Do it today, sure. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In the northwest section of Metropolis, in an apartment occupied by a family named Davis, the twins, Donald and Buddy, aged 12, are preparing for bed. Oh, boy, I can't wait till tomorrow when the scout troop goes on that hike, Buddy. <sighs> Me either. You know, Don, I wish I was old enough to vote in the election. I'd vote for Mr. White for mayor, like Dad and Mom are gonna do. Yeah, me too. That my kick, he's no good. No, sir. Hey, Superman showed him where to get off road, didn't he? You said it. Gee, I wish I could get to see Superman sometime. Me too. Hey, uh, you know, I... Are in bed yet? Oh, just about, Dad. We will be in a minute. Well, you'd better be if you want to go on the boys' scout hike tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Dad. Good night. It's your turn to open the window and turn off the light tonight, buddy. And I get to sleep in the upper bunk. Go on, you slept there last night. I did not. You did. It's written down right here in the record book, see? Okay, you win. Go on, buddy, open the window. I will, I will. Are the stars out? Uh-huh. Want to be a good day for the hike tomorrow. Oh, that's well. Hey, what are you standing at the window for, buddy? You better get to bed. Don, come here. Quick. What for? Come here, I tell you. Hurry up. Oh, no. You just want me to get out of bed so you can grab the upper bunk. No, I don't, honest. Something funny going on. Please come here. Well, hurry up, will you? Okay, I'm coming. What is it? Look out there. Down the alley. See? See what? Oh, not that way, Dopey. Over there. Now do you see? You mean those lights? It's just one light going off and on. I think it's a flashlight. And it's in the upstairs window. Somebody must be in the old riding stable. Gosh, it is in the old stable. Gee, you think a burglar got in there? Oh, what would a burglar want in that old stable? There's not a thing in it. I know, but... Don't... Well, I think those are signals. Signal? Uh-huh. Look. Dot... Dot dash. Long dash. Dot. Dot. Gosh. The Morse code. Yeah, but... But who could be in that old stable? And sending out messages in Morse code. Gee, I don't know. Wait. Let's see if we can spell out the message. Hearing from their window, Don and Buddy Davis try to decipher what they believe is a Morse code signal from the supposedly abandoned stable down the alley. As we know, Jimmy Olsen is a prisoner there, bound hand and foot, gagged and marked for death. And his captors are political boss Mike Hickey and Pete, his henchman. So is that a signal from the stable? And if so, who could be sending it? And at this moment, Perry White and Lois Lane are arriving at the United Broadcasting Studios where White intends to resign his candidacy for mayor in a radio address. What will happen? There's a thrill a minute in tomorrow's smashing climax of this story, Ruler of Darkness. So whatever you do, don't miss it. Be sure to tune in, same time, same station, for more exciting action in The Adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Today, eat Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. Super, as in Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Superman, unable to find Jimmy Olsen, who 
has been condemned to death by political boss Mike Hickey, returns to the Daily Planet in his guise of Clark Kent and receives an amazing telephone call. Hello? Is this Mr. Kent? Yes, who's calling? My name is Buddy Davis. Buddy Davis? Yes, sir. I'm calling to tell you that somebody in the old writing stable is sending out a Morse code message for you by flash. Message for me? Uh-huh. It's an SOS. Wait, Scott, where is this place? It's an old riding stable in the alley near our house. On West Oak and 22nd. West Oak and 22nd. Thanks, buddy. I'll be in touch with you later. Now, make room for lots of excitement. Yes, gyrocket excitement. Remember recently, Kellogg's Pep offered you a gyrocket, a sensational rocket model that flies and zooms and streaks from your hand. Well, the response was terrific. In fact, requests still poured in even after the closing date. So we've reopened this offer temporarily. Right. And now thousands are grabbing this chance to get not just one, but several gyrockets. Yes, sir. A gyrocket almost half a foot long. The rocket body is long, slim, and streamlined, shaped of gleaming wood, red or yellow or blue, and with a steel propeller that packs maximum power. With your gyrocket, you get a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You launch it right from your hand, the flick of your arm, and it streaks off high into the sky, up over the treetop. Notice, this gyrocket is not a flimsy cardboard cutout, but rugged steel and wood, built to take it for hundreds of launchings. But this terrific offer is back on the air for a limited time only, so don't miss out. Send for your gyrocket today, right now. To get your gyrocket, send 15 cents and a Kellogg's Pep Box Top. To Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a box top from Kellogg's Pep, together with 15 cents, a dime and a nickel, and your name and address clearly printed to Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. Adventures of Superman. On the eve of election day, Mike Hickey, corrupt political boss of Metropolis, knew his machine would be defeated by a reform party headed by editor Perry White, who, as candidate for mayor, had rallied the city's voters behind him. So, in a last-ditch move to save his and his skin, Hickey abducted cub reporter Jimmy Olsen, then had a henchman phone White and tell him Jimmy would be done away with unless the editor broadcast a statement withdrawing at once as candidate for mayor. As we continue now, on the second floor of the riding stable, Mike Hickey puffs at a cigar, a gloating smile lighting up his fat, heavy-jowled face. His companion is Pete Evans, or the powerfully built young man. On the dirty floor, a portable radio plays softly. Suddenly, Pete jumps out of his chair and hurries toward the room where Jimmy is being held. Well, I'll be it. Come on, Dad Olsen. Let go. Let go of me. What's the matter, Pete? What you got there? A, a flashlight. Flashlight? Yeah. Oh, there. Now, oh, come on, you. Look at this, Mr. Hickey. A fountain pen flashlight. Olsen got his hands free and was flashing the light through that crack in the window board. Why, you dirty little... Well, don't you punker. touch me, Mr. Hickey. I, I'm sure somebody saw my signal and... And if you do anything to me, you'll get in trouble. Uh, hey, somebody might have seen it, Mr. Hickey. Yeah. We gotta get out of here, Pete. Fast. Sure, but how about Olsen? We'll leave him here. What? When he knows who we are and can talk? He won't talk. Not the way we leave him. Ah, uh, why well, get it? No, wait. Shut Mr. up, you. Let him have it, Pete. No. No, put that gun away. So long. Pete's it's Superman. Right, what? Jim. Now, my murdering friend. Now, you try to go get him. Be good. Try this this time. Now, Mr. Hickey, I've got you just where I want you. No, let me go. You, you've got nothing on me. Nothing except a charge of abduction and attempted murder, and abduction is punishable by death in this uh, state. Oh, wait all. a minute. Listen, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. Get him. No one makes deals with me, Hickey. Stand you've by got to... for a very wait. important announcement by Perry White. Wait a minute. Candidate for mayor on the Reform Party ticket. He's going to resign. You're too late, Superman. He's, he's right. Oh, no. Up with you, Hickey. Sir. And your unconscious friend here. No, let me go. Now, you, Jim. You're on the air, Mr. White. Oh, gosh, hurry, Superman. Hang on, Jim. Up and away. <laughs> So, fellow 
citizens, for reasons beyond my control, I find it necessary to withdraw. Hold it, Mr. White. Oh, Chief. Great Caesar, Superman. And Jim. And look who we brought along. Mike oh. Hickey. Now listen, White. We can still get together. I'm going to promise you. Keep talking, Hickey. Let me get the microphone, please, Mr. White. Why, sure, sure. Now, this is Superman, ladies and gentlemen. And the voice you hear whining in the background is that of Mike Hickey, whom I just prevented from stealing tomorrow's election and murdering a young reporter named Jim Olson. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, while I tell you the story. With half the votes counted in today's elections, Petty White and his Reform Party running mates are leading the Hickey Machine candidates by an overwhelming majority. Voters are going to the polls in the greatest turnout in Metropolis history. And everywhere you hear the slogan, Vote Right with Petty White. Extra paper! Perry White elected mayor! Reform Party wins in landslide election! Extra paper! Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Thank Congratulations, you, Chief. Congratulations, Mr. Thank Mayor. Thank you, Lois and Jim. Thank you, one and all. Any statement for the press, Mr. Mayor? Why, yes. Uh, this uh, hey, hey, will I get my pencil? victory of the Reform Party proves that the people of Metropolis and of every city, town, and village in America can have an honest government, free of crooked professional politicians, if they'll only take the trouble to see that honest men are nominated and elected at the polls. You said right. it, Mr. Thanks, Mayor. Nothing. Say, what about Hickey? What'll happen to him? Well, he's in jail, Jim, awaiting trial. Well, oh. how about Bill Henderson, Chief? Uh, I mean, Mr. Mayor. Well, my first official act as mayor will be to reinstate Henderson as police inspector. Lord. Good oh, for you. Wonderful, Come on, Chief. gang, all together. For he's a jolly, jolly good fellow. Oh, he's, he's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. Oh, I'll take it, Chief. He's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. What? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Hold it just a second, please. Hey, Lois, Jimmy, everyone, please, wait a minute. Hold it. Thanks. Hello. Hello. I would like, please, to speak to Mr. Clark Kent. Well, this is Clark Kent speaking. Good, good. Mr. Kent, my name is Glyne. Yes? I own a little candy store on Mulberry Street. And the reason I'm calling you Mr. Kent is because... Hello? Hello? Mr. Kent, he just came in my store. What? I need help. I... <gasps> Hello? Hello. What is it? Hello. Hello, operator. Trace that call if you can. I'll hold on. Oh, hang up, Kent. Let him call you back. No, someone's in trouble. I heard a muffled cry over the phone. Who was calling? A man named Klein says he owns a candy Please store. Please, a lizard. Pop Klein. Do you know him, Jimmy? Do I know him? Why, any kid who ever went to the Mulberry Street School knows Pop Klein. He's one of the swellest old guys you'd ever want to meet. Well, I remember one time... Do you know where his candy store is? Well, of course. It's a block from the school. Lois, tell the operator never mind of that trace. Come on, Jim. We're going down there. In the midst of celebrating Perry White's tremendous victory, a strange telephone call, suddenly cut off by a cry of pain, puts an end to the gaiety. Perry White doesn't know it, but that call marks the beginning of his first big job as mayor of Metropolis, fighting the most vicious human octopus ever to fasten its tentacles on innocent people. We'll learn all the exciting details in just a moment when we return for the tenth climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Say, can you take excitement? Because we're about to dish it out. Kellogg's Pep has reopened your Gyrocket offer because so many thousand requests poured in after the original offer closed. So for a limited time only, you can still get a Gyrocket, a terrific flying rocket model. Yes, sir, a Gyrocket almost half a foot long. That streaks from your hand, zooming into the sky, up over the treetop. Your Gyrocket has a slender wooden body in brilliant red or yellow or blue. It's streamlined and sleek. And a steel propeller at the stern loads the Gyrocket with amazing thrust. Yet launching's a cinch. Because with your gyrocket, you get a metal launching rod and a wooden rocket launcher. You hold the launching rod in your hand. Flick your arm and your gyrocket streaks up high into the sky. And say, why not pass the thrills around your crowd? Get several gyrockets. Then give them to your friends for Christmas presents. Correct. 
Solve your shopping problems right now. Just decide how many gyrockets you need. Now, listen carefully. For each gyrocket you order, today send 15 cents and a box top from Kellogg's Pep to Superman. Box 124, New York 8, New York. But you've got to act right now. This gyrocket offer is back on the air for a limited time only. Remember, you can't buy this gyrocket anywhere. The only way to get it is to send a Kellogg's Pep box top Together with 15 cents, a dime and a nickel, plus your name and address clearly printed to Superman, Box 124, New York 8, New York. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In the back room of a small candy store on Mulberry Street, an elderly gray-haired man with stooped, work-worn shoulders has been forced into a chair. A huge bull neck ruffian with tiny bloodshot eyes and thick, ugly lips looms over him. I'm giving you one more chance, Klein. You gonna handle them punch boards? I can't put out punch boards for children to throw away their nickel. What do you mean you can't? The kids eat them up. But it's... it's like stealing. Nobody ever wins. So what? They keep trying, don't they? And every nickel comes in you and I split. There's a thousand chances on each of them boards. That's 25 bucks a piece. What do the children get for their nickels? Does even one child ever win anything? Are you nuts? None of them punch boards are on the level. They're all fixed. That's why I don't want them in my store. Better those nickels should buy butter and milk and eggs. Ah, what's it to you how they spend their dough? To me, it's a lot. This is a poor neighborhood. Prices for food are high enough. Children shouldn't be throwing away nickels on gambling. And... Such gambling, nobody wins. Okay, wise guy. Get up on your feet. No. Come on, now. Please. I'm, I'm an old man. You ain't so old, you can't be taught a lesson. And the boys don't call me muscles for nothing. You gonna put them punch boards in? No. No, I can't. I, I can't do it. Maybe you'll change your mind after... <laughs> Crumpling under the savage blows of the punchboard racketeer, old Pop Klein drops to the floor, unable to protect himself against the sudden, vicious attack. Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen are on their way to the candy store. But the question now is, will they get there in time to save the poor old man from a horrible beating? Be sure to listen tomorrow for Chapter One of the most exciting racket-busting story you have ever heard on The Adventures of... Superman! And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the super cereal. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for Captain Midnight, which follows in a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.